Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, and everything in between. How are we doing today? I hope we're all doing well. I hope we're all ready for action. Hope we're all ready for um, some very, very, very dated things to occur on their screens. Uh, I am only doing this because I am a glutton for punishment. Uh, fun fact, I hate looking back at my old stuff. I absolutely, incredibly hate looking back at my own stuff. Um, especially everything from episode 1, 2, and 3 of RTR, I, I, I don't, I'm not very happy with. I would redo, but that would be contaminating history. So, you know, we're going to do a director's commentary thing where I will play the episodes and talk what you guys through, like questions you have about certain things or... Certain things that I decide is like, hey, let's uh, let's have a look at this. Oh, let's let's look at this. What's this? Huh? Um, PowerPoint up some secrets. Gonna cringe a lot. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I watched a guy. I don't remember his channel at the moment, but there was a guy in my server. If you're watching, you know who you are. Um, who did a watch through of RTR? And I was like, oh shit, I could do that, but I can give insight. So, um, spoilers, this is the 2K special, because I cannot be fucked to stitch together 1 and 2 of episode 10. Yeah, sorry, that's not gonna happen. Effort. Um, but yeah. So, I think, without any further ado, uh, we should probably get this started. So this is Rails to Refuge, season 1. Episode 1, Winds of Change. Um, fun fact. The title I legitimately jing like jacked from Wild Norwestern. If you know who that is, you know who that is. If you don't, no, tough shit. Um Yeah, I nicked that from him. Um I actually edited this episode together in Premiere. No, not Premiere, in Vegas. And then Vegas died. It completely crashed and corrupted everything. So my good friend, Tom Dibden of um, Tom Dibden Productions. No, <laughs> Dark DJ Productions uh, came in and said, look, get Premiere. Get me access to your computer. I'll edit it for you. And then I'll send it your and, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Tom, the legend that he is, and I cannot stress this enough, sat there with me for a day or two editing this video. And I was so grateful because that's how I learned how to do Premiere, by watching him do it and then giving it a go myself for episode two. So, with the history lesson out of the way, um, let's... um. Yeah, let's 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 suffer a bit, shall we? This is Rose Refuge, season one, episode one. Also, I'm gonna need to know if the audio is too loud or not loud enough. Welcome to the Red Ridge. Oh, the shoddy camera work. Line. A line that's situated somewhere between Reading and Bamberg. Uh... Line is a fine. So just getting straight into it from the start. I hate my voice here. I talk like this because I'm trying to be very narrative and very careful instead of my normal voice, like an idiot. Um. Yeah. Um. Fun fact, in the station right now, you have... I know one of them is Hardwick Grange. I think St. Sebastian's there. Um... Riley's in the siding, I think, unless that's Jim. I'm not sure. It's got big windows by the looks of it. Uh, yeah. 
it's uh <laughs> there's a lot of things going on here this is fun fact the reason why it's filmed here is mostly is because that's the area that was complete on the route yeah there wasn't a lot complete at the route at this time fine place that served the good old great western railway oh. and is home to many engines from that bygone era my voice Here we see one now, Buckleberry Grange, on a local freight run with supplies to the works and... Oh, fuck, 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 damn it! What the hell? Make the volume more higher? Okay, I'm gonna bass boost it, and if it's too loud... Oh, wait, shit, hang on, why didn't I just... Okay, hang on, lower that back the fuck down. We increase these to max, let's go back a bit. All right, let me know how it is now. Oh, Jesus. Okay, uh, that's loud in my ears. I'm going to... Actually, let me just do it on my headset. Let's lower that a bit. We're working out audio. Once audio's worked out, we'll, we'll blitz through this stuff. Um... All right. Way too... Uh, actually, here we see one now. Buckleberry Grange on a local freight run with supplies to the works and. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck! Damn it! What the hell? How was that? Audio good? We good? We clear? We great? We Gucci? Much better. Okay. One thing that pisses me off here is. That camera shake was me holding my computer mouse and shaking it. Had I had a brain, had I had a brain, I would have, you know, used the tools that come with Premiere or Vegas to make the screen shake rather than just looking like a kid with a camera having a seizure. Uh improvements hello there general kenobi and the speed up uh you'll notice in the early episodes i use speed up too much oh that was a rough landing what the hell did you do this time oh hi clark oh for fuck's sake but this is the fourth time in two months wait four times in two months that's that's almost a new record God damn it, Buck! Ugh! Mr. Stard is going to be pissed. Do you not remember that he had something you wanted to tell a few of us about tonight? Buck gave Ooh, him a cheaper smile. You did this to get out of that meeting, didn't you, you fucking twat? No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Ugh, whatever. Not my problem. Now let's get your dumb ass back on the rails again. Um, by the way, thank you to Tom for building this crash scene and adding that on the ground. Thanks, Tom. Love you, buddy. After a lot of swearing and tinkering, the rescue team got the idiot Buckleberry Grange back on the rails. And after making sure he wasn't too damaged, they moved him down the line towards the railway's maintenance shed. Now, fun fact. Um, the, the scene faded, the watermark mark faded with it. Because I filmed that scene with the watermark on. Like an idiot. Uh, I used to film with the watermark. Uh, so that the watermark didn't have to be added, you know, at the end. But then I figured out that it was much easier to just have it at the end. Um... Also, also, that would have been the end of the thing if I had gone with my original plan for Rails for Refuge, which was skits. Rails for Refuge was going to be skits. That was supposed to be the first skit. Two minutes, done. Instead, I added another 13 minutes to it, and here we are. Oh, shit. Um... Here comes the worst accent I've ever done. 
Note to self, Chris, you can't do Scottish. Soon they arrived the at the main work. food shed, kill which me. was a common place to find the Grange after his many mishaps. A workman was already waiting for them. And... Ah, oh, great. What happened oh, this time? Jesus well, Christ. you see, there was this big branch on the tracks and... He derailed himself to get away from work. Again. I didn't know such thing! I see. At least it get... Well, I'd guess we better look him over. Shouldn't take too long to get him fixed. Alright, vacation time! Ugh. Whatever, dumbass. I'm gonna go do something useful. Like finger someone or something, I don't know. And That's with an that, from Clark Tom, rolled just... away to you relay the news to mind. the other engines, hoping Mr. Stard wouldn't be too pissed. And here comes the funniest shit I ever thought of. Headphone user warning. Oh, it wasn't that loud, actually. We're good. Later that evening, oh, at the Rouse House, some of the engines had gathered to listen to their manager, Mr. Bradford Aaron Stard. Soon he arrived looking very happy, or hammered, one of the two. Good evening, bastards. Sub dickhead. Hey, well, Andy actually talks as you're to all this probably one. aware of that. So, a few other things I want to just point out here, if I can get the camera angle right. Uh, yeah, there. Uh, it's called Isolated, I believe. Uh, it's used a few times in the show. Um, here you can see the BR Black Brigade and Southern Black. <laughs> so, at this point in time, I hadn't decided on... Uh, shed code yet, apparently, because Drax has got like 58 something, Ramsey's got something, Virgil and Riley have got something. Yeah, so Gladys is in the shed. Here's the thing if I had known which route I wanted to take Gladys down from day one, she wouldn't have been in the shed right now. There would have been no Gladys, there would have been no nothing. Um, would I have still had her? Yeah, probably. I do like Terriers, they are pretty, you know, they're, they're pretty cool. But I kind of, I kind of wish I picked something else. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, so, yeah, Clint is here. Uh, Clint was introduced in this episode as a stand-in. Because, originally, that was going to be St. Sebastian. But due to uh, technical difficulties on Seb's part, he couldn't get his lines done. So I was like, okay, well, fuck it. Uh, Chris just dropped his Aberdare. I think they look hellfire. Uh, it's a bit out of time. I can work this out. I just shoved Flint in there. Are you pl proud of making Gladys the insane tank engine that she is? Oh, hell yeah. It's funny. I just wish I'd picked something else than a terrier, but eh, I'll live with it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So let's continue uh, and see what we did. Also, Clark is out of the shed because Clark doesn't disturb a spot in the shed. Later that evening, at the roundhouse, some of the engines had gathered to listen to their manager, Mr. Bradford Aaron Stard. Soon he arrived looking very happy, or hammered, one of the two. Good evening, bastards. Sub dickhead. Oh, yeah. Shackles well, are all over the place. As you're all probably aware of that, Idiot of a Grange is out of action for the time being, thanks to his little accident. So in order to keep up with the quota from British Railways, I've had to ask them to bring in another engine or two. I'm hoping to get them here by next month. The engines talked among themselves. Whispering. Chris. What kind of engine, sir? Oh, another thing. You hear the music. Oh, fuck Black Fives. Insane Black Fives, anyways. Um... Yes, that's a tool shed, is what they're called, Fed. Um, the music here, originally, in my first edit on uh, Vegas, I had the music loop properly. But when Tom did it, I completely forgot about it. So the music doesn't loop here. It stops, and then it starts up again, instead of looping like I had it before. Which, to this day, pisses me off, but I rectified it later down the line when I used the music again. 
Pun intended. I'm not too sure about that yet. I'm hoping to get some more mixed traffic steam engines into the mix, but British Railways are having talks about building newer and more powerful diesel locomotives that will be able to run on the main line. However, seeing as the diesels we so have now are this. slow, unreliable, and kind of ugly, I doubt they'll be able to pull it off. Uh, no offense, Clark. Some taken. Diesels, the strongest steam engines, pull the other piston, mate. Aye, it honestly feels like British Railways has got a serious problem against their steam engines or something. I swear, things would be a and lot easier if British Railways so didn't always have their say in what's happened on the railway. Mr. Star went quiet and looked thoughtfully into the air. Um, sir, I want to let you guys in on a secret. But you have to promise me you won't tell anyone else, okay? Fuck no. No chance. Never. That's good enough for me. I'll give that. I have some big good. news for you guys. Oh, oh, I know. And Did one. your daughter finally get away from the brothel, sir? Mr. Stard gave Clark the middle finger, then continued. Seeing as Buckleberry isn't here to screw things up, I feel it's only fair I tell you guys about my plans for the future of the line. Your plans? Don't you mean Bial's plans? Not quite. The volume control. As some of oh, you remember, hello, Chris. I inherited idiot. the position of railway manager from my father after he met his end during World War II. I wanted to achieve great things with the railway, but thanks to nationalization, my plans were thrown away. Oh yeah, the old dock branch. I remember you said- The dock branch. Let's talk about the dock branch. Originally, this season was going to have the completed dock branch in it. However, this was at a time where I couldn't root build. I did not know how to remotely put anything together and make it look good. So I asked Andy to do it, but he was working on his own stuff, so he didn't have time. And so, the, the dock branch changed to the eastward branch, being sort of the, the, the smaller focus. Uh, and I just changed the start from there. The reason the Eastwood branch even exists, I'll talk about that later down the line. Uh, I'll give you guys a synopsis of episode three and then show you the actual episode. So let's continue. They said the railway board shut you down because they thought it'd be a waste of money. Exactly. Which is why I have decided that as of next month, my goal is to try to break away from British... That as well. Oh God, Tom. Tom is... The master of... Which is why I have decided that as of next month, my goal is to try to break away... Wait, I'll fuck off. Come on. Exactly. Which is why I have decided that as of next month... Let's get My this. goal is to try to break... There it is. Apparently, that's a British thing. A breakaway bar. Um... Tom decided that, um... He's having that. By the way, in the process of getting this, uh, he closed down all of my tabs on my computer, which pissed me off because there was a lot of stuff on there that I was, you know, using, and I couldn't find again because I'm stupid and didn't book bookmark them. Uh, yeah, it's um another little meme and editing thing, and he also taught me how to spin objects past the screen like this. Away from British Railways and become a private railway once again. And of course, all of oh, you are lips more than welcome Come to on, join Chris. me, as you have somewhat proven that you can be trusted. Well, most of the time. The engines looked at each other with a look. What is that camera angle? Jesus Christ, I pissed myself off with this. What the fuck were you thinking, you idiots? Look of shock and joy. But sir, how the bloody hell are you going to do that? We know you're loaded, sir. But this railway and its engines must cost a fortune. Oh, I know that. And that's why I'm not going to be buying any of you at this present moment. That would raise suspicion, and I want to lay low for a while. Plus, I'm gonna need all the money I can get for this branch. Which is why I divorced my wife, because that bitch was high maintenance. Yes. But I will need your guys' help to show <laughs> the public my wife. that we're Boom. more reliable than British Railways, so no more major accidents. He squinted his eyes. In other words, that was keep ridiculous. your eyes on Buckleberry. We'll try, sir, but that engine is trouble. Don't worry, sir. We'll do our best. The sheds went silent for a short while. Then, 
Out of nowhere, oh, Gladys go. spoke up. Ooh, so you're single now, are you, you saucy young mine? Why don't you come over here and give me a good old stoking? <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? I'm not sure, Clark, but I think that's the universe telling me that I gotta get the fuck out of here! As Mr. Stard made a beeline for his car, the engines talked among themselves. So, if we actually pull this off, how long do you guys think it will take before we make him bankrupt? Ah, oh, three days tops. Two seconds. Six months. He's fucked. Yeah, sounds about right. Oh, that's way too quick of a fade. That's on Tom. You hear that, Tom? Also, Russell showing his absolute chadness of strength with the cold train. Also, very much no dialogue nor nor any music. And the next Riley? morning, Riley there was on banking duties at Colford Station. The hill shortly oh, after the was max. notorious for making even the strongest of engines stall, and therefore a banker was much needed, sometimes even two. While on break after banking up a heavy goods train, Ramsey pulled up next to him with a local personal train to have a quick chat. Hey up lad, how's the banking doing you this morning? Oh. Uh, yeah, it's alright I guess. Another shell code fail, look. 91A. No, 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 it's 90A. <laughs> You're on the local today. That I am, mate. King Richard got the long straw today, it seems. Oh, this is also before I de loop the county. I'm sorry, but the bog standard out of the factory, Victory Works County, looks like it's been shined to hell and back. It's it's bubble liquid. I, I don't like bubble liquid. If any reskinners out there, like, leave the engine shiny because that's how they look, no, stop it. Get some help. I don't really mind, though. Some slow work does an engine good from time to time. Yeah, I guess so. Riley looked into the distance, seemingly zoning out. You're right there, mate. I hate my own voice. Oh, sorry. It's just the usual that comes with banking duties. Until we get to the cool part. I'm grateful pricks go up, I come back down. I see. They still don't give you any gratitude for the effort you put in. Nah, they just move along like the jackasses they are. Don't worry, I'm getting my own back against them. Ramsey raised an eyebrow at this. Is that so? Care to elaborate? Riley smiled cheekily. Well, whenever we get to the 1 in 50, pff, whatever it is, I might ever so slightly ease off power a little so the bastard up in front has to work extra hard to not stall. So far, no one has caught on. Why, you cheeky little bugger. Good on you, mate. Ramsey the topic being a of chank? banking died down, Ramsey looked around and noticed that they were alone. He lowered his voice and gave Riley a serious look. So... About Mr. Stard's meeting last night. Riley perked up at the sudden tone change. Yeah, what about it? Why didn't you cut the Riley well, there, I was Chris? wondering, have any of the engines that passed through here asked about it? I mean, surely it would have raised suspicion. As far as I know, no one else has questioned it. All they talk about really is gossip from down the line and what they think would be the next steam design. Let's uh -oh. just hope no one knows. If they find out, it's game over. Incoming. Um, game over for who? The engines almost jumped in surprise. While deep in conversation, and here he is. failed to notice that King Richard, one of the line King fucking Richard. What a character. So here I was allowed to use the enemy song from Tom. Now King Richard is an interesting little guy because he was my main villain. Keyword being was. You know why he's no longer the main will villain. You you know why. I'll get into that later. It's it just works so well. I I know the standard thing. Ah oh, yes, the king is posh. Blah 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 blah. But fuck it, it worked. I could have had a king be a good guy, but we didn't have the Caledonia Works model back then. We still don't, but we're gonna have it by season three. Wink. So, King was sort of replaceable. Let's continue. Line's flagship express locomotives had pulled up to the station with express from Reading. Oh, hey King Richard. How goes it with the express? 
Oh, it's just marvelous, my dear engine. Now then, you there? Oh, Pani that looks like shut the um, fuck up. Yes. You said something about I have two gripes when it comes to audio editing. Lip smacking and mumbling. And I do both of those things. So whenever I just hear myself do it, chills go down my spine because I fucking hate it. Let's continue. Game over. What were you talking about exactly? Oh, that. Oh, it was nothing special. Just, um, uh... Go on. Just, uh, talking ab ab about Stalin. Stalin? The Soviet leader? What does he have to do with anything? As oh, the conversation went on, fuck Ramsey me. could tell the king... Oh, uh, another thing here. That scene went on for about seven more back and forths. It did not work. It, it 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 did not work. It was so bad. I cut down the dialogue and it was still not perfect, but manageable. More and more suspicious and decided to jump in before it got too out of hand. Oh, don't pay him much mind, my dear fellow. This silly little tank engine is just rambling on about nonsense. Just ignore him. <laughs> silly engine indeed. Now then, come on you, we have an express to get up the hill, if you'd please. Riley shot Ramsey a dirty look as he moved off to the front of the long train. Oh, Chris. He was secretly glad to be out of the hole he had dug for himself. You see that choppiness? That's what happens when you use a mouse for a panning shot rather than a controller. That's why you never, ever, if you're filming something for TS that's not a static shot, have a controller. If you don't have a controller, get yourself a controller. If you don't have the wire, get yourself the wire. I don't care. If <laughs> This does not look good. Now this I do like. The sky fade. Could have escalated a bit As quicker. As the evening approached, the sky went from a clear blue to a misty gray, and soft showers of rain fell from the sky. Down uh, the yes, junction, it is Henry Yang. Three engines sat alone in a shed, pondering over the strange events that had transpired over the past few days. And you're sure about this? Here it is. I am, my old friend. When I pulled into that station, they were definitely trying to be careful so no one would hear what they were talking about. Really now? Did you manage to hear anything? Only a little bit. I heard something along the lines of, if they find out, it's game over. That is strange. Very strange indeed. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you say that some of the other chaps got kicked out of the roundhouse the other day? Yeah, we did. That station master told us that that Mr. Sardblove needed the shed for the night, though when we asked him why, he just told us it was none of our business and to shove off. How very rude. And very suspicious. Indeed, old chaps. I don't trust him. He seems like he's up to something, and I'm sure British Railways won't be too pleased if he's planning something behind their back. He might be, but for now we have no proof. If you ask me, it would probably be smart if we just kept tabs on those engines. I second that. I say we lay low for now and wait. We need solid proof before we do anything that could put our line at risk. Alright then, we have a plan. I say that we get some rest, so that we can be in tip-top shape for work tomorrow. After all, we have to make British Railways proud of our- Have you guys noticed that Hart's voice changed from here to later? He's more talking on this spectrum, while later he's more here talking at this spectrum. It's- it's interesting to see the developments. It's the same with Drax's voice, King Richard's voice, Russell's voice. Russell gets more up here talking, and, you know, yeah. Um, was the hard idea of Hart being an evil sadistic cunt been there since season one? No, Hart was just going to be a lackey. Our efforts. Yes, quite right. We are the front line of British Railways, and we have I hate to prove we're worthy of that title. How I shit bid you my good night, camera gentlemen. work was back here. And with that, Oof. the three engines slowly drifted off to sleep, none of them realizing that this was only the beginning of the storm that was brewing on their line.
and titles. Even the titles have gotten a fucking glow up. Oh boy. That was 15 minutes I'm never getting back. <laughs> so, all in all, Winds of Change sets up well for what's coming. It shows the engines, shows the characters. I think there's only a few characters that don't get shown in this episode. Um, but man, there are so many things I'd change and rewrite. It's just, it's not up to par with my standards now. And also, the special thanks thing changed, thankfully. Do I hate hearing my own narration for RTR? In these episodes? Yeah. Absolutely hate it, because I talk like this in a very soft manner. It, it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I do have standards, believe it or not. <laughs> Going Murph for our entertainment. It, the credits... Lol, get wrecked, Oliver. The credits are just a meme mine, okay? I just stick shit on there and see if it sticks. James right for being back at the start. That's a golf reference if anyone ever watched our golf videos. <laughs> There's Ethan as well. And Dexby. No, I will not remake Season 1. Maybe Winds of Change, but not Season 1. Epic Bonaster 2020. Yeah, the end of the video. That's the thing people don't realize. Click. Oh, 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 oh. Why do I do this? I do not know. But it's funny. And I only stopped doing it recently because one, I was running out of material. Two, eh, eh, it didn't really work with the serious tone of the episode. Oh, see, episode two. What is considered to be the funniest Rails to Refuge episode ever. Period. People people still to this day say that episode 2 is the funniest thing I've ever produced. And I, I can see why. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very, very, very entertaining episode. And it also started a trend that I've tried to keep going for every possible moment that I can. And that is memory on the main line. If you pay attention to the main line in most episodes where it's shown, aka Manifel Junction main line, You'll see so much shit passing. It's fucking hilarious. So without further ado, do pay attention. Let's go. Oh, do you see that tower in the background there? Let's put my mouse at it. That tower in the background. That is supposed to be a shaft, and that's these two gas cylinders are supposed to be balls, because Tom put those there. <laughs> He's a dick. Episode 2, hold the line. Anyone knows the song? You're a legend. And where's the memory? It's not Drax. During the following week after Buck had put himself out of action, Mr. Start had there he comes. the British Rail is to try and work out a solution for the lack of tractive effort on the railway. At first, they were reluctant <sighs> to send any engines at all. Rail motor on an express. Rail safety. But after a lot of back, forth, and a little pinch of blackmail, British Railways gave in and promised to send him two engines that they no longer had any use for. One cold autumn morning, Mr. Starr went to the sheds to brag to the engines about his accomplishments with scouts. I am British so soft spoken and hurt in this episode. However, as soon as he saw that King Richard was in the sheds, he decided to pipe down and tell them in a more calm and professional way. Calm. All right, you bastards, listen up. I've just been to the works to check up on Buck's repairs. Oh, how did that go then? Pretty bad, actually. Turns out his frames have started cracking due to his continuous derailment. So he'll be there for a while. Well, aren't we lucky then? That's the best news we've had all day. Not really, Clark. With Buck out of action, we're severely lacking in tractive effort. So, can't we just cut down the amount of trains going on and off the branch then to compensate? Unfortunately not, Clark. If it were that easy, I would have done it already. 
We have a quota we need to keep to, and we're already struggling to do so after three of our engines got reallocated. Three of our engines got reallocated. Seb, Axel, and Levi. Who were all residents of the line until they were like, Hey, uh, we need those at Banbury. No, but I need them here. Bye. And the engines left. So Seb, Axel, and Levi were all working on the Revik and Chilton Hills for many years. Until British Railways went, Hey, we need those. They, they're coming with us. So there's a little, there's a little droplet of hints of these characters were already written in before they showed up. If I may, sir, could you just not ask British Railways for some engines? I'm sure they'd be kind enough to send some your way. Well, funny you mention that, King Richard. I've had a long talk with the people over at British Railways about this already. Now, while they weren't too willing to send us any at first, we've finally come to an agreement and they will be sending out two engines to aid us on a permanent basis. Well, how kind of them. Who are these newcomers then? Anyone we know of? Hmm, hang on, let me check the manifest. Oh, this was such a pain in the ass to get the match as well. Oh, man. It's a white square with text on it. You wouldn't think it would be hard, but me being an idiot, <laughs> I, I made the text and the sheet separate and had it move up. Instead of, you know, the, the, the smart thing in making a sheet of paper with text on it that just moves up. Again, things I'd fix. Um, I, I, I love this text as well. It's, it's so stupid, but it just works. After your convincing letter, we have decided to send you two engines to help on your line. Engines 357 and 4073. Worst wishes, British Railways. Let's see here. Um, fun fact, I've actually seen 4073 in real life now. Uh, it was the first steam engine I ever saw up close, and it is huge. It says we're getting 5357 and 4073. They should be here around summertime. So that means we'll get a 4300 class and... Kafili fucking castle, lads. And here comes Andy. As everyone looked over as Jax came up to the sheds. His smoke box lit up with joy. Andy had an interesting reaction to Pat. When I first said 4073, Andy didn't take the news well. He was like, what? Kefili's preserved. You can't just nab that. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's a, it's a 4F. What? It's a 4F. And then he rage quit the call. And after that moment, Drax is going to have a quote quote crush on Kefili and it's gonna backfire and that's how the premise of this episode was born ah so you know of him then he was the first castle ever built he's a hero I mean he's not quite a night owl but he's still a hero mm, not quite right. a night owl but still a hero I could have no. sworn they were going to send freight or mixed traffic engines ah well I guess that just means I can put Ramsey in some more permanent goods work Oh, piss off. Also, to the people, like, roundabout wanting to film, the only seasons you use to film are winter, summer, and autumn. You do not touch spring. Spring looks shit. Spring looks awful. This is spring. It does not look good because the trees are dead, but the ground is, per like, still clear. This works as a winter without snow. That's what this works like. But not a spring. For spring, you use summer. Alright then, that's it for now. Keep up with the borderline competent work, lads. And with that, we should and start the, turn Okay. On. Speed up, I have... I have stopped using for a reason. Look how bad this shot looks. He doesn't hate goods work, now, he's just, he just likes passing. Keep up with the borderline competent work, lads. And with that, Mr. Star turned on his heel and walked off. Oh, leaving the, the engines up. to their business. The speed up. The weeks went on. Hey, look, it's Anthony Manor. All lubed up. Uh, Anthony Manor is green here. It was decided later, when I fucked up, that he was going to be in a black livery while Thor was green. And the engines were starting to look more and more forward to getting some extra help with the heavy workload. 
No one, however, was as excited as Drax, who was over the moon about Kefili Castle and would not shut the hell up about it. And while some of the engines just ignored him, the others got more. I could have made this so much better. Starstruck 7200. I know, right? It's so bad. I'm sorry, Victory Works, if you're watching this, but then you've improved morning, so much from the shine. Fourth, Ramsey was resting in. Ah. Hey, did you hear that? Then one morning on May the fourth. One morning on May the fourth. May the fourth be with you, Star Wars nerds. Ramsey was resting in a siding after his morning mail run. He had just dropped off the last lot of mail before preparing to go on to Redwick to take it to Express to Reading. To take it to Express to Reading. Take it to, 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 take it to, to when Express suddenly... to Reading. Jesus Christ. This is, again, a point where my English wasn't as good and my stuttering. And if I'd noticed that today, that wouldn't have made a past. That that moment would not have made it past. I swear to God. To express to Reading, he had just dropped off the last lot of. Oh, Ramsey fun was... fact! If you look past the bridge here, there is nothing past it. Endon is where the line stopped. Ironically enough, there is nothing past Endon except for broken hopes and dreams. Um, <laughs> which leads into a thing that you'll see in a sec. But let's enjoy the let's enjoy the funniest fucking part of Rails Refuge. He had just off the last lot of mail before preparing to go on to Redwick to take to Express to Reading. He was just about to move to the main line when suddenly. Sorry, mate. Can't stop. No brakes. Oh, what the oh, fuck? Fuck? That is, to this day. The best bit I've added to Rails of Refuge, and it was stolen directly from uh, Postman or Patman Post, the YouTube Patman Post. Haven't seen it? Go watch it. It's fucking hilarious. And this was quite a clever editing trick. After the dust had hello, started, Tom. The county opened his eyes. Still in a bit. Fucking of around haze. with the opacity he here. Down. His front bogey gives a very good effect of oh, I'm dazed. But other than that, he was fine. He slowly pulled his eyes off the ground to see who had just rammed him, but he couldn't believe his eyes. And there yeah. he is. In front of him stood a Midland Ford. Yeah, I know, Tom. But what was a Midland engine doing all the way out here? But before he could ask any questions, and here it the is. spoke up. Sorry about that, lad. Listen here, bud. I enjoy quick shag as much as the next engine. Oh, yeah. Callum's microphone here. I I asked him, "Hey, dude, you used the wrong microphone. Can you get that sorted?" Never got back to me. So, but this is over the top even for my standards. Then Ramsey looked at the smoke box number plate of the engine. It read four o seven three. Hold on a minute. Your Midland four F number four o seven three at your service. But you can call me Pat. Pat. Oh. Hey, well, guess what, Pat? You derailing me has just delayed the express and probably put me out of action for a while. I see. Not to worry, I can soon fix it. Now, where did I put that leather-bound stick with a hand? Pat, for what the shit? And here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, Mr. Mogul. How nice of you to finally join us. There he I'm is. just getting acquainted with our new shedmate here. The first time... We see Darius. The the man of the hour, the one everyone's talking about. And what do you know? He's attending a crash at Endon. Ironic, some would say. Oh, for goodness sake. I'm terribly sorry about this chat. Uh, where might I find the nearest crane so I can get you back on the rails? If you go a bit further up the line, you should find a diesel shunter, a black O4. He usually handles the rescuing range. Oh, I just remember I the joke it. that comes up. go get him straight away. Don't go anywhere, yeah? Yeah, yeah, fuck you too. <laughs> That's a good delivery. I'll give Callum that. Yeah, yeah, fuck you too. My camera work is shit here, but it is what it is. Now, let's just immediately address the elephant the clark drax Bambury castle and mr stard were in the sheds talking when darius rolled up 
Let's just immediately get this out of the way, addressed, so that no one has any questions or anything like that. Yes, I'm using a different Redwick. Yeah, I know, Tom. Um, this is a different route. I still have it, but this is a different route. On this route, Redwick was the first place Riley built, uh, because Riley restarted the route for the third time. And I said, no, 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 second one was good. Second one, good. Leave second one. Uh, and I hadn't learned how to route build yet, so Redwick didn't exist. And rather than delaying the episode, which was basically ready at this point, I said, fuck it, I'll use that other route one time. So, you look at Redwick here, and then the next time we see Redwick, and it's just, you, you won't, you, there's no recognizing it other than the fact that there's a roundhouse. <laughs> that's the only thing that's the same, is the fact that there's a fucking roundhouse. The turntables changed, the track layouts changed, the amount of shed roads changed, or the carriage sightings changed. You think this is bad, just you guys wait till season three. <sighs> I've had enough of this discussion, Clark. Just because you're painted black, it doesn't mean you can say the word ni- Oh, hello there. No regrets. Yes, uh, hello. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. My name is Darius. I'm one of the new engines that was sent here. I'm looking for, uh, Mr. Stodd? Yes, that would be me. B.A. Start at your service. B.A. Start at your service. That was literally put in there because... The people are stupid. Bradford Aaron, that's a weird name. Star, that's a weird last name. Is that because of Captain Star from Tugs? No. B.A. Starred. Bastard. Figure it out. <laughs> and you're right on time. Welcome to... Mr. Starred stopped and looked past Darius, peering into the distance. Hang on a minute. Where's the other engine? I uh, hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there's been an accident with the other engine in a county a few stations down. Endon, I believe. A few stations down. There's... It is the next station. It is the next station. Also... Oh, no, wait. I can explain that. I was going to say, how did Darius turn around? No, he used a triangle. That's the lore. It was. Uh, we need a crane down there ASAP. Wait, what? Oh, you have got to be shitting me. Right, Bambury. I need you to take the express to Reading. Of course. Clark, go get the crane. We need to... No worries, sir. I'll get the crane. Don't worry, Kofili. I'm coming. <laughs> and speed up. Oh, okay then. Had I, been a, ha, had I been smart there, I would have left the camera static and had him speed past. Well, you just go shunt then, Clark. Fine, jeez. I didn't want to help anyway. Wait, why is he going to Kofili? Is he visiting the line? Um... No. Isn't he the new engine that came with you? Um, no, sir. The engine that came with me is a Midland 4F named Pat. You're joking, right? Dead serious, sir. But the manifest said we were getting 4073. There has to be some sort of mistake here. Only mistake here is you, sir. Clark there with the no comebacks. Mistake, sir. His number is 4073. Apparently, he hasn't been given a BR number yet. Mr. Stard was speechless. So you're telling me... The British Railways. Ha <laughs> ha! You got played, sucker! Fuck off, Clark! <sighs> Anyways, Darius, was it? Can you please take me down to Endon? Someone has to be there to calm Drax down. Of course, sir. It would be my pleasure. Man, Drax is gonna be so pissed when he finds out. By now, Drax had picked up the crane. Again, this is another point where I would have faded to black, left it for like two seconds, fade in again. Have Drax rushing by, then start talking. And also, hey guys, this is the triangle, by the way. This is the triangle in the background there. You can see Redwood Cathedral, not that one. And it was hauling ass towards the site of the accident. It's, his mind yeah. was racing faster than his wheels. He couldn't bear the thought of his idol being damaged and off the rails. He was cursing Ramsey for laying a buffer on him. And we're back to the but normal as route. As he got close to the site of the accident, he saw no sign of Kefili, only an unfamiliar shape of the 060 Tender engine. He came to a stop next to the two arguing engines, with a look of confusion on the smoke box. What the hell is going on here? Oh, we're just having a nice cup of tea, talking about the weather. What does it look like, you moron? No, not that. 
Kafili. Where the hell is Kafili? Who is that? Another one of your Western friends? No, you idiot. Who the hell are you anyway? Drax looked closer at the stranger, finally calming himself enough to take in the situation fully. He recognized the engine standing in front of him as a Midland 4F, and upon closer inspection, he saw the stranger wore the same number as Kafili Castle did. But he was no Westerner. He was a Midland engine. British Railways couldn't have. Could they? They just did. His realization dawned upon him. His confusion quickly turning into- Oh! I remember now! The reason why Drax got his voice is because Andy is suffering from acid reflux right here. He really did not want to do his lines because he had acid reflux, but I fucking begged him to, like, please can you power through it? I need this. And he did it like a legend. The anger. Oh, you have got to be shitting me. Calm down, Drax. No need to- Calm down? The fuck I will. Those bastards cheated us and now we're stuck with this Midlander. This Midlander has a name, you know. Pat, at your service. Right, let me tell you exactly how little I care about your name right now. The three engines kept going at it for a while, until Darius pulled up alongside them with Mr. Stard in his cab. He quickly climbed down from the cab and walked in between the three engines to try and defuse the situation. Good luck with that. Alright, everyone, shut up! Why are you all arguing? And Drax, why haven't you started re-railing Ramsey yet? With no due respect whatsoever, sir, we've been had. This engine isn't Kafili Castle. He's- Yes, I know, Drax. And you would have too, had you not rushed off like a knight in rusty armor. Darius good. filled me in on Very everything like about our new one. colleague here. He turned to Pat, looking over the newcomer closely. While he didn't have much experience with engines from other regions, the reputation of the 4F was not one to be scoffed at. Well then, Pat, was it? I must say, that was quite the entrance. Not even Buckleberry was able to crash this quick when he arrived two years ago. Mm. We'll see about that. These work, sir. Well, no matter. You're still on the rails, Actually, no, so no won't. real damage done. Hey, eh, Ramsey? Awesome. That's the spirit. Now then, Drax, get a move on and get Ramsey back on the rails. Bamari will cover his express run. As for you two. He Probably he is. Uh, Darius, there's a stopping him up. train starting from Manifold Junction in about two hours. I want you to double head it with Clint to learn your way around the line, as well as timetables. Seeing as- Oh, Jesus Christ. Chris, come on. I want you to take it with him, so you can learn your way around the line, as well as- I would have just read on that line. Also, if you notice in the background, some of the trees look like blurry. I forgot to turn out a, a fucking setting off. And it pisses me off because it turns itself back on. I guess it will be one of your primary jobs here. Certainly, sir. Uh, where is this junction then? I was a bit too preoccupied trying to watch over Pat here to take notes of station names. It does it's make sense because there are two junctions, junctions on the line. Couldn't you be getting I don't want to hear it. In the roundhouse by the time you arrive. Excellent. I shall be on my way at once. If it was Kefali, it would have been funny. Off, Mr. Stard turned back to Pat. That's a good shot. I'll As for you, you Pat, you'll be heading up to Redwick, which is our mainline terminus. Up there, Clark will show you the ropes of the yard operations, so you can marshal a train together that you and Darius will take back down to the junction. That way, you can both properly learn the ins and outs of our operations. Very well. I shall head up at once. Excuse me, sir, but may I have a word? <sighs> yes, you may, Drax. Are you seriously going to keep this guy around? British Railways tricked us into having him. Yes, Drax. I am aware of that. I am the one who got tricked after all. So, what are you going to do about it? Well, to put it bluntly, nothing. Wait, seriously? Look, Drax, I know you wanted Kefili to come here, but we're short enough on well. as it is. If I send Pat back now, we're going to be short on tractive effort. It's been difficult enough running things here after Seb, Axel, and Levi got reallocated. <sighs> ding, 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 ding. I guess you're right. But that doesn't mean I'll be all, all three are now introduced. I'm not asking you to be best. <laughs> Wait, that's a good line. I can't skip over that. That doesn't mean I'll be all bum chummy with him. <laughs> I'm not asking you to be Bessie mates. I am, however, ordering you to accept that he's here as a help. Are we clear? Fine, fine. Fuckface. What was that? Nothing. Thought so. Mr. Stard stayed at the side to watch over the rescue op and to inspect the damage done to Ramsey. Sadly, his front bogey had been damaged in the accident, and his buffers were a I'm little tired, twisted from the impact inflicted by Pat. And if Which you say you thought I was Chris, I will kick your ass. Shut up. Anyways, um... Yeah, this as well... Makes no sense at all, because Pat was also inflicted... That effect took ages to make work, but I'm happy with it. By Pat. 
Which makes no sense at all, because Pat was also inflicted by the same impact, but somehow got away scot-free. Who even writes this fucking piece of shit? <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, moving on, Darius had gotten to the junction about 30 minutes before the local was supposed to leave. Clint was already at the platform waiting for him and quickly filled him in on the timetable and other useful information to keep in mind while running up the line. And here we see the mogul buddies. The two moguls of the railway working together for the first and last time for what we see in the show. Season 3, I've, even, I've begun writing it, but not a lot. He was very impressed on how well Darius was doing on his first proper run on the railway, and was confident that he would make a fine addition to the you fleet. You moved the camera too much, Chris. And back to the other On the, the other, other side route. of the line, however, things weren't going that smooth between Pat and Clark. While Pat hadn't caused any more accidents since he arrived that morning, his random quirks quickly got on the nerves of the diesel shunter, who already had a short fuse. But soon enough, Pat knew his way around the yards and got the train ready just in time. No, I'm not doing that super cut. It's too much to effort. Junction. I've tried. Much to the No, thank you. I can't make it work properly. It feels wrong. So this is this is your 2K special. Hey guys. <laughs> That night in the sheds at Redwick, the engines were talking away like old grandma. Hopefully. Darius had made a splendid first impression on the other engines and was settling in like he had been a part of the fleet for years. I must say, Darius, oh, your call. performance today was more than adequate. The passengers were very pleased and so was I. I will be sure to let Black Mr. Star know when I see bye him bye. tomorrow. Ah, shucks. I was only doing my job. It's not that different from my days down at Swindon. But this is my first time away from home base, after all. So you've been at Swindon your whole life? Doesn't that get boring and repetitive? You'd think so. But every day there was something different to do. I remember this one time back in 1934 and the... the uh, what the actual fuck? Everyone switched their gaze ahead to see Pat reversing into the sheds. And However, the transformation is almost right complete. Action. Um, Pat... Have a look at that! <laughs> If anyone hasn't noticed this yet, the 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 text says Jess that it's the the the, the breakdown itself says Pat twenty and the GW under GW it says Pat twenty. I love the Victory Works um, breakdowns for this reason. It's the fact that you can actually write on them whatever you want. I respect that a lot. Chris's thing, he tried to do it, couldn't get it to work. That's fair enough. But the Victory Works one has a charm for that reason. What's that? This is my new pet. It's a stupid brake van, but I'm keeping it. Hang on. I recognize that brake van. We've been trying to move it from Colford since the end of the war. How the hell did you get it to come with you? Well, it's quite simple, really. I've been working with trucks all my life. It wasn't too hard to get this lovely lad moving. Huh. Who would have thought? Also, I filmed Clinton away here so that you just see 666. If anyone didn't notice that, you're welcome. The devil is a liar. Looks like you'll make for quite the fine addition to our freight fleet. You might, but I'm still a bit miffed about Caffilly, though. I can't believe I missed out on meeting him. Well then, it looks like next time we get a newcomer with a famous number, you'll have to think more... Don't you say it. Caffilly. That's it, you're dead to me. That was a horrible dad joke. After that horrible dad joke from Clint, the engine slowly drifted off to sleep. Well, all except two. <clears throat> Anyways, the newcomers had certainly made a memorable first impression. But how will their futures on the line shape out? Will the others rope them in on their plan? Or will British Railways win them over with the false promises? That is the story. <sighs> Let's just let it play out for another time. This was on my Victor Tanzig era when I... Watch that religiously. We'll watch him religiously. That line is directly from him. And here's the first time I use this picture. You know, Clint isn't 
actually that that old. He's not even 50 yet in that episode. He's like 48. Okay, yeah, he can use he can use bad jokes. He's 48. And here's all the music, because people will keep forgetting this. Now let's see what kind of shit I wrote at the end of this one. Because I always write some stupid shit. Tom for being Tom. Makes sense. And <laughs> being a postman. Lol. <laughs> Not redoing his lines. Yep. Not having a character. Still doesn't have one. Um, fat as, did you make your profile pic? Uh, or how did I make my profile pic? Oh, it was quite easy. Uh, I took some money from my bank account and I gave it to Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> and he made it. Another fire at Oliver. Firing through it with a fuck throat. Yep, that's what I knew. Accident, answer reflux. James can confirm this in the chat. The LNER does suck. Guion, because he didn't get one last time. Sounds about right. That's not wrong either. What's the pros credit on this one? Oh, it's the, uh, that. Not to worry. I can soon fix it. <laughs> oh no! Fucking hell, Chris. Okay. I'm gonna keep it real with you all. This is bottom two on my list of Rails to Refuge episodes. I will admit, I'm pretty happy with how I wrote it because I wrote it in less than a day. Inspiration just hit and I wrote. However, it it's the catalyst that threw the dock branch out the window. Because I didn't want to split the focus too thin. So I had to be very careful after I wrote this one. The original synopsis for episode 3 was, Bucklebury Grange comes back from the works and notice, notices that engines are acting strange. He tries to get figure out what it is, they're hiding, but he doesn't get anywhere. That was the whole episode. That would have been like a 10 minute episode. This is a lot better story-wise, but it's a pain in the ass lore-wise. So let's continue. No, the Dark Match isn't dead. A month had passed since the two newcomers had arrived at Mr. Starr's railway. Darius had settled in- And the first sighting of Gregory, ladies and gentlemen. Also, my narration has already increased tenfold from the previous episode to this. ...very well with the other engines, proving to be a very versatile, kind, and trustworthy newcomer Mostly. to the fleet. On the other side of the spectrum, however, you have Pat. The engines were having a hard time getting along with him due to his random quirks and the fact that he was an unfamiliar design from a previously rival region. That's King Richard on the side. I Mr. Was Stark, however, was. was pleasantly happy with Pat's performance. He had proven himself invaluable when it came to handling the train on the railway, as he had shown to be a natural with the trucks. Oh yeah, this is actually Redwick now. Shit, I didn't even clock that. Yeah, this is from the last episode to this. That's how much Redwick changed because I built this one. Also, the trees are abysmal here. Jesus Christ. One morning in early June, Riley and Darius were talking in the sheds of Colford when an unfamiliar green locomotive backed down into the sheds next to them. Oh, I'm gonna have to show this off, aren't I? Oh, uh, excuse me, this is a private shed. No outsiders allowed. It's me, you dolt. See, Callum's ah. my quality is already ten times better. Ah, oh, Ramsey, my good fellow. Great to see you again. Oh shit, what up? Don't you look, uh, different? 
Well, Mr. Starred ordered the chaps at the works to repaint me, seeing as I'll be working on passenger services more probably from now on. This I is one thing that's a benefit benefit of having a character from me. If they want a livery on their engine, they get the livery. No questions asked. Callum said, hey, can we do Ramsey and Green? So he stands out a bit more. Like, yeah, fuck it, sure, why not? It's quite fitting. Well, that's some good news. In here I thought that crash was nothing but bad news. Afraid that's all the good news I have, chaps. It's only downhill from here. No, don't tell me. What? what what's the bad news? Please, no, not this soon. Afraid all so, right. Riley. Buck will be back in a week's time. Fuck. Rage Comics, because back in 2008. And the next thing you're about to see is, um... Is the reason why you should never give me your profile picture. Say. Oh, there it was. For a split second, there it was. Let's get this. Fuck say. There it is. And that's everything you need to see. If you look in the bottom bottom left, you have three, two, one, and it's gone. Oh dear. Is this the one I've heard the stories about? Is he really Sorry, not that sorry, bad? Riley. No, he's worse. So that was two minutes exactly. The intro plus that scene. I could have expanded upon it so much. I could have wrote more stuff. I could have fixed it. But no, I wrote the short ass scene. This episode is three scenes. And it sucked. Well, is it three? Yeah, it's three. Word of Buck's imminent return spread like wildfire around the railway. And I Those believe would mean that freight traffic would become more Thor stable. Is on the right. The engines knew that Buckleberry Grange almost always came with minor incidents all over yes, the railway. Yes, their store. The engines working with Mr. Zard knew they would have to keep an eye on them when he was black but shiny. He looks white. That and here he is. Buck finally returned from the works. Yo yo yo, B Boy Snake Dog G. Did ya miss me? Not really, no, Buck. Never noticed, to be honest. What? For? Huh, nice for to see what that I was time? Missed so, what be the haps? Mr. Rammy Harder Daddy over here told me we had some new faces around. Call me that again, and I'll rip your cap off. Uh, yes, that would be me in another engine called Pat. I'm Darius, by the way. Oh, I see. A 4300 Mogul class. A very nice choice indeed. Oh, it's a Thor 4. Haha. <laughs> and I hope you enjoy your time here. Um, what's up? D did I say something wrong? For once, actually, Buck, you said Who? something right. Who are you, and what have you done to Buckleberry Grange? Ha ha, very funny. I can be serious. So here's the thing about Buck. He is the incarnation of basically my energy all over. I can be serious. Who would have thought? This is one of those moments. It's when the situation demands it. Such as welcoming a new member of the crew. <laughs> I'll believe that when I see it, Buck. The engines looked down to see Mr. Stard walking towards the sheds. But he wasn't alone. Alongside him were two gentlemen who looked about as pompous. And here is the first being of Mr. Mr. Thing. Knox. They were higher-ups from British Railways. Good evening, engines. As you can see, I'm not alone today. These fine gentlemen have requested <laughs> to accompany gentlemen. me tonight, as they have a special announcement for us all. What kind of announcement, sir? Well, they haven't told me yet, hence why I'm here. He motioned for the two men to begin. Right, uh, thank you, Mr. Stard. Now, I would first like to start off by saying that we were quite impressed to see that you were all still able to keep up with the quota we have set for you. With the bad luck that befell your part of the network, we weren't sure if we could justify keeping you operational for more than five years. It seems we were proven wrong. The engines looked at each other with a prideful smile. However, the man wasn't done. Wait, what? What was that? Hang on. The engines looked at each other with a prideful smile. However, oh! <laughs> oh, I remember now. I remember now. Okay. So, if you heard that little woo in the background, um... <laughs> The reason I throw that in there is because the narrator says, with pride, and then Ramsey goes, woo, Ramsey goes, woo, because 
Pride, you know, Pride Month, Pride gay stuff. Um, it's it's a little in joke because most people didn't realize Ramsey has been gay since day one. However, the man wasn't done. We did, however, find one discrepancy on a certain part of the line. The engine smiles quickly faded, with a worried look on their smoke boxes taking its place. And what part of the line would that be, if I may ask? That would be the Eastwood branch. It's a line that serves two small town stations and a dying quarry. We've been looking at it for a while now, and we simply cannot justify it being operational. A they have a fully quarry. viable road that they can use for transport of people and goods should they so desire, but the railway will simply not profit enough by keeping it open. Therefore, we have come to the decision that we will be closing the line, effective immediately. All operations have been suspended, nice and the land there, will Chris. be sold off to the highest bidder. Yes, Tom. The engines in Mrs. Stark Indeed. were speechless. Enemy. Virgil and Clint in particular. They had heard stories about British railways closing down branch lines. It was, in fact, the reason why they yeah, decided with Mr. Starr to begin with. I remember off the top of my brain. The first to break the silence. It is, it is but, genuinely, but, like, the chill factor from Enemy gets me every time. I just love hearing it. That's why I go silent when it's playing, because I'm just like, ooh. But that's what me and Clint are allocated to. What will we do now? Well, seeing as... Motherfucker, don't you dare. You gave me permission. I have written permission. Don't even try it, motherfucker. <laughs> 2666 is currently under the ownership of Bradford here. He'll be transferred to whatever job he's deemed necessary for. As for you, 5404, your services will no longer be required. Therefore, you will be withdrawn from service. Also, effective immediately. You will be picked up in the morning by a prearranged freight train. I suggest you say your goodbyes before then. At those words, Virgil broke Aww, down. Aw, sad music. He couldn't believe what was happening. This was the end. It was all over. Those exact words, this was the end, it was all over, is what I used in season two, when Mr. Star had sat down on the bench. It's like poetry. It rhymes. Clint was furious. But he had to try and remain calm while him and an equally angry Ramsey tried to comfort the pannier, but to no avail. Darius was also quite upset. Audio change. Because did you guys know that while your microphone may be the same, every time you stop recording and start recording, the audio changes. Like the audio quality sometimes can change. It's, it's fucking weird. Though he had just gotten to know Virgil, he could not believe that British Railways would just throw away this young and hard worker like he was nothing. And then there was Buck. He was enraged at the fact that two gits with silver spoons up their arses could come here and command the place as if Mr. Star didn't even exist. He was about to give them a piece of his mind, but Mr. Star beat him to it. How much? I'm sorry? How much are Enough you selling sorry, the line sorry. For? Well, it would be for a profitable price, I can assure you of that. But I don't see how that's... Whatever price you're asking, I'll double it. On one condition. He turned to Virgil. He stays under my ownership. Wait, wait, what? Are you sure about this? Canal boats? Nah, uh, we that's Andy Schneck. We advice against that. L like we said, the line is no longer profitable. Keeping that line operational would ruin you financially. I know what you said. However, I believe I can prove to you just how profitable that branch line can be. Now, shall we discuss this any further, or are you going to ignore my offer? If you are dead set on this, I guess we have no choice but to oblige to your terms. Indeed, we can talk more detail in your office. Yes, we can. You gentlemen walk on ahead. I have to have a word with my fleet. As you wish, we will be waiting. The two men made their way out of earshot, making sure no one could hear them. Oh, uh, and here comes another idiotic thing for me. Are you sure we should let him go on with this? I thought the whole idea of this closure was to hamper the railway's profits. Mm, yes, it was. I was not expecting that move from him. However, I should have seen as this line is his family's legacy. Don't worry, though. He's young, and he doesn't have the experience needed to run a branch line of his own. Nothing will get in our way of reaching the digging site. Dun, dun, dun. Meanwhile, back at the sheds, and we still haven't done Mrs. Stard and the engines had finally managed to calm down Virgil to the point where he could at least think straight. I, I I don't know what to say. I, I could never thank you enough for this. I, I thought I was a gunner, sir. So did I, sir. Thank you so much. 
Well, I wasn't planning on buying any land from British Railways just yet, but they kind of forced my hand here. I'm sorry they put you through this, Virgil. I'll be fine, sir. I I'm just relieved I've been saved from the torch. Th thank you. For now. I'm what? forever in your no, I, I don't understand, though. Everyone turned their attention to Darius. Don't understand what? How can they just throw away a young and hard-working engine like it's nothing? It, it makes me sick to the frames. Ramsey, Virgil, and Clint gave Mr. Stard an assuring look. He quickly recognized what they meant and turned to face Buck. Buck, could you please take Clint's next train up to Redwick? I no, need to have a you. word with him and Virgil. I mean, sure, but I kind of wanted to... Buck, please. He looked over to Clint. The Abadair had a pleading look on his smoke. I, I can't scrap Clint. Don't worry. Clint, Clint's okay, fine. Okay, sir. I'll do it straight away. Clint is my, my little Thank you, my little chimkin nugget. I love Clint to bits. He, he is not going anywhere. I can confirm Clint will not die. I know you have planes. Plans. Shit. They waited till Buck was far enough away. Then Mr. Star turned to Darius. Darius, I want to run something by you. I would understand if you want no part in it, but I could use the help of a hard worker such as yourself. Do it. I'm listening. Well, I don't have the time to give you the full rundown, but the long and short of it is, we're going to try and break away from British Railway. There it is again. Tom, your joke is here to stay. But the long and short of it is, we're going to try and break... There it is, Tom. Your little silly-ass joke that you did when you edited episode one. I put it to good use. I learned. I learned. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love it. Away from uh, British Railways grasp. But I can't afford to purchase it's, everything. It's it's just funny. This it's this little moment. inside joke. So I will need your help to get it done. One contract. Because Mrs. Been. Stard said break away. So a breakaway war fucking flew across. Also, again, Tom, fuck you for closing all my tabs that day. Time. Can I trust you to help me with this? Darius pondered for a moment, deep in his own thoughts. But then, he replied, To be totally honest with you, sir, had you asked me this yesterday, I would have told you there was no way I could go along with something like that. But after seeing the complete disregard of a hard-working engine that British Railways sold, I have no trust left in them. So, you'll do it? It would be a pleasure, sir. I know us engines will be safer under your care. Especially after what you did for Virgil here. Then that's the beginning of Darius's downfall. This is the moment it all went to shit. Oh, splendid. I have to dash now, but these chaps are all in on it. They can fill you in on everything, including who is and isn't on board. He turned to walk away, but spun her back around before he reached the end of the turntable. Oh, and by the way, Clint and Virgil, I want you at the works first thing in the morning, okay? Yes, yes sir. And with that, Mr. Star walked off to do business with the Layered Mountain audio. Railways, while the other oh. engines looped Darius in on everything they knew about Mr. Star's plans. The next morning, Clint and Virgil were at the works bright and early, awaiting Mr. Star's arrival. I wonder what, what was the thing in this for? one? We've still got a few years till we have to go in for overhaul. True, but I'm sure he's up to something clever. Though I just don't know what yet. Well, we're about to find out. Here he comes now. Morning, you two. I bet you're wondering why I've made you come here this morning. Yes, sir. Last I checked, we're still good for operation for at least another three years. Yes, Clint, that is correct. However, no, I've not had in this an one. idea for how we can win That's some next. favor with the no, people. No, that's, on that's the a East five. Branch. That's a five. Even though. further than that, the line as a whole. Is that so? What you have in mind, sir? Well, as most of you know, cut cost from British Railways. Oh, there it is. Really, really <laughs> there it is. No, it's 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 that. <laughs> Fucking pump trolley. For engine and track maintenance. Well, I see that as an absolute failure. Pump there, trolley on And it really a, shows how they strength. care more about money than they do about the needs of the people and engines. So I have decided to invest in a complete overhaul of everything on the Eastwood branch. He gave them a subtle smile. That, of course, includes you two. So how about it? New livery sound tempting? It's your own choice what color you want to go into. Wait, seriously? 
We get to choose ourselves. Wow, th thank you so much, sir. I promise we won't let you down. That's the spirit. Now you two just tell the workmen what you want, and they'll get it sorted. And there's Drrr, not Drax. There's uh, Mr. Start. It's all the, the speed up. The oh dear God, the speed up, Chris. So here's some um, spear before I fix the fence. Not spear. Um, high planes before I fix the fence. The area of the eastward. The first and what appearance of needed Dexter. to be done in and around the area of the railway. Though the tracks and track bed were in generally good condition, minus the weeds. There were some areas that needed a lot of work done. And this the place has changed as well. The stations in particular. He had also taken the time to talk to the managers of the local businesses, and in particular, the quarry, who were all very grateful that he had saved their railway connection, allowing them to continue selling oh, the their goods smack. to all edges of the country. Shut the fuck up, Some Chris. even offered to help when the time came to start refurbishing the line. All seemed to be going well as he the train back missing. down to Manifel, not and really speed minding up. his surroundings, nor who was pulling the train. Jesus Christ, Chris. Why did you stop there, Darius? That night, Hart Hall and Anthony Manor, another engine deeply loyal to British Railways. Ah, ah, hmm, hmm. Yeah, no. That's a retcon and a half. He's not loyal to British Railways. He's loyal to get the fuck out of here, starred. That that is a uh, that that's a retcon and a half right there, boys. If I've ever seen one before, that is the retconniest of retcons. Yes, we were alone in the sheds of Colford. King Richard was not aware of the recent events, as he was away with the Express to London, but wouldn't be back for a while. Hard Hall and Anthony Manor, however, were fully aware of what had been going on. Actually, had was my quality like? Lower. No. Decided to meet up and discuss these troubling events. I just can't put my finger on it. Why would he buy a part of the line that British Railways have deemed unprofitable? What would he gain from it? That, and saving that pannier tank. If he was really that good of an engine, then why would British Railways condemn him for withdrawal? It's like he has lost all respect for their authority. As far as I can remember, he never had any. Not wrong. Ever since they took control of the railway after the war ended, he has resented their word. He's up to something, I'm sure of it. I just can't put my finger on what. Me neither. But yet again, we are stuck with no proof. We will just have to keep a close eye on them and not... And service approaching message. Because I didn't... Keyframe that. So basically, what I had to do was with the clip. If you watch carefully, you'll see the service approaching in the top corner. There, and it faded away. Faded away quickly because I put a thing up there. I basically cropped out an image that's perfectly in there, but I forgot to add it all the way through. My mistake. Get spotted. Do you think he heard anything? At the speed he was going, fat chance. <laughs> but Ramsey did indeed hear parts of their conversation. Though it wasn't much, he now knew Ramsey was supposed them, to stop here. Just not at a capacity where they had any evidence to bring back to British Railways. Ramsey thundered away to warn the others about what he had heard, while the two loyalists slowly drifted off to sleep. Yeah, that's what I that's what I should have done, Tom. But I, I do that now. I do that now. But back then, it's episode three. It's it's the second episode I edited. So to be fair, I've I've learned. And this was like Yeah, hang on. What episode is the when did this drop? Two years ago. August yeah, that's oh no, that's almost three years. <laughs> Two and a half years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Be our man one instead of Mr. Knox.
Tom, don't make me cry, you dick. And also, you shouldn't be jealous because you're the reason it exists, you dick. Okay. Eh, and I'm over it. How long am I going to thank Riley for initial root build? Ha. And also, ha. Huh? <laughs> oh, yep, that's true. Oh, yeah. This is when COVID is about... Oh, man. COVID-19 for fucking up the world. Yeah, this is like before COVID hit hit. Because this is... No, wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Did... Yeah, 2020. Yeah, no, no, no. COVID had hit at this point. This was like... No, wait. Was COVID 21? No, it wasn't 21. No, 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 no. Fucking all time flies too fast. It was 2020. It was the start of 2020. I remember now because I was working as an electrician at the time. That's why I didn't get so many episodes out. James once again submitting the LNER sucks. <laughs> Go every day for what you're about to see. That's what the end credit thing is. Ah, good times. Good times. Hello there. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, oh god, saturation. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what happens when you... Uh, what happens when you film in a Discord call without muting yourself? <laughs> oh boy, so next up the pro is this thing. Here's a fun thing, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you look up top where my mouse is, that right there is a flying flower pot. Because I forgot to remove it. It's in the air. I have removed it at this time. Hmm. Yeah. Let's go. This is where I figured out that OBS has a saturation function. I went a bit crazy. I'm so glad I stopped doing it after a while, but for a few episodes, things are going to look really colorful. Over the next couple of weeks after the Eastwood Mansion... Oh, oh, that was orgasm to my ear compared to the other stuff. Thank God, Chris. Ah, that's so much better. Hmm. Uh, let's see, let's just check something here for a quick second. There we go. Yeah, so this is this is when saturation was a thing. Mr. Starden was forced to juggle his job as railway manager at the Redwick and Chilton Hills, Oof. as well as his newly found position of owner of the new branch line. I'm so glad I'm fixing it. Though this. this left him with a lot on his plate. He had not been alone in the endeavor to refurbish the line, as a local townsfolk, quarry workers, and a handful of railway workers had volunteered to help out on the different sections of the line. The quarry had even lended their private engine, an XLNER J21 named Al, to help with hauling equipment up and down the line. 
With his help, the workers made excellent progress, though he wasn't always available due to his own job at the quarry. Things would, however, kick up a gear when Virgil finally emerged and there he from the is. works about a month later, looking quite smart in his new GWR green livery with a mocking British Railways written on his pannier tanks. He was immediately set to work, helping with the completion of the stations along the branch. Virgil was very proud of his work, something he was not shy to show the other engines at the Manifel Roundhouse one morning. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Can someone remind me to never do this ever again? It's not horrible, but fucking hell, it's colorful. And now that the stations are finished, our main focus is the track bed and line side work along the main stretch before we plan to reopen again. Oh, mate, that's awesome. So when is the deadline then? In about two months or so. We want to make sure everything works perfectly before we launch our passenger operations. Then there are the freight operations. We need the quarry to get some TLC, but Clint is supposed to be working on that, but that will only happen when he's done with his repairs. How's Clint's repairs getting on anyway? Will he be ready in time for the grand reopening? Well, the guys at the work estimate that his new parts will be here in about a week or so. Also, why is my watermark so huge on this? Also, um, listen to the voice. Like, this is... <laughs> I call this where Virgil hits puberty. Listen to my voice. After that, it should be about a week, about a week or so. After that, it should be about a week. That knock sound was supposed to be the voice dropping, but I timed it so poorly. Jesus Christ, Chris. Here in about a week or so. After that, it should be about a week, a week and a half of putting him back together again. And then giving him his delivery, of course. So, hopefully he'll be done on time. Fair enough. Seems you've been very busy then, Squirt. Guess it was a good call for Mr. Star to save your bunker after all. You can say that again. Hang on a minute. I just thought of something. What would that be? And I forgot to cut the Virgil here because I'm an idiot. You don't own any rolling stock, do you? What the hell are you going to haul up and down the branch, eh? You would think so, but the quarry has actually donated some of the wagons to us. The volunteers are currently working on restoring them. Though it's mostly mineral transport wagons and some brake vans. As for the passenger side, Mr. Stard managed to convince the men of VR to sell him my auto coaches. So for now, we're set. Damn, that's pretty swish. Oh, hell yeah. Looks like it's all coming together then. Excuse me? The engines looked ahead to see King Richard reversing into the sheds. He had an annoyed look on a smoke box. Oh, here he comes. Yes, King Richard? Yes, King Richard. What seems to be the problem? The problem? The problem is that this pannier tank is currently taking up one of the roads in a shed for the engines working for British Railways. And last time I checked, you no longer work for them. Have you forgotten that I technically still work for them? Seeing as my owner is the manager of this British Railways run operation, I'm technically owned by one of their workers. It does not matter. You would have been scrapped had it not been for the fact that our manager has a soft spot for you. So I ask you again, why are you in our sheds? Oh, come off it, King Richard. Virgil has been a good friend for many years. He should be allowed to rest wherever he wants. Drax, it's fine. I need to go now anyways, as it looks like my train is ready for me. Later, guys. <laughs> That's what I thought. Off you go. Yeah, yeah, whatever, you royal dick. And there it is. I beg your pardon? Virgil rolled off the turntable towards his train, leaving a very angry King Richard behind him, as well as two engines trying to hold their laughter in. Ah, here's the thing. This was filmed before Lower Redwick was made. Now, for those who have never figured this shit out, Chris is here to help you. That's Mr. Stard. Mr. Stard is currently looking towards where the dock branch is going to be made, a.k.a. he's technically supposed to be between Lower Redwick right now.
and about now, yeah, he's walking back towards the other side of the triangle, and he's jamming something into the points, so that the points are stuck. Look, Clark, I already apologized about ruining your karaoke night, okay? I don't care. What made you think it was fine to sing Deutschland, Deutschland über alle? And Tom cannot pronounce stuff, and I should have taught him that. It's Deutschland, Deutschland über alle. Uh, yeah, Buck is a bit of a uh, idiot. He ruined karaoke night. Honestly, Buck, I know he won the war and all, but that was just fucked up. Okay, okay, I get it. What can I do to make it up to you? Well, we've been trying all night to get you to leave, so... Oh, I just remember this as well. Yeah, listen to Clark's lines. There are certain words he say throughout the season up until about episode six, and I'm not sorry, Tom. Oh, maybe that. Ha ha. Fuck you too, Clark. You know, things would be a lot better around here if you just shut your fat ass- All right, enough. The engine shut their guard looked over at the yard man, who looked as if he'd just run a marathon. What's up, Chief? You look like you're in a hurry. Well, I kind of am. Here's There's been an accident with the nightmare Hello, the triangle. It's off the rails and it needs to be rescued. God damn it! What did that idiot Grange do this time? I'm literally right here, Clark. Oh, right. Force of habit. Wait, <laughs> the nightmare? Does that mean Ramsey's off the rails? No, there was a last minute roster change. Gregory took the nightmare while Ramsey took the night express, I but that's that. not why I'm here. I need an engine to take over the nightmare. Darius, how about you? No can do, sir. I have to take an evening passenger run in 20 minutes. Damn. Anyone else? I mean, I could take the train, but I can't be fucked. I guess that only leaves you then, Pat. Are you able to take the train on? Certainly, sir. I took my last train earlier tonight. I can head out straight away. Perfect. Please go there at once. Just Funny. be careful. Don't take it to... <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. Fast. He does know he's facing the wrong way. Right? I want everyone in this chat to know I spent hours on that. Finding the gear turning sound for the turntable, finding the uh, race car noises that matched up, uh, making sure everything lined up with the speed up. Dude, it was a pain in the ass. But it was fucking worth it. Oh, there he is. Gregory's first voice line. With a fence enough, that's Pat has made his way to where Gregory had rails. derailed. From what Pat could see, the mail train and Gregory's tender had stayed on the rails, while Gregory himself was wheels deep in dirt, his front barely missing the fence ahead. Hey up, lad. Are you okay? I'm off the rails and my wheels are dug into dirt. Do you think I'm okay? No need to blow your boiler up, lad. Whatever happened? I haven't a clue and I don't care. Neither should you. Your job is to get this train down to Manifel within an acceptable time frame. Not to play detective. So get to it, chop chop. All right, nice all right. Nice audio, Peter Callum. You will have to bring the vans back to the platform, Pat. I don't know what this is. You have to make this. sure that the post inside isn't damaged. After that... The crew will fill you another timetable, and you should be good to go. Right, oh. Oh, you hear that? You hear that? Watch Pat. He stutters a bit. It's because my controller disconnected. Should be good to go. Right, oh. 
And you can hear that. Dun, dun, dun. Bloody loony. I should have refilmed it, but fuck it. Ah, yes. This part. Pat quickly got the train back to the loading platform. I actually pissed. What is Mr. Dexby doing? Whatever he wants. I actually pissed people off with the next sentence that came out of Pat. Where the and workmen it's immediately got moving, checking all the vans for any damaged goods or damage to the vans themselves. Meanwhile, the yardman had given Pat the rundown on the timetable. And by the time he had finished, the train was almost ready to go. And then normally you should be at Manafell by midnight, however, due to the incident today, you have been given 30 minutes of leeway. Think you can make that? Shouldn't be an issue. How long until we can get going? It looks like they're almost done with the last van. If we're lucky, you can head off right after Darius clears the next section. Just then, the last door slammed and the workman gave the all clear for Pat to set off. And as if by clockwork, the signal switched to green, showing the way Oh, yeah, I should have said that. So, Buck says, I could take it, but I can't be fucked. But I was an idiot, because I wrote in the script originally, I can take the trick, and then I wrote in the script, everyone, no, cap, like, yells no. But I wrote it as everyone, and I forget that people don't read through the whole script. They just search for their name. So what I should have done is I should have written no like four times to get everyone to yell no. My bad. So I had to improvise rather than asking like five voice actors to do redo their lines. But, you know, it is what it is. The ahead was clear for Pat to set off into the night. Right, oh, come on, Jess. Off we go. There it is. Oi! None of that tanky nonsense. How to piss off every single train fan that's under the age of 15. Pat had soon gotten underway with the night mail, passing Clark who was doing his best to stay calm while trying to re-rail a very angry Gregory. He had to work extra hard to make up for the time they had lost. The mail train was very important and had to keep on schedule. With each Pat, stop Pat's they made, loading. Pat made up for lost time. And by the time he got to Eastwood Junction, he was only a couple of minutes behind schedule, much to the light of the workers who had stayed up later than usual to empty the post vans. He let off a cheerful whistle as he left Eastwood Junction, hopeful that he could finish the journey on time and give a good first impression on his night escapade. But as he came closer to Colford Tunnel, a thick fog had begun to engulf the surrounding oh, area, comes. making visibility almost impossible. Help! I can't see! Me neither. We'll have to slow down, just in case. Pat slowed his pace as he entered the darkness of the tunnel. Don't worry about it. And by the time he had reached the end of it, the fog had settled fully, limiting visibility to just barely in front of his buffers. Then, suddenly, and without warning, Pat jolted left at the points to the sidings, with the buffers not too far ahead. Oh shit! Brakes! His driver applied the brakes hard as Pat skidded to a halt behind some vans, just in front of the buffers. Jesus Christ, that was close! Are you alright, Pat? Mm. Tip-top shape here. Same with Jess. But what happened? Why are we switching to the sidings? It was probably that blasted signalman. He never does his job right. Hello, Hello my brother! brother. <laughs> uh, that's such a stupid joke. But, okay, so we have the Knuckles model. We all know we have the Knuckles model. I watched the guy on YouTube who did, like, a few jokes with... You got the Knuckles popping in and out, and... I had to slip the voice clip in somewhere, and that was probably the best place to slip it in. <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy with that cutaway. Now comes the fun part. Listening to what Reese and Tom say. <sighs> we don't need more delays. Let's back up and figure out what the hell happened so we can- Wait, do you hear that? Do I hear what? 
What on earth was that? Quiet. Let's listen. Though they try, um, the lines are, are you sure this is safe? What if we get caught? Don't worry, we won't. No one's been up there since the lines closed in 45. I hope you're right. Of course I am. We haven't come this far for nothing. Now come on, let's get moving. I believe that's the line, just without looking at the script. So that is obviously Jeremy's driver talking to Jeremy. Right. Neither Pat nor his crew could make out what was being said behind the wagons. Soon, the sounds of a steam engine drifted through the fog as it slowly faded into silence. I'm very confused. What was that? It sounded like talking and... and an engine? I don't know. But the beat of that engine, it sounded oddly familiar. Hmm. Well, whatever it was, it's gone now. Come on, we need to get back on track with the night mail. We're late enough as it is and we can't afford another delay. With that, Pat reversed out of the signings and got underway. He wasn't certain of what he had heard. All he knew for sure was that a steam engine had been in the fog behind those wagons but it hadn't sounded like anyone he knew on the railway. Hmm. When they got to Colford, they interrogated the workers on the matter, asking if they had seen or heard anything strange, hoping to get some answers. This, however, quickly fell through as the workers had been sat inside the station building playing poker and smoking their asses off while listening to the radio, therefore eliminating any chances of them seeing anything coming through due to the thick fog. <laughs> Only after hearing Pat's whistle had they emerged so they could get their shift over and done with. The rest of the journey down to Manifel went by uneventfully, with Pat still deep in his own thoughts and even more questions floating around in the smoke box, trying to work out what he had just encountered. Pat, the detective. The next morning, Mr. Stard was making his way to the sheds. The past few weeks had been very stressful for him, having to juggle between his newly preserved branch and his job as manager of the railway. No, While he had appointed hard, a leadership of the pipe, branch line real. to lessen the load off his shoulders, he still felt an obligation to help around the branch at any opportunity he could, which was not helping much with the stress levels. As he got closer to the sheds, however, the engines were deep in discussion, and he decided to try and catch a bit of it before announcing his presence. You can't honestly think we're going to believe such nonsense, are you? You have to admit, Pat, it does sound a bit strange, especially since I was down that way not too long before you. And I didn't see or hear anything strange, even in the thick fog. Yeah, Pat, it does sound a bit dodgy. Look, I heard what I heard. I'm telling the truth, lads. Besides, my crew and Jess heard the exact same thing, and they're just as confused. And that engine, it sounded very familiar. I know I've heard that cylinder beat somewhere before. I just can't put my buffer on what? At this point, Mr. Starr decided to make his presence known. He had heard enough of the conversation and frankly didn't care enough to let it continue. He walked onto the turntable and cleared his throat, completely halting all conversation and turning all attention onto him. Good morning, engines. Apologies for the intrusion in conversation, but I come bearing some news that I have to inform you all about, as it concerns the operation of the railway for the next few coming weeks to a month. Now, as you all know, I have been juggling my work on the Eastford branch and running this part of the network as a manager. Oh, there it Sometimes is. Sometimes having to prioritize the renovation. Fucking Smokey Joe on an express passenger. I love these little bits that I had around the place. For that, I can only apologize. Don't worry, sir. We understand why. It can't be easy having to prioritize between the two. Indeed, it isn't. As is this recent decision I've had to make this morning. What do you mean, sir? Well... 
I've just had an opportunity come up further up the region. This came as a bit of a shock, and unfortunately, I can't go into detail at this very moment. However, I will be leaving the railway for up to a month. Hopefully no more than that, as I don't want to leave you lot alone for too long, seeing as I have almost zero trust in your abilities to work without constant supervision. I see. Well, I wish you good luck in your escapades, sir. But who will be in charge while you're gone? Surely you won't just leave without someone to manage the railway. Oh, no, of course not. I've already appointed someone as acting manager while I'm gone. I've picked someone who knows every nook and cranny of the railway. Someone who I believe will do a fantastic job in my absence. And that, of course, can only mean... Buckleberry! The engines were God horrified. I forgot about that. <laughs> Sir, you can't be serious! Sir, please no. Are you trying to doom us all? Mr. Star laughed. Did you guys honestly believe I would be that stupid? Of course I'm not leaving Buck in charge. No, 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 no. The person who will be left in charge is Mr. Johnson. He has been working with me for many years, and while he isn't quite ready to become manager of a railway yet, I have full faith that he will do me proud, even while I'm gone. King Richard smiled. He was very fond of Mr. Johnson. He had always been a firm and well-rounded person who always tried to keep things running as efficiently as possible always putting in measures to make sure everything ran like clockwork. Oh, an excellent choice, good sir. I'm sure he will do a wonderful job in your place as acting manager. Riley, however, was slightly concerned with this choice. While Mr. Johnson was by all accounts a remarkable man and a very good at his job, he had been known to make quite extreme choices to ensure everything ran to his expectations and control the railways with an iron fist not giving any leeway or consideration for the engine's feelings or wishes, being the engine's more machines than living beings. Well, fun fact, changes were sure news to flash, when the time they are machines. Take charge. He just didn't know quite what to expect. Yes, a good choice indeed. Don't worry, we'll be alright in your absence. Thank you. I trust you all will at least try to behave while I'm gone. Anyways, I best be off. I have to inform the rest of the fleet as well as the lads on the Eastwood branch. I wish you all a good day, engines. Don't do anything Buck would do. And with that, in other words, Mr. Stark walked anyone. away to go inform the rest of his fleet about his imminent departure. Leaving the railway behind with an unsolved mystery, an uncertain future, and some imminent changes. And I believe that's the end of episode 4. We're at almost at the halfway point, boys. Two hours in. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> Riley's Riley the a joke that would persist the test of time. <laughs> That's how I did that, I forgot about that. Now comes episode 5, the most controversial thing ever. Uh, and I'll, I'll show exactly why. Cal Hack information, Dr. Who's superior to Star Wars. Yep, it's true. Yeah, that happened. Oh shit! That happened! Wow, I'm so proud of Andy. Anthony nitpicking, as usual. Joining the VA crew, finally. 2020 for fucking long. Din Jaron and Grogu, Mandalorian Season 2 was running. <laughs> Minecraft reference. Yeah, that's funny. What's the end here? Oh, Jesus Christ, this one. Chris, your English, your English typing is so bad. I got destroyed. I was ruined. 
by a man twice my size and age. Reese did indeed destroy me that day. Anyways, episode five, Black Rose, which is a Volbeat song, which is a banging song. Um, this is the one where Buck takes it to a new level. And the speed up is back. The news of Mr. Start's departure had come as a shock to most of the engines working on the Redwick and Children Hills. Though he probably had a good reason to make his sudden decision, no one knew exactly why he was leaving the railway, and any attempt at getting his reasoning had ended in more questions than answers. Soon, the day arrived when he boarded the train to Reading, leaving the railway in the hands of his trusted co-worker, Mr. Johnson. But this in and of itself had major cause for concern for some of the engine. Though he was a very capable and kind man to his employees and always strived to do well for the sake of the railway, his methods were a bit on the extreme side. He would never cater to the engine's wishes and always made choices for the benefit of economics and to boost the revenue for the company, leaving no room for the engines to move about and do as they please, ensuring that there would almost always I hate be my a job waiting sometimes. for them this at their is one next of those destination. Moments. This would make it difficult for Howdy. the engines loyal to Mr. Stard to execute the tasks they had been given while Mr. Stard was away. One evening, after all of his work was finished, Ramsey had made his way up to the sheds at Colford. Him and Darius had finally found a pocket in their busy schedule where they could get together and talk about the issues they had encountered after Mr. Johnson had taken charge. There's Dexby. Right next to the Ian e Black Rose. There he is. There was a slight chill in the air on the overcast evening as Ramsey reversed into the sheds where Darius was waiting for him. Ah, good evening, Ramsey. I was beginning to think you wouldn't show up. Everything all right? Yeah, sorry about the delay. I had to convince Hart Hall there'd be no change in the roster, and I was needed in Redwick in the morning. Not sure if he bought it or not, but that's not why we're here, is it? You had some news for me? Yes, and unfortunately, it's not good news. I've had some time to talk to Virgil today while waiting for my passengers to board at Eastwood. Apparently, revamping the line has slowed down as Mr. Johnson's new timetable leaves no room for Virgil to pick up his goods from the junction. Are you serious? Why would he do that? I was the one who brought those supplies to Manifel in the first place. They need them to repair that bridge to Spear. If it isn't reinforced, that could hold disastrous repercussions if they continue to run Virgil over there. That line pissed Callum off. The amount of attempts he spent on that fucker. The amount of times he messaged me going like, Chris, I fucking hate you for this line. If that bridge isn't repaired, that could hold disastrous repercussions for the, for the railway or whatever the fuck. Callum hated it. And I found that hilarious. And I just punched the mic. Ow. Yeah. And that's exactly why they've forbidden him to do just that. He's been staying in the sheds at the quarry along with Al for some time. So, unfortunately, work has ground to a halt on the tunnel. However, it gets worse. How do you mean? Well, Clint's new parts were supposed to arrive this week. However, no one has seen the van they were supposed to arrive in yet. It was supposed to come with Gregory's freight yesterday, but they weren't there. And according to the lads at the works, until the parts Hello, arrive, Anthony. they have been ordered by Mr. Johnson to focus on the railway's assets instead. Like the wagons buck wrecked last week and Pat's repaint. I still can't believe that Maniac got assigned to that train permanently. Whoa, 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 whoa. So Clint is what? Stuck in limbo until the parts have been sourced? Surely there is some way they can work on him <laughs> while they wait. There is. And don't call me Shirley. What? N no, I meant. <sighs> Never mind. Does anyone. Is anyone here actually old enough to get that reference? Surely, you can't. Surely, they, there's something they can do. There is. Don't call me Shirley. That is such an old reference, but it's a gold reference. And if you've never seen that movie, thank you, Cyril. Sir Liv, whatever the however the fuck I pronounce, Sir Cyril, whatever. I can't. I'm not good at speaking. Airplane is a f hilarious movie, and if you haven't seen it, 
you're, you're missing out, man. You had something to tell me too, right? Yeah, I heard news from the chaps at the industrial estate. Apparently, something big is happening up there soon. Something big? That makes big? sense. What would that be? They wouldn't say. All I know is that soon there will. Hey, what is going on here? Another little touch. Birds are chirping the entire time while these guys are talking, big right? Big is happening up there soon. Something big? What would that be? They wouldn't say. You hear the All birds I chirping. know is that soon there will. Hey, what is going on here? Mr. Johnson makes that ring from Metal Gear. The birds fly away. The birds are gone. That's the joke. Mr. Johnson scared the birds away. As they looked over to see Mr. Johnson approaching from around the corner of the shed, he had an angry scowl across his face. Uh, oh, um, g good evening, Mr. Johnson. I is something the matter? As a matter of fact, there is, 5357. 1025, why is it that you are here and not at the sheds at Manafell? You know fully damn well that you have a train leaving from there tomorrow morning, so you have just wasted money, time, and resources for this little night escapade of yours. So tell me, you two, what was so important that you had to waste my time and money on this? And you better have a good reason. Darius and Ramsey look well, comes Pat. If they could sweat, they would for sure be doing that right now. Though they both wanted to tell him to shove at a certain place, they both knew this would just result in more problems in the long run. So they had to come up with something. And fast. Well, uh, you see, sir, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just that, um, we're just, uh, uh... We're gay lovers, sir! Oh, and there we haven't is. had any time to ourselves for a while, so I broke the rules so I could come and see him, so we could... Ramsey, what the fuck, mate?! And this is the first incarnation of the clue of, hey guys, did you know Ramsey's gay? Mr. Johnson stared blankly at both the two engines. He stood there in silence for a few moments. Then he collected himself and looked up at the two, still a little flustered. Right. Okay, well, I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that. 1025, this had better be the last time I catch you doing something like this, or I swear I'll have you on shunting duty for a month. Do I make myself clear? You can. Another outtake that made it in. Yes, sir. Crystal clear. Good. Now, once you're done with whatever it is you two are doing, get yourselves back down to the junction so you're where you need to be tomorrow. I do not want any delays, especially not from you. Mr. Johnson turned and walked away, and as soon as he was out of earshot, Darius rounded on Ramsey. What the fuck was that then, Ramsey? Gay lovers? Really? It worked, didn't it? I see no issue here. I hate you. Sure you do. Anyways, I better get back before he changes his mind about letting me off the hook. See you around, sweetie. Fuck. You. <laughs> yeah, Darius wasn't too happy about that one. That was a weird fade. While Darius and Ramsey were having their secret get together, the engines down at the sheds of Manifel were deep in discussion. Ramsey's dodgy disappearance had left a sour taste in Hart Hall's mouth, and he was loudly voicing his concern to the other engines in the shed, much to the annoyance of the others who just wanted to sleep. Look, Buck, I get that he probably has a reason as to why he just took off and left, but we have been given new orders, and we have been running smoother and more efficiently since Mr. Johnson took over. There is no possible way that what he is doing, wherever he is, can't be important enough to break the new guidelines we have in place when everything seems to be running so smoothly here for once. Mate, we don't care. What Ramsey gets up to at night is his own business and his alone. Yeah, and besides Hart, it's not like it's something all of us haven't done before. Remember? When Mr. Stard was running the show, we were all allowed to move about as we pleased. Honestly, I prefer the way Mr. Stard does it over this strict regime Mr. Johnson has going on. It just sees us all as expendable machines and doesn't care about what we say. He doesn't even address us by our names. Hate to break. This is the moment where I knew Hart was going to be the main villain. Break it to you four, but we are machines. It could have been Richard. We were built to work but for But at humans. this point, I knew. And if we aren't able to meet our expected performance, we get withdrawn and replaced. 
just like that pannier tank should have been had it not been for the intervention of Mr. Stard. Honestly, if he was condemned for withdrawal, there would probably be a good reason for it. Thor was about to retort, but Buck beat him to it, furiosity burning from within his firebox. How dare you talk about Virgil Ooh, like here that! He, comes. he has done nothing but work hard and do everything in his power to be as useful as possible, and you have the audacity to sit there and talk about him like that. You disgust me! The engines were shocked at Buck's outburst, and Bambury quickly tried to defuse the situation. Whoa, whoa there, Buck. Easy now. I'm sure he didn't mean it like that. No, I won't have it. How would you feel, Hart, if one day they withdrew you for the slightest inconvenience of something so simple as reallocation? Wouldn't be so puffed up in the smoke box then, I imagine. You dare talk to me in that manner? How can you even suggest that me, a successful, hard-working, I would turn down the music in this part, would if ever I could. be sent for scrap? Don't be ridiculous. And besides, Bucklebury, you're not one to talk. You spend more time off the rails and in the works than you do actually working. I'm honestly surprised they didn't take you with them as well. You'd be more useful as a stationary boiler than anything. Well, you pompous, big-headed son of a- Enough, both of you. Pipe down and go to sleep. We have work tomorrow. We don't need to be kept up all night listening to you two bicker. Yes, Buck. Be quiet, will you? Us important engines have actual work tomorrow. We don't have time to listen to your preaching to the choir. You know what? Fine. But I'm not sleeping in the sheds with this heartless bastard. I'm leaving. Buck. Let him go. He's too damaged in the smoke box to see reason. Good riddance if you ask me. One more word out of you and there won't be a single engine works in the country that can fix what I'll do to you. Doing threats now, are we, Buck? Just wait till Mr. Johnson hears about the this. The main villain is Go born. on, tell him. I dare you. And while you're at it, take your hollow threats and shove them up your tender. With those final words, Buck steamed out of the sheds, heading for the disused mainline sheds on the opposite side of the station, leaving the sheds to an awkward silence as the engines slowly drifted off to sleep, one by one. Over the next couple of days, the mood between Buck and Hard Hall had not improved. The two hadn't said a word to each other since the incident. And while Hard Hall often slagged Buck off at any opportunity that he had fuck in with the me. sheds, Hard Hall often Buck slagged Buck himself off. from almost all the engines. Also, if you look closely here, you'll see that Buck's cab Optics actually elsewhere to avoid contact where possible. through that. Concerning some the shed was too low, so Buck actually all the engines destroy sleep his elsewhere roof. to avoid contact where Spray. possible concerning some of his co-workers with his odd behavior however with mr johnson's new strict schedule they didn't get a chance to check up on him though this was not the only issue to arise from his strict operating plan most engines hated how the operations were going feeling that the workload was very unbalanced and never ending Whee! while some engines would have a new train to oh, immediately after well. reaching their destinations Others would have nothing to do other than sitting in the sheds, waiting for a gap in the schedule where they would finally be allowed to work. This led to an all-time low in morale, as while some engines were overworked to the point of exhaustion, others felt underused and envied the others were getting to stretch their wheels every day. This would eventually lead to many arguments breaking out between the engines more often than usual due to the high stress from all parties involved. The engines loyal to Stard knew they had to do something to get rid of Mr. Johnson, but they didn't know how to. However, someone did have an idea on who to ask. No, no, and a thousand times no. There's no way in hell we're asking him. Do you think I want to loop him in? Of course not. But what choice do we have? Here Let's it comes. Away, fool, and get hey guys, you notice anything? A anyone at all? Any takers? Any, any keen-eyed viewers notice anything? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, good. Let's keep moving. It's scrapped. That sounds more sensible than this, doesn't it? For once, Clark, I almost agree with you. Look, guys, it's a miracle we're all allocated here tonight, and the fact that he will be here soon as well. It's now or never. Stevie oh, got it. Okay, but you better be right about this. I have many faults, but being wrong is not one of them. That's a lie, and you know it. Shut it, you. Okay, guys, here he comes. Oh, right, this work, is the Thomas Clark. Wait, what? Deal. 
bastards! Just then, the shape of a tender backing into the sheds broke through the darkness. Soon, the entire engine was visible in the light of the shed lamps. And the engine was none other than... Evening, Buck. How are you this evening? Hmm? Oh. Hey. Okay, I guess. I I'm sorry, Ramsey. I'm, I'm not feeling too hot. I really need to get some rest and... Buck, you know no one is mad at you for standing up to heart, right? What? Yeah, we heard what happened. He had no right to say such things about you or Virgil. You were right to call him out on it. It was disgusting behaviour. Oh, um... Thanks. I, I think? It just wasn't right, you know. It really hit close to home what he said, and... I guess I just... Ooh, this is making me snap. feel some kind of way. Buck, it's fine. I'm guessing all the stuff with Mr. Johnson's new way of running things are also to blame for you feeling like this. Oh, heavens yes. I want to punt that man to the moon and never see his face again. Unfortunately, I can't do much. I'm just a single engine, after all. Yeah, I just hope the rumours aren't true. Rumours? What rumours? Haven't you heard, mate? They're talking about giving Mr. Johnson Mr. Starr's job. Uh, what's the flop button in the corner shed? Uh, funny, innit? Apparently HQ is impressed with his work ethic and wants to see what he oh, can yeah, do with it is. full control Sorry, of the line and its assets. Okay, no. That cannot fucking happen. What the fuck are HQ thinking? Yeah, um, I wish I didn't do this skit. I cropped out on Mr. B, made the hi noise, and sent him past. Kind of breaks the moment. Wish I didn't do it, but fuck it. It's funny. King, do they not care about us or something? I swear, this shit would have never happened back in the days of the Big Four. At least then we were properly respected for our work. Too right. There was a pause in conversation. Then Ramsey decided that the time had come to get down to business. Look, Buck, I want to ask you something, but it's a very delicate matter. One that not everyone can know about, and honestly, we weren't sure if we could ask you or not, but we've run out of options. Oh, let me guess. You guys want me to help get rid of the dickhead in charge right now so Mr. Stark can continue his plan to privatize the line so his legacy doesn't get tarnished by what I can only assume is British Railways trying to be penny pinchers. Yeah, fuck it, I'm in. Here's a little fun fact for the people. Buck isn't an idiot. Bucks is actually quite smart. He can read the room around him. He's an empath. He knows what's going on. He's been knowing this. And the fact that people haven't noticed that he's noticed really shows that they don't pay attention. I love adding stuff like this in where it's just like, yeah, I knew. You, you didn't realize I did? Hold up. You knew. Who's the bastard that spilled the beans then? Clark, I swear to God. Hey, don't look at me. I didn't do shit. Remember the night the two dickheads from British Railways were here to take Virgil and I got sent out to take Clinton's train? Not suspicious at all, lads. Besides, that train got delayed coming in from London, which gave me some time to kill. So I snuck into the good sheds over there and listened as you guys roped Darius in. Wait, so why didn't you let slip about the plans then? We're basically staging a hostile takeover by way of guerrilla warfare. Not the most legal thing in the world. Mate, I hate British Railways and what they've done to the rail network. Who cares if we break the Geneva Convention a few times to restore the line to its former glory? I've been wanting to help you guys for a while now, but I figured I'd wait until you guys asked me rather than strong arm my way in. Huh. That's fair. Welcome aboard then, I guess. Mr. Stard might kill us, but we're glad to have you on board. Yeah, now there's just the issue of getting rid of Mr. Johnson. Oh, that's easy. Let's just kill the fuck. Oh, there okay, goes. no. Too obvious and way too extreme. Okay, okay. Let's keep it simple then. That's better. What did you have in mind? Break his legs. Wait, what? You heard me. Break his fucking legs. But, but, can't we just take a harmless approach to this? Did I stutter? Break his fucking legs. Yes, break his legs. You guys handle that and me and my crew will take care of the rest. Sound good? I mean, I guess, but who would be crazy enough to break his legs? Okay, Riley, we're up. What? Why me? Less questions, more action. Let's go. Fine, fine. <sighs> Why me? <laughs> One of my favorite dynamics in Rails to Refuge as a whole is between Clark and Riley. 
Clark and Riley have such a good dynamic. I love it. Because Riley is a bit more sensible while Clark is just like, boss man, you said go, we go. It's, it's, oh, I love it. Now, th there will be a point here where full screen will be exited and I'll show you why. Ah, the brisk evening smell. Smells like a promotion coming my way. Who's there? Show yourself. There they are. This isn't funny. Show yourselves, or I'll have to. That's a good one. Okay, we're gonna exit full screen mode real quick. Show chat replay. You guys are gonna wanna see this. Well, that went better than expected. Oh my god, is he gonna be okay? Who cares? Anyway, what happens now is up to Buck. Clark honked Just twice, read what recess. Buck reversed into the platform with a cattle truck. It's, uh, it's gonna be a, uh, I didn't realize this until, um, Reese pointed it out. His crew quickly emerged and dragged the unconscious man into the cattle truck, throwing him in without a care. Well done, you two. We'll handle the rest. <laughs> there it is. What will you do with him, Buck? Riley, don't ask me questions you don't want the answer to, okay? He's got a point, mate. Oh, Jesus Christ. Right, we're off. Get back to the sheds, you two. Okay, mate. Good luck. Thank you. Now, driver, did you remember the cocaine and the needle? I'm sorry, the what? No questions! Ah, oh, man. There's something seriously fucked with that engine. You don't say! Yeah, we, 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 uh, I didn't think of that. Um. Also, here's the thing I yet, have yet to learn. You see how dark it is and you can't see shit? I need to start filming earlier in the day. Like, game-wise. Earlier in the day, make it look like later. Buck soon arrived at the suitable embankment, where his crew promptly rolled the unconscious man down the hill before walking down to do the, <coughs> final deed. The next morning, some workmen found a bloodied and bruised Mr. Johnson giggling to himself at the bottom of the embankment, clearly high as a kite. They quickly got a hold of the emergency services and took him to a hospital for examination and treatment. It would be a further two days before any news regarding the incident came to the engine's attention. In the meantime, work had continued along the same as usual. This was mostly due to the fact that Mr. Johnson had planned ahead a week at a time, ensuring that trains ran even in his absence. On the second day after the incident, an inspector came to the sheds at Redwick. With him was a young... Oh, here he comes. Man, the boy. Eager expression Ian comes into the picture. Good morning, engines. Oh yeah, Reese also got pissed off at me because I used this character for him, but now, suck it. Now, as you were all aware, Mr. Johnson was found two days ago in quite the sorry state and had to be taken to hospital. How's he doing? Is he making a good recovery? I'm afraid not. When he came into the hospital, it was found that he had suffered a hard blow to the head. As well as fractures to yep, his Yep, there legs. it is. Shut the fuck it up, James. It will be another good long while before he recovers fully from these injuries. If he ever does. Oh dear. That's such a shame. He was such a respectable and hard-working man. The railway has done so much better with him in charge. Some of the engines gave him a dirty look. But the inspector spoke again. Yes, so it seemed. But after what we found in his system, dun, we dun, may dun. have been wrong in our perception of Mr. Johnson. Whatever do you mean, sir? That man did everything to ensure the railway ran like clockwork. What could he possibly have done wrong? Well, when he was found in the ditch, he was clearly under the influence of something, and it didn't take us long to find out what it was. He had a bag of cocaine in his pocket when we brought him into it's the hospital. It's not Stubby. Stubby looks very the different. Gasped. 
Cocaine? My God, I would never have guessed. Yes, indeed. He hid his addiction really well, though it seems the stress of running the railway in such a harsh manner must have been the breaking point for him. What on earth are you talking about? The railway has never run smoother than it is right now. He's done everything and more than Mr. Stodd can do, and done it perfectly. So favouring to run the cheap engines, neglecting servicing, keeping engines on the shed for days on end and running the cheap engines into the ground is running things smoothly, is it? Not in my eyes, it isn't. (laughs) Well, I... Enough. The reason I'm here today is because we have to make the decision to remove Mr. Johnson's position as manager and terminate his work contract with the railway due to the recent evidence. The engines looked at each other, some with happiness, others with pure shock. But, but sir, we will take charge as manager. I take it Mr. Starr won't be returning any time soon. No, he will not. Last we heard from him, he was conducting business in Glasgow and won't be back for a while yet. Glasgow? What the hell is he doing in Glasgow? Probably getting smashed and trying to swindle some poor bloke. Yay! As always. <clears throat> Anyways, as for who will take over as manager... He motioned to the young lad stood next to him. Yes, hello. My name is Jack Andrew Hoff, but you yeah. lot can call me Mr. Hoff. Mr. I'm Jack Hoff. i Mr. Stard and taking over the duties from Mr. Johnson going forward. Though I'm quite new to this job, so it may take a little while for me to settle in. Which is why I'll be sticking around until he's fully settled in to show him the ropes. But I will most likely follow along with the guidelines Mr. Stard left behind, so you can expect things to return to normal pretty soon. The engines all cheered at the good news. Well, all except King Richard. Uh, goodbye, structure and efficiency. Welcome to the railway, Mr. Hoff. I look forward to seeing your development on the railway in the coming weeks, and I hope you enjoy your time here. And if you ever have any questions, or need any help, I'm sure me and the rest of the lads will be more than happy to help you. Right, chaps? Hell no. Not in a million years. Fuck that, can't be bothered. I'm sorry? (laughs) Don't worry. That's just a way of saying hello. I see. Well, we best get going. We have a few more people and engines to visit around uh, the railway, and we wouldn't want to make them What wait. was Mr. Stark doing in Glasgow? Indeed. Farewell for Pass him. yourself. The yard foreman Stream should bastard. be around soon. To- Thank you. Um, Mr. Star was trying to conduct business uh, throughout the country, trying to figure out who would be interested in buying shit uh, from the Eastwood branch. Of course, uh, easier said than done. Not a lot of people wanted stuff until he mentioned uh, the Lumen Glue Factory, uh, which was a point where Scotland went, yeah, we'll take that. And Mr. Star was up there for a while doing business and getting his fucking face smashed in with the alcohol. Yeah, let's continue. That was the wrong video. There you go. To give you your work for today. I hope you'll all feel a bit more motivated now that things are returning to normal. And so, the two men turned and walked away. I hate my lack of crossfades. Leaving the engines That's my earliest mistakes. Chatting along again as if nothing had ever happened, as they knew that the railway was safe once again. Or at least, most did. Also, hang on a minute, is that Pat? Again, Backwards as if nothing had ever happened, as they knew that the railway was safe once again. Or at least, Yeah, I did. think that is Pat, who's... Tender outwards. What the fuck is Pat doing tender outwards? Hmm. Interesting. Now it's episode five. Right. So, there's probably I don't can't remember if it's this one or the next one, but there's a credit here that I'm not too happy with. We we will gloss over it like we gloss over the LNER. Five episodes in, still thanking Riley for building my route. Oh shit! I forgot to credit in episode four. Whoops. Callum four. 
Freddy gave me a good idea, you'll see it in episode 6. 6? No, 7. Ha! <laughs> Miss Reese Davies for playing my Johnson. That means dick. Bacon. Need I elaborate? Bacon is great. James once again admitting to the LNAR sucking. Oh, that's a, that's a, this was a 500 subs. Sh January 29th, 2021. In two years, I've gotten 1.5k. Holy shit. Wow. And this is my favorite end credit scene. Skip it a button, Dad. <laughs> That's my favorite end credit scene ever. Ever. It is. The, the mix of King Richard going the wrong way, plus my friends in the background just dying of laughter because of how funny that was. It was... Uh, it, it, it was a good one. It made me very happy. So, now ladies and gentlemen, comes the point where I say, small break. Toilet, food, and I'll be right back. Give me about five-ish five -ish minutes. I'll be right back. Um, I blame James if anything goes wrong. Be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I have just returned with some uh, buffalo wings and we're about to get nasty because episode six is nasty. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue. <sighs> Let's go.
This is when I found that music piece. Nice. A few weeks had gone by since the incident with Mr. Johnson. It had finally all but returned to normal. Mr. Hoff had made an excellent first impression on the engines and staff alike, always trying to come up with new ways to ensure their comfort and well-being, while also running things just as smoothly and efficiently as Mr. Starr did. While he had been a bit cautious and unsure of himself in the beginning of his job, he had gotten all the guidance he needed from the staff and engines to hone his skills, and before long he had full control of the ins and outs of the line, and could run the line by himself, much to the joy of the other engines who already felt like he was one of their own. At least, most did. In the time Yay, he had been in Virgil's charge, back. Mr. Hoff had also made it a point to allow Virgil back onto the main stretch of the line to allow for the picking up of the goods needed to continue the restoration of the Eastwood branch. No sooner had Virgil stopped at the bridge Oops. leading to Spear okay. had the volunteers flocked the poor engine to get started on repairing the bridge. We need to break down this scene. For lost time. Let's um, skip back a we little bit here. Bridge leading to Spear. Right. Does anyone want to tell me the five things out of place in this scene? Any takers? Anyone at all? I'll eat one buffalo wing, and then I'll see how many people get right. Now we got Dexby. Hmm. Okay, I've eaten one buffalo wing. You guys got three out of five. Not bad. So, using my computer mouse as reference points, Zebra, Dexby, Knuckles. Right up here, you have SCP. 096, the shy guy, where if you look at his face, he'll kill you. And then if you move my mouse over this way, there's Peanut, also known as SCP-173, because if you look at him, he stops moving. If you stop looking at him, you're dead. Yes, James. Yes, yes, James. What? What is it? All right, well, James can type what he does while we continue this episode. ...had the volunteers flock the poor engine to get started on repairing the bridge, wishing to try and make up for lost time. Fuck you, One James. morning, Virgil was sitting at the platform at Eastwood Junction, waiting for some volunteers to arrive from Redwick on Daria's morning run. He closed his eyes as he simmered in the morning sun. Feeling a sense of pride and joy to have work picking up again and feeling like they are finally getting somewhere with all this work. All that was left to do was to line side up the spear on the main stretch of the branch and they'd be done. He cracked a smile and almost dozed off when... After Virgil, are you there? Huh? What? what? Oh, hi Darius. S sorry, I, I didn't hear you coming. How are you? I'm pretty good, thank you. A bit tired having to cover for Pat's mail run while it's in the works, but other than that, I'm radiant. You seem happy today. <laughs> Making good progress in the branch then? Yep. After Mr. Hoff took over, I was able to make my chips down to Manifel again. We've finally been able to repair the bridge. My so microphone today, sounds so going crisp to inspect here. the tunnel before I can get the all clear to continue up the spear. So with any luck, I'll have my shed back today. Well, I'll be. Those volunteers really know how to be efficient, that's for sure. They sure do. D did you say you've been covering for Pat? What's happened to him? Well, apparently, he had to make an emergency stop on his first run with the mail train when he came up with that ridiculous ghost story of his. The emergency brake did some damage to his brakes and wheels, hence his trip to the works. Yikes, that can't have been fun. Yeah, emergency stops never are fun. But they found further signs of wear and more of his parts, probably due to the neglect from British Railways. So he's basically been given an overhaul at this point. Though, last I heard, he was almost ready for steam tests before finally returning to service. Well, that's good at least. From what I've seen from the increasing workload, you lot need all the help you can get. Wait, Riley's can say coaches. That again. Riley doesn't have coaches, you know that, right? Riley's never had coaches. Riley's a shunting and goods engine. 
As much as he gets on my nerves, there's no denying how much of a hard worker he is. We will definitely be able to sleep better with his help. Oh, and before I forget, the lads of the works have a message for you and the volunteers. There's still no update on Clint's parts. The workers at Swindon can confirm that they were sent on the train Gregory was pulling and that it was supposed to be dropped off at the yard at Manifold Junction. And Gregory himself, his crew and the yard master confirms that he stored it where it was supposed to go before taking the train on. What happened after that is a complete mystery. Virgil's face fell. That's a shame. We were hoping he'd be ready for by the time of the grand reopening. Well, he won't be. Uh, suffer. Oh well. Unless that van's found, there's really nothing we can do. Unfortunately not. Just then, the guard blew his whistle and waved his flag, signaling Darius that it was time to continue the journey. Well, that's my cue to hand out. Good luck today, mate. See you tomorrow. You too. Have a good one. And with that, both engines set off in their respective ways, both looking forward to another fine day of work ahead of them. Another thing, this synchronized departure took ages to get to work. TS does not like, um, trains. Over the next couple of days, the search for the and missing the man first the entire of... railway. Though uh, it technically gym. wasn't property of the railway, Mr. Hoff had insisted to the board the that they gave their assistance the in the search, state. insisting that it would only benefit them in the long run, as Clint's completion would open up for more space in the works, which would drastically increase efficiency and capacity. This was all that was needed to convince the board, sending out dedicated search parties and inquiring about the whereabouts of the missing van. However, this yielded little to no results. One thing that did, however, was Pat's overhaul. There he is. After the search parties there he formed, is. He emerged from the works, looking as good as new, sporting a clean BR black livery, as well as his new BR number of 44073. And... Removing the connection between him and Kefili Look at that in the background. It's a thing Ben never finished. That's Ben's I3 that he's yet to fucking finish. Ben, get on it. Stop fucking around with new stuff and finish your old stuff. Let's continue. The castle once and for all. On the evening of his return to service, Pat was sat in the sheds at Colford talking with Clark, Riley, and Buck. The trio oh, have been filling. Hang on. <laughs> Pay attention to this shot right here, ladies and gentlemen. You see the shot. Memorize the shot, watch this. Filling him in on all the recent events that had transpired, but mainly about the disappearance of Clint's parts. So you've looked all over the railway and still nothing? Pretty much, mate. We even checked the entire industrial estate. Do you have any idea how hard it is not to get in the uh... way of Jim Shunting while he's trying to comb the entire estate? I tell you, it's almost impossible. Anyone notice that the lamps just suddenly appeared out of nowhere? Yeah, lamps activated through speech. You're not wrong. Yeah, no thank you. I'd hate to even get close to getting in his way. He takes his work way too seriously. Moving about like he owns the fucking place. Tell me about it. I was sent there to help him one day. Never again. What about there? Did you go up that way? He said, looking towards the abandoned branch. Oh, not this again, Pat. No one has been up there for years. There's even buffers there to block the way. It's impossible to get up there, even if we wanted to. Buck then suddenly looked up. Hang on. No, there isn't. Yes, there is. They've been there for years, Buck. Even you must have seen them by now. You're right. I have seen them. Then? But they're not blocking the way. Someone has moved them. I saw it yesterday when I got put into the loop to allow Rancy to pass with the express. I just didn't think anything of it. Well, at least not until now. Wait, seriously? This better not be another one of your pranks, Buck. Or I swear, I'll flood your firebox with sewage water. Clark, you couldn't catch up to me even if I was running backwards on one cylinder with my regulator jammed open. Let alone now. And no, I'm not joking. Go see for yourself! In that case, fuck it! I'm gonna go exploring! Who's coming with me? Pat? No can do, lad. Hmm. I have the mail train to pull in a few hours. Damn it! Buck! Fuck yeah! Count me in! Uh, No. Buck, you're too heavy for the branch. The bridges will crumble under your weight. You calling me fat? You cheeky little- Guess that means you volunteer then. Come on, let's go! What? No, I- Ugh, Buck being called fat. Someone has to look for after the you. sixth time.
This is also the first time Riley music appears. Well, I'll be. They have been moved, and the bushes look like they've been forced apart by something big and heavy. Less detective work, more exploring! Alright, alright, I'm moving. As they reach the first bridge, Riley slowed his pace to a crawl before gently edging forward. Trying huh, to ensure edging. the bridge was safe. If you don't Robert, get that, you're Clark too young. Stopped. Are you coming or what? I will as soon as you're over. Wait, why am I going first anyway? This was your idea. Because if the bridge isn't safe and gives way, I won't be the one in deep shit. Now come on, chop chop. Of course that's why. James. Riley soon made it across the bridge. I appreciate it. Clark that it was safe to Thank pass. you. He secretly hoped you that he had weakened the bridge enough so the little shunter would take the plunge. Though this would mean that he'd be trapped, he figured it was a reasonable trade-off. However, he had no such luck as Clark reached the end Come of the back. bridge and buffered up to him, pushing the pannier further up the old dilapidated branch. While moving up the line, a light fog had rolled over the area. While it hadn't affected visibility too much, it was still enough to convince the engines that slowing down might be the best course of action, much to Clark's annoyance. Soon enough, the two engines had reached the top of the hill and continued on with a more brisk pace, feeling more confident in the integrity of the rails beneath their wheels. But suddenly, Riley slammed on his brakes, causing Clark to smash against his buffers. Ow! What the hell, man? This makes no sense. What is it? Clark looked ahead. He saw a set of points that divided the line. One went straight ahead and was just as rusty as the rest of the line. But it's the called timing. To the left looked as if it had just Why does been laid Riley always have too long ago? Oh. Laid. Why does Riley always have the same head code? Victory Works used a system where in the number generator the head code is a letter. And I have a sheet where I just copy the number so that everything is correct. So the bunker is correct, the firebox and the firebox, the funnel's correct, the steps are correct, the everything's correct. Because of that, I copied the same code over. Honestly, I don't give a shit about head codes. They're just lamps. I know what the significance of them are, but I don't give a shit. So in the in the earlier episodes, it's it's well always it's going to be like that. So, eh. I thought you guys said this place got abandoned during the war. It was. No one has been up here since late forty four, early forty five. I should know. Why? Because I used to run this line. Seems legit. Lord Rob. Riley peered ahead into the unfamiliar section of track, making out a shape in the fog. He inched forwards, managing to make out exactly what it was he was seeing. Hello. What have we here? What is it, boy? Did Timmy fall down the well? No, you moron. Look, there's a van up here. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Hookers and dynamite? <laughs> what? No. For Clint's parts, you pencil. Oh, yeah, that makes more sense. Driver, go and check it out. Riley's driver quickly departed his cab, walking over to the van inspecting what was on the inside, but he quickly returned. I can't get into the ruddy thing. It's padlocked. Did you check the door on the other side? No, why would I? Bet you there's no lock on that. That seems a little wall break. Dude, it's a show about talking trains. Just go check out the fucking door, will you? Fine, jeez. Riley's driver walked to the other side of the van, and as predicted, it wasn't locked. He opened the door and peered inside, before walking back over to the engines again. Well, anything? No engine parts, that's for sure. Why the pencil? Because Riley called well, the pencil. Then, what was it? You see, that's the confusing part. It's filled with tools and mining equipment. And they look quite new if you ask me. Definitely not made in the 40s. Well, that's strange. Yeah, oh, here it comes. strange is your song choice on karaoke night last week. We're up all night to get you lucky. We're up all night to get you lucky. We're up all night to get you lucky. That's what talk about. If Tom of Dark DJ Productions is here, get stuffed, mate. You deserve that. <laughs> that is one of my favorite fucking bits ever. It's just... Yeah, almost as strange as your song choice on karaoke night last week. 
We're out all night to get you lucky. We're out all night to get you lucky. We're out all night to get you lucky. Let's not talk about that ever again. <laughs> no deal. Can't. So what now? Do you want to continue or go back down? <sighs> I was afraid of that. Not too much further up ahead, they reached another bridge. This one looked to be in an even worse state than the previous one. However, due to the fog, Riley and Clark didn't seem to notice as they crept onto the bridge. The combined weight of the two of them making it feel as if the bridge itself was swaying back and forth. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, stop being such a pussy! If we die, we die! This is the last time I go exploring with you. Could be the last time we go exploring, period. So enjoy it while it lasts. Your confidence is so reassuring. Oh, here it is. Wait, do you hear that? Did I hear what? Um, C -C Clark, you, you heard that, right? Nope, 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 no, 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 no. Clark? Clark? Fuck this. Clark, wait up! And here comes... Jeremy. One of the slower episodes. But I still like it. Not a lot of music in this one. Yeah, I did that. Uh, yeah, that too. Oh yeah! I forgot about that. Nitpicking these videos. For touching your banana. Oh, that's a old one. Oh, that was this time? Oh, nice. This is like memory lane. We skip over that one. There we go. For workout tells me it's a five. Yeah. Twenty twenty one. And what's 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 this then? All right. Yeah, guys, why are you still here? There's no end credit scene, guys. There's there's no end credit, guys. We can we can leave, guys. There's no end credits. I could just skip to the next one. Oh wait, there is one. Smiling. Okay, the weeks know. went on slowly for the engines on the Redwick and Children Hills, a summer gradually faded. The quality to has just work had continued so as usual, much. with Mr. Stard still absent from the railway, and Mr. Hoff leading the charge instead proving to be quite the capable young lad. With his excellent work ethic and steadfast business mind, the railway ran like clockwork, with the odd incident here and there due to a certain grange. Whoops. However, there was still the issue of the disappearance of Clint's parts. Try as they might, 
the engines had no luck in locating the missing van. Not even Clark and Riley's escapade had yielded any results, though they wouldn't say much on the matter when inquired about their little adventure. Meanwhile, not too far from the railway, Mr. Starden was surveying the scene of a scrapyard in front of him. Ah, yes, the scrapyard. He had been yard. very busy the past month. Darius is now all green. over the yes. country to conduct business and try and strike some deals with various companies regarding the different wares that the Eastwood branch had on offer. This escapade had proven to be extremely successful, with many of the larger towns and corporations showing their interest, and Mr. Stard promising swift and safe delivery in his pristine vans and wagons. The problem was, he had no wagons, so he had to locate some before he could return to the railway. He walked up to the foreman of the yard and turned his charisma on. Good day. Oh boy. Plot hole with episode 10 there. Okay, Anthony, you're gonna have to explain that one to me. Hey, sir. I was wondering if I could inquire about buying some of your best wagons? Hmm? Oh, sure. Though our best isn't really great. This is a scrapyard, after all. I see. Well, I didn't come all this way for nothing. Let's have a look at them, then. The foreman shrugged and motioned for Mr. Stark to follow him deeper into the scrapyard. Soon they arrived at a pair of sidings in the back of the scrapyard filled with wagons. However, most of the wagons in the siding looked either to be rotted and rusted, while others were mineral. Wait, hang on. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, I know, I know that, Anthony. Uh, the thing is, uh, and we'll get to it later, but Riley and... Or Riley believes they forgot to change the points, but in reality, it's the guys working up there who've set the points again and forgotten to switch it back. ...wagons, which he already had more than enough of. He walked through the different rakes of wagons, noting a few he could work with. Others were completely beyond saving. You got you got to remember, there's a, there's a few, fair few days, hell, even weeks, maybe a month, between now and episode 10, so... It was no one the end of a long rake of wagons that were in relatively good Doctor shape. Strange. When he looked up at the last wagon, he saw it was a standard van, still used on the main line to this day, and it looked as though it had just been put there. So, what's the story with this one? Storage van for your tools? No, that one came here a few days ago. Bit strange if you ask me. Seems to be in perfect working condition if you ask me, so I've got no clue why they wanted it scrapped. But what do I know? Again, my I being, just scrapped uh, a useless people. shite. I see. So it's for sale then? If you want it and have the money for it, it's yours. We've no need for it. Tell you what, since you're taking so much off our hands, I'll give you a discount on this lot. British Railways paid up front for these to be smashed up, so if anything, you're saving us the work. That is indeed very kind of you, sir. Shall we head to your office to conduct the paperwork then? As you wish. Right this way, sir. As the two men headed back towards the yard man's office, Mr. Stard suddenly stopped dead in his tracks. The foreman noticed and frowned. Uh -oh. Is something that Here is a little interesting thing. Back around there where Mr. Stard is, you can see a cathedral. It's the first time a cathedral's been seen in my show. Over there, if you look to the left of Mr. Stard, you'll see a new character to Rails Refuge. What's the matter, sir? This engine. I've never seen its design before. Do you know what it is? Ain't got a clue, mate. Only one way to find out. Oi, you there. Are you talking to me, funny boys? Glad to see I'm resting here. This gentleman asked a question. What design are you? I'm an ex-Caledonian Railway 498 class. And here's or right. crushes, as we're commonly referred to. We're built for docks on the hand. That'll do. Anyways, shall we- I wasn't done. If you ever do that again, I'll slap you that hard your eyes will be peeking out your asshole. Do I make myself clear? The foreman looked as if he was about to explode with anger, but Mr. Stard smirked. Oh, I like you. How would you like to come and work on my railway? I'd rather rot here for another 50 years. Excellent. How much for this one, then? Just take him before I cut him up myself. Oh, brilliant. I'll have my engine collect them in the wagons I'm buying, then. Now, come on, I'm sure you're a busy man. Let's get this paperwork sorted. And so, the two men continued towards the office, Mr. Stard feeling very happy with the assets he'd acquired today. <laughs> and back on the Revick and Chilton Hills.
Time to introduce everyone's favorite chaotic the next character. Day, Ramsey, Riley, and Darius were resting between jobs in the sheds of Redwick. As usual, the three friends were talking utter bollocks to each other, enjoying a slight cool autumn breeze. And then somehow we managed to leave the tanker filled with raw sewage on the main line. I tell you, the engine pulling the express that day was not happy. I can imagine the passengers and crews weren't either. Oh, tell me about it. Mr. Star's father had to pay for all the damages and the cleaner's bill. Fucking hell! What kind of engine would do something yes, so yes, rude yet absolutely hilarious? You're, You're looking, looking at, at him, him mate. mate. Yeah. What the fuck? I love did... Seb. Wait, Seb? Seb? Seb playing Seb, ironically, is just... Dear love of God fucking... Seb is a legend, and I absolutely adore and love every moment he spends behind a microphone for me. I'm so proud of him. I just love it. Sup, fuckers? I'm back. We're doomed. Sup, me old mate. Welcome back. Wait, what are you doing here? I thought you were with Axel and Levi over at Banbury. Well, I heard rumours that Mr. Star had brought some new land. Figured I'd come and fuck it up for him before he profits too much. Seb, I swear to all that's holy, if you so much as put a piece of Mr. Dexby's ballast out of line, I will personally cut you up inch by inch, leaving your boiler to last. Am I clear? Didn't ask, I still do it. Go fuck yourself. Right. Anyways, hello, engines. It has certainly been a while. Hello, sir. How was the trip up north? How are the local pubs up there, more like? Very funny, Riley. Believe it or not, I actually conducted real business up there for the Eastward Branch's different local businesses to see if any big corporations or towns would be interested in some of the things they have to offer. Turns see? out the only business people in really interested and are drinking up in, in Scotland. Scotland. Hence why I ended up in Glasgow. However, I knew I'd needed some rolling stock and someone to haul them. Hence why Seb is here. Whoa, 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 whoa. hold up. You bought Seb? Not yet. Are you out of your mind? Oh heavens no, you think I'm made of money? I'm simply leasing him from British Railways until I can gather the funds to buy locomotive built for freight to handle that job. Seeing as you are an express passenger locomotive, Seb. Though, in the future I may buy him. Depending on how helpful he is against British Railways. Ah, so you're in on them, are you, Seb? Welcome aboard. I'm Darius, by the way. I'm pretty new around here. The pleasure is all mine. Wait, so you actually told him I that? I love Seb. I'm Pardon sorry. Seb. I just Are you insane? Smile. I'm sitting here smiling. He is right literally now. the embodiment of insanity on rails. Oh, come on. I'm not that bad. Now, are those gas tankers and gunpowder vans still down at the estate? I hear King Richard's Express is coming by soon. Seb, we talked about this. No killing. Yet. Oh, wow. We are fucked. Okay, anyways. I should go see Mr. Hoff about taking charge again. Seb, head down to Eastwood Junction. I'm pretty sure they can find something for you to do. Right away, sir. And here comes the longest ever leaving shot. I should have just changed the angle. Rather than having Seb depart and derail right about there. And as for the rest of you, get your lazy asses back to work. We have a railway to run here, not a book club. We missed you too, sir. Later that day, Virgil had been brought down to Manitoba oh, by Mr. No. Stern to help with some uh... movements at the works while he had a chat with the workers. First of all, Darius is back in his black livery over there. Uh, because I'm a moron and didn't realize I made him green. Um, and also, you'll see... Virgil had been told to grab a few of the wagons Mr. Star Night Owl recently passing by. Because the Night Owl had just dropped at this point. Um, and this is also the point where I make the worst Good joke I've ever made. By the worst joke, I mean the most hilarious joke. So the workers could get started on them while the search for Clint's parts continued. He pulled into the yard, stopping just short of a long rake of wagons. Man, I love Virgil. I need to do more with him. This is the lot. Uh, 8701, I.K. Anthony, did not touch that thing. He wasn't even involved at this point. He was neutral. Um, 
meanwhile, Miss. Oh no. Uh, it, it's yeah. It's Jim, and he's currently hiding in the bat or in the. Shed. I'd best get something right away so the works can get. Wait, what's this? Virgil looked to the left of the wagons. Standing on the next line was the exact same van as the one that was at the front of the raid. He frowned and looked around, trying to figure out where it came from. What's this doing here, then? I thought Mrs. Oh, Todd yeah. said they'd all be in one here raid. Here it comes, boys. He then looked over to the roundhouse, where Clark was sitting yelling at the other engines for being lazy, even though he himself had bunked off work. Oh, so that's it's why I had to make my way down here. Super line, prick. Don't he sighed and began to shunt the wagons, hoping to be done quickly so he could get don't back think to his about branch it too much. line. Don't think about it too much. While Virgil had scuttled off to collect some of the wagons, Mr. Star had entered the works to check because up on Because I don't really progress. show Jim that much. He had been like informed by Mr. Hoff about the disappearance two. of the I don't parts think he, had he had ordered single line in season leaving two. him quite worried. He had hoped to have Clint ready I mean, for the grand reopening of the branch line, there are some characters seeing as he was one of the original time. engines that used to run it. He was having a chat with one of the workmen, trying to find a solution for the situation. So, he's still under them. I'm afraid so. Without his new parts, he could be in a lot of pain if he woke him up. Not very humane, if you ask me. No, definitely not. But are they sure they've searched all over the railway? No chance they missed anything? As far as I know, they've searched everywhere except for the main line. It makes no sense, though. How can a van just up and vanish like that? Through the night? Only thing I can think of is that it got stolen in the night. But that would require an engine to take it away. And I find that very unlikely. He sighed and scratched his chin, thinking deeply. You know, at this point it might as well be worth it to invest in machinery needed to make those parts ourselves. At that point we could just turn this maintenance shed into a proper works. And who's gonna pay for that? Certainly not British Railways, I imagine. I'd imagine the same, and I certainly don't have the funds to do so either. Not yet anyways. But hey, maybe dun, one day, dun, eh? Dun. Just then, Virgil came into the works with a short rake of some of the wagons Mrs. Starter told him to fetch. All the wagons were in need of a once-over, but Mr. Starter asked him to bring in the ones that needed the least amount of work on them so they could be out shopped as fast as possible. Here you go, sir. These should be the best of the lot. Brilliant. Thank you, Virgil. That will be all. Wait, Virgil? Yes, sir. Is something the matter? Where did you get the second standard van from? He stole it. I swear I only bought one of those. He stole it. Well, I don't know, sir. One was sat on its own next to this rake. I just figured it had been put there so it wouldn't block the points. Hang on a minute. No, it can't be. Can't be what? What's the matter? The workman said nothing, running to the office before coming up with some transport documentation, scanning through them before suddenly exclaiming loudly, Holy shit! This is the one! Right, stop being so damn cryptic and tell me what's up before I sack you and ensure you end up at the shelter. Speak Oops. now. S sir, this is this is the van. This is the one we've been looking for. Virgil, you're a lifesaver. You're joking. It, it couldn't be. They've searched that siding before and found nothing. How? Are you sure this is the one? Positive, sir. Let me go grab the keys for the lock. Fuck that, grab the bolt cutters. The two men scrambled to get the doors of the van open, finally breaking the lock clean off. They both peered inside and almost cheered in joy. Inside the van was Clint's parts. Finally, it looked as if progress on Clint would pick up again. The last survivor it, of the Abadir class would return to service after being asleep for way longer than intended. I can't believe it! Virgil! You're a legend for finding it! This is absolutely brilliant! I have to go tell the volunteers about it! But, sir, that wasn't the... But Mr. Starr didn't listen. He bolted into Virgil's cab, pushing his driver aside as he put him into reverse and opened his reg. No time to race, Virgil! Off we go! But, sir... <sighs> Okay, later then. Virgil moved up the line, but he wasn't smiling or as happy as Mr. Star was. What Mr. Star didn't know is that the van with the parts wasn't the one he'd found on his own. Dun, dun, dun. It was the one at the front of the rake of wagons. Dun, dun, the one dun. Mr. Star had bought. Dun, dun, dun. Cause who would have seen that coming, right? Virgil kept pondering on how this was possible, and Mr. Star relayed the news to the volunteers present, giving them a much-needed boost in morale. Virgil saw how happy they all got. He decided it would be best to keep it to himself, for now at least. 
didn't want to break their spirits, and besides, it could just be a massive coincidence. He simmered happily as Mr. Stark went to discuss the future plans for the final touches on the line, certain that the grand reopening was right around the corner. Ooh, that's loud. So then, were my sources correct? Yes, sir. Mrs. Sard has indeed bought the van we sent to the scrapyard. Seems those brainless gits lied when they said they'd scrap it first thing next day. Yes, that is quite disappointing. So, what do you do with the van? Is the situation under control? I am afraid not, sir. I was going to swap the van with another. However, that damn Virgil was sent to collect some of them for the works before I got a chance to. Including the two vans. I managed to hide myself in the sheds though. I don't think he saw me. Lucky bastard. I see. That is disappointing indeed. I, I'm sorry, sir. P please, forgive my failure. Well forgiven. This time. Luckily for you, I have a plan B. And what would that be? All in due time, my old friend. For now, I suggest that you get back to your estate before people stop missing you. No need to worry. Mrs. Starden is worthless engines and will not succeed in their endeavors. But Jim has never been a good guy. He has not won yet. As you say, sir. You know where to find me if you need me. I don't know, never asked them. And that is episode seven. Patience. It was a slower episode again, but I think 9 and 10 make up for what's coming. Though I will just say, episode 8 is probably my least favorite episode. Though it has one of the funniest moments, I think, to be fair. The guys and gals make one of the reasons, right? Which is true, which is a good thing. Teaching me how to do scenery, he did. He's still teaching me. Calder's work the theater because we love that thing. Uh, Ain't a stupid rescue, yeah. The worst episode I've ever made, I believe. Coming in clutch with his lines, yes, he did. This is Dexter for always watching. Bacon. The mention of my ex in the last episode. I know that's coming. Yep, it didn't age well. That's what happens when you put your uh, your relationships into products that will stand the test of time. Helvete, which means fuck in Norwegian. What's this one? And I'm still oh, yeah. walking past outside my house. Oh! Fucking cunt. Riley makes that noise with his mouth. That boy is skilled with his mouth. Hang on, that sounds wrong. Alright, and here comes my second most popular video on my channel. Is it still second most popular or has it been like surpassed again? Hang on. Um. Popular. No, it's it's third. Thank God, it's falling down. Good. Now here's the reason why Stupid Rescue gets so many views. Uh, it's close to Super Rescue, and because of that, people think Thomas the Tank Engine. They watch it for like thirty seconds and they click off. That counts as a view. Views shoot up. It's not that good of an episode, but it's got a lot of views, which annoys me. But it is what it is. Let's watch it. And there's Thor, Riley, and passing by on the side is... There's Hart, at least. 
The news of Clint's parts Maybe finding a way back Drex to the works had sparked a wave of joy amongst the engines and staff alike. No, it wouldn't. Every one of the engines working with Mr. Stard had worked around the clock, nobody ensuring them. the railway ran like Unless clockwork in preparation for the grand reopening. Even Buck had done his best to ensure that he stayed oh, on time and changed. on the rails with his freight runs. Much to the surprise of everyone, especially Mr. Stard. One evening, some of the engines had gathered at the sheds at Manifel. Mr. Stard had some information for them, and had called down Ramsey, Darius, and Seb to the sheds to give them a heads up on the info he had recently come across. Though he had been vague about exactly what when he had told them to meet him earlier that day. There was, however, a slight concern in the sheds. Whoops. Oh, come on, guys. Whoops, I know the plan, quickly. too. How long do you plan on lying to Mr. Stard about me being in on it? Hopefully as long as possible. I like being alive, thank you very much. Need I remind you that if it hadn't been for me, Mr. Johnson might have been put in charge now instead of Mr. Stard? What do you think this place would have looked like without my help? Wait, that was you? Well, me, Clark, and Riley. <laughs> what did you guys end up doing to him? Knocked him out, broke his legs, rolled him down an embankment, planted cocaine on him, and injected some into his bloodstream to get him done for drug abuse. You did what? Ah, I see. So pretty mild then. Yep. You two have issues. Suddenly, the engines heard a car approach. Oh, shit. Fuck, he's early. Buck! If you listen closely there, you'll hear Mr. Stard's tire screech, him hitting a guy, the guy being hurt and having his leg broken, Mr. Stard, without skipping a beat, jumping out of his car, pulling his strap out from under his pocket, and shooting the guy. Because he does not want to take accountability. And, Mr. St and people say Mr. Stard's a good guy. Hide! Buck panic and reversed backwards into the sheds. Not like that. Not like what? Oh, uh, nothing, sir. And here comes Riley with the fucking Among Us, because Riley's a meme. We were just talking about how to haul the mail train safely. Seb here said full speed always helps. Mr. Star looked up at Seb, squinting his eye slightly. Hey, a little extra speed never hurt anyone. Right. Well, anyways, I've come with some interesting news. Let me guess. You blew all your money on hookers and drugs. Firstly... Fuck you. No, thank you. Secondly, Ooh, Seb. No. The industrial estate has recently gotten a new business set up on their land, as they have found that moving their stock directly by rail is much more efficient than by road only to be loaded onto a train anyways. This is a rather large business, which will garner big revenue for the line if all goes off without a hitch. Though it won't be ready for a while yet. I've put in a request for Ramsey to take it, as you are very reliable and punctual. However, it seems they favor Gregory for this job, as they want to show what a British Railways built machine can do. If it comes to that, we will have to take action. Dun, dun, dun. But for now, our focus should be on the Eastwood branch. Indeed. How's that coming along? All work is done on the main stretch up to Spear. They are currently running test trains up and down the line to make sure that everything works as it should when we reopen. With any luck, the opening will be this Saturday. That's a little soon, isn't it? I don't think so. Five days should be more than enough to ensure that the line will be in tip-top shape. I'm sure of it. Indeed. Hopefully that will give us enough time to put Virgil back in the works for a good clean and a quick once-over. He has put his heart and soul into this line, and therefore I believe he deserves it. Indeed, he does. I have never seen a tank engine work so hard in my entire life. You must be very proud of him. I am indeed. I can't believe they almost threw such a hard worker away. I just couldn't let them go through with it. Well, I'm glad you saved him, sir. Dun dun dun! Buck suddenly moved Riley's into view, deck. making Mr. Star go pale as a ghost. Oh shit! Uh, uh oh, uh, Buck. Good, good evening. What are you um? <laughs> what are you doing here, sir? I know about the entire thing. I heard everything on the night when you saved Virgil, hid in the goods over there, and listened as my train was delayed. Buck, I swear to God, if you tell anyone, don't worry, sir. He won't. I can assure you. Same here, sir. He was the one who, um, neutralized Mr. Johnson. Without him, we'd be in deep shit. Buck, is that true? It is indeed. I'm on your side in this matter, I swear. If you hadn't spoken up to those dickheads for management, I probably would have done it, even if it meant I'd get the torch as well. He's my friend, after all. Mr. Stard blinked. I thought for a moment before smiling slightly. Well, in that case, welcome aboard, Buck. Never thought I'd say that. I guess I was wrong about you, after all. I should head back now and prepare for- Mr. Stard did not want 
Buck to know because Buck is chaotic and unpredictable. But sometimes chaotic and unpredictable is what you need to get to get shit done. For tomorrow. But you better not make me regret this. <laughs> no promises. And Ramsey? Yes, sir? Go behind my back again and I will convert you into a tank engine. Are we clear? <laughs> Crystal clear, sir. Mrs. R nodded and turned to leave, but stopped and turned to face Buck. By the way, Buck, what's up? Do I even want to know how you managed to get rid of Mr. Johnson? Or is it just better if I don't ask? The latter. Definitely the latter. I still think it was pretty mild. Yeah, about that. Fair point, not gonna ask. And so Mr. Star got back into his car and left for home, leaving Buck and Seb in a fit of laughter, worrying the two other engines. Be worried. Be upset. Be... scared. Some actual Riley music. The next few days... Oh, there he is! The man of the hour. Seb, you beautiful bastard. You do not realize how fucking fun it is to listen back to these episodes and just hear you have a go at it. It's so fun. I love this. Without a hitch. Virgil had been running test trains on the Eastwood branch for the past few days to ensure that everything was up to shape. Though there was the odd kink here and there. It is indeed. It was quickly sorted out by the volunteers and crews. And by Friday afternoon, everything was in order for the big day. That same day, Virgil backed into the works. Mr. Star had told him that he wanted to ensure he was in top working order before the big day, something he was very much looking forward to. Though he enjoyed the hard work, it had been a long time since he had gotten a proper long rest. He had just settled into this road when he heard the workman talking. Right, try forward again. Careful this time. Virgil looked to his left and nearly gasped in surprise. There, rolling slowly up beside him, was Clint. His new parts making him look as though he had just been built. Though he had yet to have his <laughs> chosen reaper. Go for it, Seb. Clint? You're awake? How was the sleep, old timer? Far too long and boring. Much rather be out here working again with you. How's the branch, by the way? I hear the line is opening again tomorrow. Yeah, huh? We've been working hard this past week to ensure that the line works as it should. And I have to say, I'm impressed with the volunteers. They have done wonders to the line. You're gonna love it tomorrow. Ah, I'm... Sorry, Virgil, but I won't be ready in time for the grand reopening, I'm afraid. Virgil's face fell. But why not? You seem in perfect working order to me. Surely it's just a livery left now? Virgil, you and me both know that it's not that simple. I'm an old engine, and I'm more prone to faults than you younger engines. Not to mention the risk of metal fatigue. They still have a bunch of tests they have to run on me before I'm ready to go. Yeah, I guess so. Don't worry, mate. I won't be long. Then we'll show them what us outcasts are really made of. You bet you're tender we will. Okay, Virgil. We're ready to get going. Go ahead, mate. I'll see you on the flip side, Clint. Of course. Sleep tight. Virgil did just that as the men started looking all over for any signs of wear and damage. However, not all the workers were there to repair that day. Dun dun dun. So, as you can see... British Railways have saboteurs at every Virgil nook evoked and the next morning, corner, all steamed everywhere. up and ready. He, they, they are trying to fuck with Mr. Star because they don't want him to feeling go ahead new and, and refreshed. Even before they found out, he looked Mr. around and saw Clint to sleep in the back of the works again. Though he was repainted into his new livery, it seemed he was still not ready for the big day. Though he was aware of this outcome, he still let out a sad sigh as he moved forward to head up to the branch. I love this song from Marley. On his way, I call it he was Dum taking with him Dum some Dum of the Dum wagons the workmen had finished restoring to allow for new ones to also, go for repair. Virgil speed. All seemed to be going well as he pulled up the countryside, enjoying the warm morning sun reflecting against his tanks as he moved towards Colford Tunnel. When he emerged, however, he found himself having to work harder than usual as to not lose speed on the incline. Though this huh. hill was the steepest on the line, he was only hauling a few wagons Damn, and a brake van. That's, that's, Nothing that's he hadn't tough done before. Me, but Pulling into the yard of the junction, he alerted his crew about his concerns. However, they found nothing wrong. 
and they came to the conclusion that he just needed a good run-in. Some hours the later, train. the time for his first train came. The platform was lined full of people that Seb had just dropped off. They were from also all over up, the line and beyond, job, local folk and private investors alike. Virgil looked at all the people that had come to see him in action and what they had accomplished on the line. To say that he was nervous was an understatement. As he was getting prepared for his run, he found himself approached by Mr. Stark. He had a wide grin on his face. Good morning, Virgil. So, are you ready for the big day? Not in the slightest. How about you, sir? Absolutely bricking it. There are a lot of investors on this train, and we need to ensure it runs perfectly. I know I can trust you with this. You've worked wonders on the line over the past few months, and I couldn't be more proud of you. Virgil beamed, feeling confident in himself for the first time today. That's I won't fun. let you down, sir. That's a good engine. Now, Let's I'll be joining uh, the investors in the rear coach. Let's just good get luck, one Virgil. thing clear here. Thank you, sir. Virgil is not to blame for what happens, but it's still funny as fuck. Mr. Stard soon entered his seat and waited in anticipation also, for Mr. the Dexter journey to begin. And 15 minutes later, the guard blew his whistle and waved his flag. With a long, cheerful blast of his whistle, Virgil felt his brakes release as he gently pulled forward. He was almost at the edge of the platform when he suddenly felt his brakes slip back on. His driver tried to open them again, but had no Jordan. Soon, Virgil found himself at a complete standstill trying to set off again, but to no avail. Mr. Stard soon came running up to the front of the train, looking very flustered. What happened? Why have we stopped? We don't know, sir. Maybe someone pulled an emergency cord? Mr. Stard shook his head. No, I just checked that. No one touched anything. Virgil, are you okay? No, I, I don't know what's happening. I'm trying to release the pressure, but nothing works. Oh, oh this, this, this... Uh. So Anthony didn't all take care that I kept in, because I just find it funny. No, oh, I, I don't know what's happening. I'm trying to release the pressure, but nothing works. Oh, sugar. What is it? It's, it's, it's so different from my usual swearing that he just throws in a, oh, sugar, instead. I, I like it. It's, uh, it's, it's a way to differentiate it and change things up. This is why Anthony's a good voice actor as well. And then, of course, me doing my, uh, my Joachim Broden impression from Sabaton. <laughs> Did you find the boat? I don't know what's happening. I'm trying to release the pressure, but nothing works. Oh, sugar. What is it? Did you find the vault? Did you no, find the vault? but I have a suspicion I know Watch what Bismarck. it is. You'll know it. Virgil then suddenly realized what he was on about and groaned. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I'm not sure I follow. What's going on? His vac pump has failed. He can't release the pressure. The only way we could get him moving is either by running without the vac, which would make the ride a hell, or if we try to repair it. And to be honest, I have no idea how long that could take. Six days. Mr. Stark could hear the that passengers six confused days. murmuring from the coaches and gulped. Not See really what awful. repairs you can do, and make it fast. The driver nodded and sprung into action. He immediately went to the vac pump, and sure enough, it wasn't working. He looked at all over I don't to know see where if he could locate the, the fault. on a steam locomotive, I just guessed. Can't lie. But it wasn't getting any quick results. Meanwhile, Mr. Stark had gone into every compartment and explained the situation assuring the passengers that the crew of the engine was hard at work to mend the fault, and that they would be underway shortly. However, those hopes were quickly dashed when he returned to the driver. Well, how's it looking? Sorry, sir. It's Fubar. Not good. Is there anything we can do? The only thing I can do is bypass the pump to allow the brakes to come off, but that would mean we'd be running on hand brakes only. God fucking damn it! This is not the time for this! Can't we- Hang on. Who's that? I've heard that whistle before, is that? Soon enough, he got his answer, for rolling up alongside him was Clint. His brand new paintwork gleamed oh, in the, the sun looks over him. So good in that livery. He looked at Virgil with a look About of concern to make me on his act face. Up. Jeez. Virgil? Why are you still here? Is something the Virgil's driver cut him off. No time to oh, explain. Siren Head. Clint, Hello. you be the brakes. Yeah, S Siren Head's just vibing in the background there. Fucking didn't I I completely forgot he was there. Fun fact, I tried to delete him. He keeps reappearing. Uh, Siren Head is just constantly there. He's he's now part of the lore. He he's integrated into RTR lore. We'll do the rest. Get up front. Double time. Clint gave it a determined look. Right away, sir. Clint quickly got into piloting position and released the brakes. The um, bypass and Siren Head cannon. Good one. That was a, that was a fucking funny one. Um. 
Fun thing about this shot, I say Clint goes into piloting position. On the Great Western Railway, the piloting engine is the one attached to the coach, not the one at the front. I did not know this until Andy pointed it out to me, and I reckoned it later. Well, I fixed it later when, for example, Seven King Richard are on the flyer. Well, you know. Virgil's brakes working flawlessly. With cheers and applause from the coaches, the two set off up the line, this time without issue. Clint was amazed at every point of the run. Yeah, the line uh, hasn't looked exist this beautiful anymore. since it was first built. That still exists, but it's changed. Him and Virgil talked loudly about memories. This of exists line. definitely. But some of the passengers of listening intently. Oh wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Forgot about this. Him and Virgil talked loudly about memories of the line. You see there, there's Mr. Dexby, who's just chilling. There's Peanut, who is within uh, uh, vibe check distance. So. If I were Mr. Dexby, I'd be shitting myself right now. Because uh, if that reaches that, it's game over. With some of the passengers listening intently to their stories. It doesn't feel like three hours, does it? No. It was an uneventful run up to speed. And the duo pulled triumphantly into the station with thunderous applause from crews, volunteers, passengers, and investors alike. They all crowded the two engines, praising them for their hard work, and Mr. Stard for having such dedicated staff and engines. Soon, it came time for the return journey down to the junction. With Clint taking it alone, Sir Virgil could have his back pumps replaced in the sheds. Ah, oh, no. Clint does not often take passenger trains, but goddamn it doesn't suit him. Also, this shed, I'm sorry, this, you know, let's get properly down here. I love the design of this shed. It's got a high road and a low road. If you don't, a high door and a low door. If you can't tell what I mean, look at the shed doors. So, it's low enough to fit a tank engine on one side, and high enough to fit a tanger engine on the other side. Clint will not fit in where Virgil is, Virgil will doubly fit where Clint is, but that's a waste of space. And this will play in later. Later that night, the two engines were finally reunited in the sheds. Virgil had been repaired a few hours before, and was now finally all fired up again, ready for the next day of work. The two settled down and began talking away about the day's events. I thought you said you weren't going to make it in time. What changed? The lads of the works felt sorry for me for missing out on the big day. So they stayed through the night to try and get me ready on time. And though it wasn't exactly in time for the original departure time, I dare say I got there just in time now. You can say that again, mate. If it hadn't been for you, I don't know what I'd done. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Clint. You really saved our asses. Good evening, sir. Also, the amount it's of times I said time in that sentence pisses me off to this day. It's all good. Virgil yeah, would have done the same for me, said. I'm sure. Besides, we're in this together. Too true, old friend. I'm glad to hear it. I just came by to deliver the good news. Oh? And what will that be? After seeing Clint's superb rescue, and noting your willpower not to give in, they all unanimously decided that they would keep investing in us. In fact, they've even increased the amount they're willing to give us. That's amazing, sir. I guess some good came out of my failure after all, then. It would seem so. Just... Try not to make a habit of it, okay? He winked at Virgil, who laughed back. <laughs> I'll try not to, sir. I'm glad to hear it. Now I shall leave you two to get some rest. You have both earned it. Besides, work starts for real tomorrow, so no slacking off. Good night, you two. Yeah, I know, night, I, know I know what you mean. Night, sir. And here comes another shot of Jim and the elusive BR. How? I did everything in my power to ensure that this would go right. How could it have made things worse? I guess it was just bad luck, sir. You know, it happens. Silence. I don't need your pity. It, it really does time. have. But mark has evolved. my words when I say this is not over. So, what do we do now? Patience. There is that new contract at your estate. 
I will ensure Gregory gets that job, no matter what. That should prove that things done to our standard are done right. Mark my word, Stard. This means war. Woo! Oh my god, so many people. So, we have two episodes left. Which means I'll be going for four and a half hours, probably, by the time this is over. With an entire railway, yeah? Oh, thanking Riley once again. We're in episode eight, and I'm still thanking Riley. This is after shooting the guy in the scene with Buck hiding. Yeah, it's not wrong. Being an amazing, being amazing, yeah, yeah. And he's pretty amazing. Again, thanking for the cathedral. Anthony doesn't even depict these things. The Death Star plans for not being in the main computer. That's a Star Wars reference in the hand. Thanks for those watching. Yes, you do. Because me for being me. Thank you, me. James, you keep getting the short end of the stick, my friend. Oh, yeah. That happened. Stabs on for being awesome. Far from shore of the Pacific Love me some Midway. Seb and Anthony did actually speak naval warfare. What's this one then? Chomish, choke my fucking balls. Thanks, Riley. One morning in the late autumn of 1952, Ramsey had been called to the carriage siding yeah, at Redwick by Mr. Stard for a private chat. He arrived a few minutes early, only to find Mr. Stard already there, finishing a dispute with one of the workers there. Look, the Grampians have worked fine since we got them and they will continue to do so for many more years. We don't need these fancy new Mark I th they keep going on about. Now if you'll excuse me. He walked over to where Ramsey had pulled up. Looking over his shoulder to ensure that ironic that he ends up getting Mark One coaches. Also, I have a thing for blood and guts. No one was within don't, earshot don't, don't before me. turning to Ramsey again. Good morning, Ramsey. How are you today? Seb, we're on the same. I'm wavelength. fine, thank you, fuck? sir. Everything okay here? Oh, that. Don't worry. It's just a workman trying to get the Grampians retired again. All this talk of these fancy new Mark Ones is driving me mad. I tell you. Oh no, not the Grampians again. The passengers love those. But I'm guessing you didn't take me out of traffic just a bitch about the coaching issues. No, of course not. I have some more intel on that new freight contract at the industrial estate. And I'm afraid it's not all good. Oh, let me guess. It's a limited contract, isn't it? Oh, on the contrary. The contract actually includes having three loaded trains a day taken from the estate to different locations. One service goes to Hinksy, and the other to Acton Yard, where they will be divided and take it on to wherever they need to go in the country. Thank this is Andy exactly what we need with the freight traffic go. slowing down. Well, that's excellent news. Unfortunately, that's as far as the good news go. For us, anyways. What do you mean? The board have come to the conclusion that this is exactly what's needed for an excellent PR stunt to show off their new locomotives. They're planning on advertising this freight operation as the first exclusively hauled BR standard train. The first of many to come, I imagine. Hang on, that doesn't make any sense. There is no way in hell Gregory can make those journeys back and forth three times a day, let alone being in two places at once. And he's the only standard we have on the line. Unless... Wait. wait don't, don't tell, tell me. me. Yes. Mr. Stard nodded, telling with you. a grim look taking over his face. I voiced these exact concerns at the meeting earlier, and unfortunately I didn't get much in the form of a reply. Just a simple, we've got it covered. Though, I'm pretty sure I heard the words roster change as I was leaving the meeting. 
So you can't let that happen. I'm not planning on it, but I don't know what to do here. I'm pretty hard pressed with everything on my plate at the moment. This is the last thing I need. I simply don't have the time to sit down and work out a plan. So I'm leaving this one to you and the rest of the guys. Wait, to us? It is. I've told a few of the others to meet you at Colford later to come up with a plan. You have three days to work something out before the first train leaves. Good luck. Hey, wait, I have more questions. Bye. Motherfucker. Oh, that gets me. That evening, Ramsey, Darius and Riley had gathered at Colford as per the instructions of Mr. Stard. The news of British Railway's plans That's for Hardwick. the new contract had... That's Hardwick, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I missed it. Come on. That evening, Ramsey, Darius and Riley had gathered at Colford as per the instructions of Mr. Ah! It's there. It's at Hardwick. It's at Hardwick. It's Hardwick Grange. It's it's a Grange. It's Buck's brother. Mr. Stard. The news of British Railway's plans for the new contract had been met with angry murmurs and many swears. And after Ramsey was done explaining, Riley broke the silence. So that's it then. We're just fucked. No, Riley, we're not. We've just got to find a way to change the mind of the contractors on this whole BR standards only thing. We've got to prove us non-standard designs can do the job just as well as they can. Exactly. But how will we do that? If we're not even allowed to haul the train... Oh, yes, them, yes, we'll yes, never yes. We'll be able to show scene. it off. Indeed. Just then, the familiar black shape of Buck's tender reversed into the shed. This is funny. Much to the surprise of the other engines. Sorry I'm late, guys. I got caught up with something. What did I miss? What the hell are you doing here? Didn't you have a local goods to take tonight? Oh, that? Don't worry. I have it covered. Somebody fucking help me! That scene... is gold, and I don't care what anyone in this world says about this scene in particular. It is gold, it's funny, it will never not be funny. It's fucking hilarious. Oh, that? Don't worry. I have it covered. Right. Anyways, do you even know what's up? Sure do. I read the script. The what? So, the penny pinches are being difficult again, are they? I know just the thing. If it involves drugs or assault again, you can forget it. Oh, but come on! Those are my favorite! It's not the problems with the human, Buck. It's trying to show that we can outclass the newer designs, specifically Gregory. So, are we talking like angle grinder to coupling rods kind of sabotage or jam brakes kind of sabotage? No, that's way too far. You're not bringing harm to him. Wait, that's it! What is it, Ramsey? If we can get an extra wagon on that train to have the brakes jammed on and have someone weaken the coupling, we can make it look like he's not careful enough with his train. That way, when the coupling breaks, no one will be harmed and we'll make it look like he's too inexperienced to handle their trains. That could actually work, you know. But there is a slight problem. And what would that be? Jim. Oh shit, you're right. What about him? No one fucks with his estate. He knows everything that goes on in there at all times and if anything disrupts his work, there is sure to be hell to pay. I know how. I've already worked out how to get around it with a minimal chance of getting caught. However, we <laughs> minimal need more chance gets oh, caught. really? Do tell. Okay, so. First of all, we'll need a van of some sort. Preferably one from okay. the People said this sequence is confusing. What's happening is Buck's, Buck is voiceovering what the plan is, and what you're seeing is the plan in action. Like any spy movie ever. Work so it's less likely to be noticed. This should do the trick. Next, we need to make someone leave their wagons on the viaduct to cause some issues for Jim. Mainly to get him to fuck off for a bit. I can handle this as I'm pretty sure I'll run into the next train to the estate on the way up. Hey Russell, Jim wanted me to let you know that he'll be doing some movements in the estate and for you to leave your wagons at the viaduct. Again? Well, fine by me. <laughs> Funny thing here. I accidentally put Jim's number on Russell. So all of a sudden, Russell had a brass dome, and I was like, hang on, that's not right. Wait, 74, I thought it was a... No, yeah, 74, I thought it was a 42. And then it clicked. Saves me having to interact with the cunt. After that, Riley should be on time with his run to the estate. You'll have to inform him of the train sitting on the viaduct without raising suspicion. And how do I do that? 
Eh, you'll figure something out. Hey Jim, I think there's been some miscommunication. Russell has left his train on the viaduct. Had to reverse and wrong road in. Again? Ugh. I barely get a rest as it is, and now I get even less thanks to this railway's incompetence! Aw, oh, Jim is so angry. Once Jim is fucked off, you and your assistant will have to split the wagons in deciding to put a van in the middle. He'll split it and you put the van in place before going to get your next train. Who will help me? Don't worry, I have that covered. There is no way in hell I'll help you with that! Too risky! If you help, I won't tell anyone, especially Mr. Stard, about your stash of dirty magazines, including the one of his daughter. When and where? Next, you need to wait for Jim to hold the shit. train up. As soon as he passes you, you have to move quickly. Clark first, and then you, so that your train blocks the view of him. If all goes to plan, you should be able to get out of Dodge with a minimal suspicion. That's such a good plan, to be honest. That's quite the impressive plan. How long have you had that one in your head? I literally just made it up. Ha! You literally had 30 seconds to think about it. Hey, my mind works fast when need be. Now get yourself some rest. You're gonna need it for tomorrow, but you need to get that van before you can rest, Riley. It's quite essential. You head out first, and then I have to go up to Redwick. My brother's up to today, and I can't wait to see him. Yeah, Aww. no worries, I'll handle it. I was gonna stay the night at Manifel anyways. I heard rumours about a poker night going on there, and I'm not missing out on that. Night, guys. Ooh, poker night. What are they gonna trade? Life? I bet Riley lost. Smile. Uh, okay. Couldn't they just sabotage one of the brakes on the actual van? Or on the actual train? <sighs> How do we say this in the easiest way possible? It would get noticed, because there's a bunch of people, including reporters there, and the only time to sabotage, sabotage it would be in broad daylight in front of those people, which would be so fucking hard to get away with. The engine scheme had indeed gone off without a hitch. And soon, the big day had arrived with Lavinery Industries' first train to be hauled out. Many distinguished gentlemen. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. With Lavinery Industries' scheme. There it is. Had I want you guys to notice something here, okay? Not many people picked this up. Well, a lot of people picked this up, but it's funny still. So. If you look over here, there's Mr. Dexby. And there's Mr. Dexby. <laughs> When they say Mr. Dexby's always watching, they mean always watching. Indeed gone off without a hitch. And soon, the big day had arrived with Lavinery Industries' first train to be hauled out. Many distinguished gentlemen who had invested in the industry had also shown up with a handful of reporters to commemorate the event of the line's first BR standard only hauled train. However, along with these men, there was an odd one out. Why is there a cow there? A Funny. man with ties with the railway, known as... Well, if it isn't Lord, Lord Henry, Henry Dexby. Dexby. And if it isn't B.A. Stard. I wasn't expecting to see you here today. What brings you all the way from Kent? Well, I am always watching, and when I learned there was a new company being set up near my business, I had to ensure they weren't here to cause any unfortunate issues. Well... Let's just not try to cause any issues like what happened the last time you were here. Look, Dexby, just because you're the closest ballast provider, it won't automatically make you the only one I'll use from now on. You dare defy Lord Dexby's word? My word is final. Now scoot over, old man. Whoops. You're talking mad shit for someone within tanking distance. Ah. Tanking distance. Uh, this is the first time I've heard Dexby speak, yeah. Right, I'm replying to a text. There we go. Yes, that. 
It's funny you honestly believe that was the last time I was here. Wait, what? Who oh, would you look at that? The speech is over. I now declare this first of many trains all by this BR standard and there's ready Anthony. for departure. The man blew a whistle and waved the green flag as also, Gregory making happily Gregory whistled slip back is so and opened fun. the cylinder cogs. There was a round of applause as Gregory's wheel started to move. Also, do you guys notice the van that's like out of place from here? Cause I sure do. It's uh, it's, it's easy to spot when you look at it. However, the applause quickly turned into murmurs of confusion as the bystanders noticed how much Gregory was struggling to get the train moving. His driver yelled up to him. Come on, boy! Are you even trying? Oh, of course I am! It's not moving! Go on then, give it some welly, lad. You want some power, dear? I'll give you what you want. At that moment, Gregory made his mistake. As he gave it all he had, the coupling on the sabotage van snapped, sending Gregory surging forward. The young engine panicked and slammed his brakes on hard, skidding to a halt. Oh, well, what just happened? Now nah, you've gone and fucking done it. You've torn a coupling. We're going to have to ditch the van you broke. I know I told you to give us some more power, but this won't look well for the company or British Railways. His driver was right. He could already hear the angry murmurs of the gentlemen watching, as well as the flashes of the cameras as the reporters took as many pictures as they could of his mishap. His driver was about to move him when a loud screeching sound was heard from Gregory's wheels. Ow. Ow, what the hell was that? Oh god, please don't tell me. Wait, what happened? His driver climbed down from the cab and began to inspect his wheels. And by the time he had finished his inspection, the foreman, a British Railways representative and Mr. Stark had made their way up to him and immediately began their questioning. It's not good, sirs. It looks like he managed to jam his brakes when he did his little panic stop. So, I don't know if this is very realistic, but imagine slamming your brakes on so hard that they stop fucking working. That's what Gregory did. He panicked. We can probably force them open again with the sledge, but moving him is out of the question for now, unless you want more damage to his wheels. How could this have happened? He's a top-of-the-line standard design. This shouldn't be possible. Oh, I should so probably say, um... Uh, as well. Did you guys notice how Gregory went forwards on the points? Like, straight forward on the points instead of turning as he was supposed to? I believe. With all due respect, sir, he's a machine. It could have happened to any engine on the line, new or old. I believe you He see spoke that with here. a slight tone of sympathy for the young engine, making Gregory feel a little more at ease. That doesn't help the fact that my first shipment is now going to be light. Sourcing out a replacement would take ages. Not necessarily, sir. With all due respect, I know the whole image of the service was to show off your brilliant standard designs. However, I know my county class, Ramsey, is currently sat at Endon Station as he's not on the roster today. We could probably get him up here in 15 minutes tops. Th th that won't be necessary. We'll have a new standard up here as fast as we can. I'm sure there's one in the area that can... But the foreman spoke up. Yeah, Thank you for the officer, no, but I'm going that. to have to sort with Mr. Stard here. I'll gladly have him take over the train. His experience with freight workings might go on a better results than a brand new, Good, inexperienced no, engine. Good. Gregory winced slightly as he heard the foreman... No, no, look, look at that. Point two and forwards. Alright, bullshit excuse time. Stard didn't know about the sabotage attempt from, like, Ramsey, Buck, and the, the rest of the lot. So he fixed the points that Gregory would go the wrong way. Yeah, that's it. Fuck. Ashamed of his failure. Mr. Stard nodded at the foreman and started walking towards totally the office to call down to Endon to get Ramsey on the move. But as he got further down the train, he finally got a good look at the van that had its coupling snapped, and his face almost drained of all color. There was no mistaking it. The van he was looking at was one of the ones that he had bought from the scrapyard he had visited a few months ago. But how had it gotten here? Then it hit him. Ramsey and the others. They must have used to sabotage the train. But this had now shown itself to be a double-edged sword. He knew there would be questions about how it had ended up there. He could already feel his panic setting in as he rushed to the office to make his call. Oh dear, oh dear. That's quite the predicament you're in, Mr. Stard. Soon enough, Gregory had been painstakingly moved out of the way, along with the broken van, as Ramsey reversed onto the delayed train. 
He gave Gregory a sympathetic look as he pulled out of the yard, pouring more salt in his wound and pride. More Riley music. After a while, a few workmen arrived at the yard to take a look at his brakes. And luckily for Gregory, it only took a few hard hits with his sludge to get the brakes off again. I'm so allowing glad for the crestfallen engine to slunk away from the estate in shame. Bye bye, Gregory. You fucked up, even though it wasn't your fault. A while after Gregory had left, the foreman, the British Railway's representative, and a few workers came to look over the van that had caused the issues. Mr. Start had left soon after Ramsey in a bit of a hurry, claiming he was running late for a meeting and dashing off before he could be questioned any further. It soon became apparent that this wagon was very out of place. The first clue was the livery, Great Western. It hadn't been used for years. The second clue to this was the claim of the foreman that he had never seen the van before today. And after I checking the shipment manifest, fucking, um... it was found that the wagon was never intended for a train. Jim, In fact, I love that it hadn't hunter. even replaced any of the already assigned wagons. Just added one more to the 36 already existing wagons. While the wagon number was one through a few lists, the men questioned Jim on why he had put the wagon in the train. But he was as confused as the men questioning him, stating that he had taken the wagons that were already prepared in the sidings as instructed and brought them to the platform. It was only then that the workers had a breakthrough on the ownership of the van, finding it to be recently purchased privately by Mr. Stard not too long ago, causing even further confusion as for how it had ended up in the estate. It was put there. I saw the mystery. And here comes the turning point. After the incident, Gregory was sat in the sheds of Colford feeling dreadful. He felt like he had let everyone down with his recent failures. First there was the incident with the mail train, and now he had embarrassed not only himself, but British Railways and Mr. Stard in one fell swoop. Though the derailment and subsequent delay of the mail train hadn't been his fault, he still felt responsible for the accident, and these feelings had only been made stronger after today's failure at the industrial estate. He couldn't help but dwell deeply on the matter, so deep in fact that he didn't see King Richard backing into the sheds before he had almost come to a stop. Hello Gregory old chap, how are you holding up? Not well, I'm an absolute failure. I've let both British Railways and Mr. Star down. Guess you've come to gloat about how something like this has never happened to you then. Come on then, get it over with. Oof. Actually, I came here with no such thing in mind. I came here to help you work out what happened. Work out what happened? I already know what happened. I'm a complete failure and I caused an accident. What is there to solve? Well, I do have some information that may suggest otherwise. Tell me, Gregory, do you know how many wagons were supposed to be in your train today? Here's my question. How does Richard know this? Did he personally go up there to ask questions and figure out how many wagons were supposed to be on a good strain when he hauls, you know, passenger trains? Well, I, there was a total of 36 wagons on the brake van, but I don't see what that has to do with this. Gregory looked puzzled as he thought for a moment. Ah, well, you see, that's what I heard as well. However, there were 36 wagons on your train. There were 37. So, probably just a last minute addition. I still don't see the issue here. Ah, you see, that's what everyone else thought as well. But no one ordered an extra van to be placed mm, on your train. That makes sense. Well, at least no one in charge of the rostering. And it just so happens that the van that caused the incident was the one wagging out of place. Strange coincidence, no? Look, Richard, if you know Summit, then spit it out. I don't have the patience for your damn guessing games. At this point, an angry frown had formed on Gregory's smoke box. Oh, come on, Gregory. Can't you think for yourself? The van was placed there on purpose. And not only that, but it's not even a van owned by any company in the industrial estate. It's a van that St. Sebastian brought with him the other month when he returned with Mr. Stard. The wagon in particular was supposed to be getting repaired at the works, 
yet somehow it ended up on your train, the demonstration train showing the versatility of you BR build engines. You don't see something awfully wrong here. Gregory's mind drew a blank. He felt as if an entire rake of coal hoppers had just hit him in the smoke box. However, he then realized something. Mr. Stard had made the last minute change that night on the mail run and given no explanation for it whatsoever. He knew the accident was going to happen. He had made it happen to him. Bum, bum, but why? Bum. His confusion faded. It was quickly replaced and it was by this anger. Moment, Mr. Realization Stard dawned upon him. Created well, that means Mr. Stard did this. I bet you he was the one who caused me to derail with the mail train as well. But why? Why has he singled me out? What did I ever do to him? People could have been hurt. My crew. The people watching today. The men from British Railways. I don't get it. It makes no sense. Perhaps it's not so much you he has an issue with. I believe he's trying to tarnish the reputation of British Railways. And because you are the only locomotive of their design on this line, it would only make sense that he would use you as a way to get at them, trying to make them look bad through you, so to speak. We have been speculating this for a while now, Especially after all he's done with that pannier tank and the useless branch line of his, he holds so dear. So far it's all been speculation and theories. But now, we have some form of proof. The railway investigators are currently looking into his recent yeah, actions true. to determine a course of action. So all we can do now is wait. But to risk harming innocent people and engines, that's... that's inexcusable. How could he be so reckless and carefree? It makes me sick to the tubes. I don't know, old chap. All I know is we can't allow this to go on. We have our suspicions about who is helping him in his mad crusade against British Railways. Unfortunately, we don't have any proof of that part of his plan. Yet. Anywho, I have to get to Redwick. The express won't pull itself now, will it? Well, it might. I bid you farewell, Gregory. Event. I hope I can count on you in the future. With that, King Richard set off up the line, leaving Gregory to boil in anger now a wiser and more determined engine than ever before. So again, this is one of the closest things we get to um sort of sabotage the episode. I like it. It's a it's a it was a fun thing to make. It was a very fun thing to make. It didn't translate too well on screen, but I don't really care about that. I, I had fun doing it. I like how we see Gregory's downfall, how he's just technically an innocent bystander until you know Mr. Stard forces his hand. It's it's it shows that not everyone is, you know not everyone is really built to be evil. They just get pushed into it. Even though Gregory wasn't really evil, he was just on the wrong side. Again, thanking Riley for the thing. Snow in Norway, who would have fucking thought? Oh, another one of Andy being amazing. Yes, I'm still simping. Yes, Keller Norwester Cathedral. What else we got? Yeah, Andy did pick this one along with Anthony. That's, that's fair, that's fair. Can live with that. The Mustafa system. If you couldn't tell, I'm a Star Wars nerd. Thanks for always watching. And me for being me. Okay, well, I'm so fucking original. Oh god, I'm so glad I changed that up in the next season. Oh yeah, I at least did make me addicted to Genshin Impact. At least it's my sister. Well, be for being awesome. Yep. Yep, it's time, ladies and gentlemen, for Discovery. Season 10. Season 10. Season 1, episode 10. After this short and card scene. Oh, yeah, this one. Swiggity swooty, I'm coming for that booty. <laughs> Damn it, Ramsey. No go. Oh, whoops. And you know. We are too far in, ladies and gentlemen. I hate it when YouTube does that. Here comes the season finale and the last episode we're watching today, which closes the stream up pretty close to five hours. It has been a difficult few days for Mr. Stard after the incident at the industrial estate. 
The same day, he had been intercepted and interrogated by the railway board on what his property oh, was set, doing at the train. estate, accusing thought? him of corporate espionage and sabotage. While he was able to deny and disprove all allegations against him, he was left with a warning and a damaged reputation as news spread fast across the line. Soon after, he got a hold of the engines involved and scolded them on the matter, pulling no punches. You fucking idiots! What on earth were you thinking? Using one of my vans in a sabotage attempt? Are you fucking insane? I now have investigators combing through everything I own, including the Eastwood branch, to find something that links me to this. Sir, with all due respect, I didn't- But Mr. Stard held up his hand. I am not in the mood for excuses, Riley. You guys put this entire plan at risk. What were you thinking? Look, sir, I'm sorry it backfired, but you told us we had to come up with something and fast. Oops. So we did. Nice one. Mr. Stard eased off a little, but he was still visibly angry. <sighs> Look, this whole thing could have been avoided if you just wrote me in. I honestly had no idea what was going on before I saw the van up close. And by then, it was too late. I guess that makes sense. We should have reached out to you about it to make sure you're okay with our plan. Yeah, I'm sorry, sir. Just don't ever do anything like this again in the future. We have to lay low for a while now. No funny business until this all blows over, okay? <laughs> the last thing yeah. I need is another reason for the higher-ups to get on my back. For now, just work as per normal, and let the others know that nothing is to be done on the plan till I give the word. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. I want no more surprises on my railway. Now, if you'll excuse me, I oh, have to catch yeah, the next train goes. down to Manifel, so I'm not late for my next interview. Ah, <sighs> this is gonna be a long day. Mr. Starr then walked off towards the station to catch his train, and as soon as he was gone, Riley Short Ramsey, a worried look. Say, Ramsey, uh, I've got a question for you. Sure, what's up? Let's say that, hypothetically, hypothetically, me and Clark went up the abandoned branch and found an Avan full of tools uh, that are brand new uh, on a set of points that look newly built and that we hypothetically, hypothetically heard a voice up there telling us to get out. Would it be a good idea to tell Mr. Stard? Well, I'd say that hypothetically, if you don't tell him and he finds out anyways, he'll hypothetically rip your hypothetical wheels off and turn you into a hypothetical oversized kettle. So... I should tell him then? Yes, you moron! Why did you even go up there? And why haven't the rest of us heard about this sooner? Hey, it was Clark's idea. Besides, we thought you guys would mock us like you did Pat, so we just kept it quiet. Damn straight we would have, but still, you found a work site on an abandoned branch line and you thought it was smart to keep silent about it. God, you really are something else. Look, we didn't think much of it at the time, but when Mr. Stard said he didn't want any more surprises, it just came back to me. He didn't want any surprises. You should tell him as soon as possible, because if he finds out before you tell him, you're, you're fucked. fucked. Noted. The rest of Mr. Starr's morning went by slowly. He had gone through all his paperwork on his purchase of the hey, wagons involved in the hang incident. On, hang on, hang on. Though he was nervous, oh, whoa, 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 he kept whoa. up a calm demeanor. Can't just skip over this now, can we? Holy shit. His... Look at that. It's, it's fucking Alfreston, boys. It's fucking Alfreston Cathedral. I had to refilm this shot five times to make sure the library was correct. Five times. I blame Andy. Andy, if you're watching this. Well, actually. I'm just gonna video snap him. Just telling the guys about the time I had to uh, refilm this shot about five times because I kept fucking up the livery because you never told me straight. Thanks, Andy. Sending that to him. You see, we have fun on Epic Bonaster, we do stupid shit. The rest of Mr. Sard's morning went by slowly. He had gone through all his paperwork on his purchase of the wagons involved in the incident. Though he was nervous, he kept up a calm demeanor while the men continued to pepper him with questions after question. They had even paid Gregory a visit at the works to take his account on the situation. Though he said he was as clueless as the rest of them, Mr. Stard could have sworn oh, Gregory there goes was Trimbush. acting more cold than usual. Even catching a few I'm dirty sure looks from Mr. Stard could have his account on the situation. Though he said 
Uh, we can't see the name. Pretty sure that's sixty-five three six. Clueless yeah, that's the rest strange. of them. Mrs. Stark could have sworn Gregory was acting more cold than usual, even catching a few dirty looks from him during the conversation. Soon enough, the talk ended as the men said their goodbyes to Mr. Stard as he boarded Thor's stopping passenger train to Redwick. He leaned back and breathed a sigh of relief as Thor departed, bye praying bye. this would all blow over sooner rather than Look later. how much cleaner, like, Thor looks here compared to, like, episode 3 when he was shiny as shit. He looks so much better. I am so pleased. Neo. Thor's train soon came to a halt at Colford Station. It had been a nice and relaxing run up to Colford, as it usually was. Ever since Clint had been moved to the Eastwood branch, he had found himself taking this train more and more alongside his brother, Anthony Manor, and it had quickly become one of his favorite jobs to do on the line, happily simmering at the station while the passenger scuttled about. He heard someone approach and looked over to see the station master walking up to him. Good morning, sir. Lovely day today, isn't it? It sure is, Thor. I have some news for you and your crew. I got word from Manatha that there has been a request to stop at this station. So, I'm going to need you to pull forward into the loop for a little while. Are you going to be able to work with that? Shouldn't be an issue. We'll just have to make up for lost time. I That's no what I like to hear. You should be clear to move forward soon. Have a nice run up. Thank you. Have a great day, sir. Soon enough, the guard blew his whistle and waved his flag, and Thor eased forwards towards the loop. Though Crawford wasn't normally a stop for the Express, it was actually pretty common for it to make stops there upon the request of one or more passengers, requiring the lower priority stopping passenger train to have to wait in a loop for it to pass. Oh, logic. Usually, this wouldn't be an issue. Today, however, it would prove to be one. As Thor rolled forwards towards the crossover back to the main, he came close to the points leading up to the Abrandon branch and noticed the buffers had been moved just like Buckleberry had a few months before. Hang on a minute, this can't be right. But he didn't get to dwell on it much longer, because as soon as he hit the points where they belonged, he veered left, rolling oh, up the no. abandoned line. Whoa, what's going on? His driver saw what was happening and gently applied the brakes, bringing Thor to a gentle stop. Such gentle, much stop. Mr. Stard had seen what had happened and clambered out of his coach before making his way up to where Thor was. He looked just as confused as the manor. Going exploring, are we, Thor? Not the best time to do so while you're pulling a passenger service, don't Mr. you think? Mr. Stard is a dick. With all due respect, sir, I d didn't do this on purpose. The points must have been set incorrectly. I know, Thor, I'm just giving you a hard time. But yes, this is quite the intriguing turn of events. Are you okay? Well, yes, sir. I didn't hit anything. Not even a bush. It looks like they were already broken by something before me, and the buffers weren't even covering the line. I see. He looked up the line, deep in his own thoughts, but Thor snapped him out of it. I'm sorry to interrupt, sir, but you should probably get back on board. Yes, we're get the fuck to have back to get on board. Soon. Hmm? Oh, oh, right, of course, as you were. Stop being a bitch and get on board. Mr. Stard returned to his coach as Thor moved backwards to allow his driver to set the points for them to move forward. Hey, Andy! You're a bitch, by the way, but we love you. While I was sitting in his compartment waiting for the express to pass, Mr. Stard pondered on why a branch line that had been closed in the 40s was showing signs of activity again. My fucking as Snapchat. I thought about it, and yep. almost forgot memory struck him. A memory from just before I, he had I, left on his I, I, business I did that live. a few months back. I'm telling the truth, lads. Besides, I'm off again. Bye. The exact same thing, and they're just as confused. And that engine, it sounded very familiar. I know I've heard that cylinder beat somewhere before. I just can't put my buffer on what. Yes, he thought. I will have to ask him. And there comes Richard with the express.
Later that evening, Mr. Starter was standing at Eastwood Junction. It was a bit chilly outside as he watched the workers prepare the mailbags to be loaded onto Pat's evening mail run. He had wanted to get a hold of him earlier, but due to his own schedule, he didn't get the chance to meet up with him until the very end of the day. That's an bad timing for Mr. Star then. As he was shivering in the cold, the unmistakable sound- Also, Mr. Star's a pussy. If he's shivering in the cold when there's not even any snow, get a real, bro. Come on. drifted to the station. And before long, Pat pulled up at the platform next to where Mr. Starb was standing, surprised to see the young manager standing out in the cold at this time at night. Good evening, Pat. Good evening, sir. What brings you here at this time of night? Everything all right? Actually, Pat, I came to see you. Uh -oh. I was hoping I could ask you and your crew a few questions. Certainly, sir. What do you wish to know? Well, I was hoping I could hear about what happened the night you first took this train. I heard a little bit about it in the morning after, but I didn't quite catch all of it, and I wanted to hear the full story from you and your crew. Certainly, sir, I'd be happy to. Where should I start? Just then, the guard blew his whistle and waved his flag. You best hop in, sir, or this is going to be a short story. Mr. Stard quickly scrambled into Pat's cab as the 4F set off into the night. Dun -dun -dun -dun. I do like me some Pat. Pat is a good engine. The journey flew by fast as Pat <laughs> gave it his own, <laughs> like he always does Fucking on the funny. job. Throughout the journey, Pat and his crew had filled Mrs. Starden on everything that had happened on the evening of the incident. Everything from the fog, to the diversion into the sidings, the voices in the fog, and the sound of an unknown engine going up the branch. Soon enough, they reached Manifel Junction, where Mrs. Star disembarked, now more on board with the situation. I think I understand more now. That would explain why the buffers were moved. And the bushes were And here's on another open. fun fact. Oh, you can't tell in the lighting. That right there is Dave. That's 45101. It's a, it's a little funny ha ha hint, like Easter egg. That's Dave passing by there. And here comes one of my favorite edits ever. The I can't believe no one the, noticed until now. And jokes. Well, either. no one except Book, Clark, and Riley. Yeah, that makes sense. Wait, what? They knew? Oh, yes, sir. We all talked about it up at Colford a few weeks before you came back. And none of them thought it would be a good idea to let me know about this. I don't think they wanted to talk about it, especially after how shaken Clark and Riley seemed when they came back down. Whoa, 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 hold the phone. I, I can't, can't, sir. I, I have, have no, no arms. arms. Funny. But Riley and Clark went up there? That line hasn't seen maintenance since the war! It could have ended in a disaster! Well, I don't know what happened exactly. They haven't actually talked to anyone about it since they got back, so I assume something happened. Huh. I wonder where he's off to. He's right there. Fuck off, mate. You're waffling. Dude, I swear to God, I saw it with my own eyes. I don't see why we need to talk about this. Me neither. This is really none of our business. But it's true. I swear. I was passing the station master's office and he had her all over his desk as he was- Ahem! Fuck me! Where'd you come from? Jesus Christ, sir, are you trying to give us tube collapse? Riley, a word, please. Excuse me, sir, but what is this about? Surely, if you have something to say to the pannier, we can all hear it, No. correct? Not in the mood for your games, Hart. Riley, carriage sheds, now. Y yes sir. So, uh, what can I help you with, sir? Riley? Do you remember this morning when I said no more surprises? Y yeah Well, it just so happens that Thor had to go into the loop today as King Richard had a request stop with the Express. And you'll never guess what happened. What would that be? Well, Thor was suddenly switched into the abandoned branch of all places. I was quite shocked when I saw it happen, thinking we were about to crash. But somehow nothing happened, for you see, the buffers weren't there. They had been set to the side. So I went to check up on him and he told me he hadn't hid anything. Not even the bushes. 
And that reminded me of a story Pat was telling you guys about the morning I announced my departure. So, if, if, if I may? I'm not done yet! So, I catch up with Pat and his crew at Eastwood, listening to their mm -hmm. account yeah, all, all the, the way, way down, down. I just and you'll never guess TikTok. what they told me. He's such a dick. That me and Clark ever so slightly may have trundled up there a little bit. A teeny, weeny, tiny, minuscule bit. Very good, Riley. Now, tell me exactly what happened, or I'll turn you into an oversized kettle. Are we clear? Well, uh, you see, what happened was... What happened was... I do not hear like it. this in the slightest. Don't like what, Hut? What Mr. Stard is doing. This secrecy. Purchasing land, engines and stock. Taking engines aside for a one-to-one -one talk. And not to mention sabotaging companies in the industrial estate. Oof. Oh, come off it, Hut. Do you honestly believe that Mr. Stard would actually do something that would so obviously link back to him? To be fair, Hart, I do have to agree with Drax here. Why would a man who has the access to all the rolling stock on the branch choose one that he privately owns? It feels more like a setup than anything. You can't be serious, Banbury. You can't tell me that you haven't noticed anything shady going on since Mr. Stard saved that pannier. He's been all over the place and hasn't had his full attention on the job at hand. No, he hasn't. Hence why Mr. Hoff still has to assist with the operations on the line. Also true. Well, yes, I have noticed that, but accusing him of sabotage? That's a bit far, is it not? No, I don't think it is. Something fishy is going on here, and I'm determined to find out what. Now, if you will excuse me, I have work to do tomorrow and need my sleep. Good night, gentlemen. And then I ran off after him shouting profanities as uh, we got back to Colford Station and agreed not to speak of it again. I guess we forgot about the point when we ran off back to the sheds. Yeah, you'd think so, but you didn't. It would seem so. So then, I guess the next step is seeing this for myself. Wait, what? I'll be going up there first thing tomorrow morning, and you will be taking me there. No, uh, no way, sir. I'm sorry? I have work to do tomorrow morning. I'm not going to go you? back on that bridge. It nearly collapsed on me last time I went on it. I'm too heavy for it in the state it's in. Why don't you just walk? <laughs> Are you kidding? That's what I have you fucks for. Charming. Simply charming. So what am I to do then, Riley? If you're too heavy, Virgil and Clint won't be too useful for this escapade of mine. Well, there's someone you could use. Oh no. But... Oh no. But... But I'm not sure you'll like having her as company up the branch. Mr. Stard went pale. Y you don't mean... Oh, sir, I do mean... Mr. Star gulped. He knew what the risks were. The physical damage would be zero to none, but the mental damage. I will make the oh, arrangements. No. Here she comes, ladies and quickly, gentlemen. Though, last thing I want to happen ladies is and gentlemen, it's being time. seen by anyone. Well, I wish you the best of luck, sir. You're gonna need it. You've got that right. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a phone call to make and a god to pray to for tomorrow. You have a good night, Riley. You too, sir. Here it comes. At 4 a.m. the next day, Mr. Stard stood waiting at Colford. He looked at his watch. There was only five more minutes till she arrived. He had spent the majority of the night... Who's ready to, to get some mental scarring, eh? But deep down, he knew there was no way to prepare for the psychological damage he was about to the endure. The thing with Gladys... Is, it all Gladys is the most insane engine on the railway, no doubts about it, but she has a charm to her, and I don't know what it is. I just love Gladys absolutely terrifying Lord Dexby, this man who's this lurking shadow that everyone fears, including the board of British Railways, is just terrified of a tank engine. I love it. I just absolutely love Gladys in the eerie silence waiting. However, he wasn't alone for long. A voice spoke up from behind him. Right, okay, Bradford. What's so important? Oh, damn it, I'm now I'm yawning. Now I'm yawning. Goddamn morning. Oh, bastard. Ah, good morning, Jack. Me, you bastard. Me, you're gonna want to be here for this. You and me are gonna go on a little adventure. Right. And where would we be going then on this little adventure Pakistan. of yours? Up there. Emotion to the old abandoned branch We're going line. to Pakistan. Really? That old line? Thought it was abandoned in the 40s. 
So did I. Until last night when I got some new information that I found quite intriguing. Is that so? And what would that be? Just wait and see till we get up there. However, I couldn't get any of our engines to go up there. Apparently, anything over 30 tons is a no-go. And you know this how? Riley and Clark went up there while you were in charge. Nearly collapsing one of the bridges. Oh, brilliant. So how are we getting up there then? Walking? Oh heavens no. no, we have engines to do that for us. But you literally just said that two of our lightest engines can't go up there. You're right. Our engines can't go up there. But what about one we don't own? What, what do you mean? Just then, a whistle drifted through the air. It was one Mr. Hoff had never heard before. Not long after, the shape of a little black tank engine became visible in the distance. Um... Bradford? You're right to be afraid, who, Mr. Hoff. Who is that? Be very, I'll explain later. very afraid. Just prepare yourself mentally. You may not return the same man you were when you woke up this morning. And don't even think about running away. She will find you. She? It was then that the engine pulled up alongside the two gentlemen. Mr. Hoff recognized the engine as an A1X Terrier class from the southern region. I do like this little thing Riley really made. It was, it was very she nice. She had a shining nameplate that read Gladys. Also, again, victory works. Editable. Jack, meet Gladys. An escaped engine my grandfather took in all the way back in 1923. She's been hiding at the quarry up at Eastwood since then. Not many people know about her, and most who do wish they never did. Yep. Gladys, this is Mr. Hoff. My apprentice in the way of running things on the line. Apprentice. It's a pleasure it's to meet you, Gladys. I take it that you'll be transporting us up the line then. Gladys eyed the man up. Oh, young man, I'll do more to you than just transport you up the line. I've been longing for a good stoking for weeks now. Excuse, Excuse me, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? <clears throat> Anyways, uh, Gladys here is by far the lightest engine on the line. So the bridge should be more than strong enough to handle her. Now, come on, Jack. Let's get inside her before people or oh, engines God. start showing up. Oh, you always know what to say to get my lubricators going, young Bradford. Oh, oh fuck me. This is going to be a long day. Oh, young man, I gladly will. I think I'm going to be sick. Oh, Ian is a... Soon. The unlikely trio had begun something. making their way up the abandoned line. The two men tried their best to focus on the task at hand, even through Gladys' weird comments. Soon, they crested the hill, and Mr. Start immediately perked up when he noticed something ahead of them. Well, I'll be, it's true! Heartbreak. He gently applied Gladys' brakes, and when she stopped, he jumped out of the cab, with Mr. Hoff following close behind. What's true? I don't see anything. Oh my. In front of them was a set of points that veered off to the left that looked as if they'd just been built. They seemed very much out of hmm. place compared to the what old rusty rails then? that preceded them. And why haven't I exploded further? That the line seemed I don't longer than what Riley know had described, how to properly. Along with the presence of a flat car with rails on it, in addition to two standard mats. Mr. Hoff was the first to break the silence. What the hell is all of this? I didn't know we were extending the line. That's the thing. We aren't. At least not that I know of. Then what exactly is going on here, sir? I don't know, Jack, but I want to get to the bottom of this. Let's look around. The two men rummaged through the site for any clues as to what was going on. They looked in the vans and at the equipment being used. By the looks of it, it was mostly mining and track work equipment. That's most racist. of it looking brand new. No, it's not. After a good Shut 30 minutes of searching, the men were no closer to figuring out exactly what was going on here, and decided to retreat back to Gladys. I don't really understand all of this. How could they have done this right under our noses? I honestly don't know, Jack. It's quite worrying, to say the least. The fact that something like this is going on right under our noses, it does make you wonder. Indeed. Oh, this bit. Then again, you'd know about stuff like that, wouldn't you, Bradford? I'm sorry? Oh, come on, Bradford. You think I don't know about your plans? It's pretty obvious for the past few weeks, especially after you came back, and we started working more close- Clark told you, didn't he? Literally on my first day. Motherfucker. <laughs> All right, well, what happens now, then? Uh, Are you Clark, gonna turn you me in? fucking spoiler. Oh, heavens no. We have a railway to save from closure. No way in hell I'm letting British railways ruin my home line. Now come on, 
We have work to do. Well, I'll be... Welcome aboard, then. We have one more stop to make first, though. The end of the line. I see. End of the line. Well, we best be off, then. The two men climbed into Gladys' cab as they moved on forward towards the end of the line. Bye-bye. Though the journey across the viaduct was done I am actually going to do season breath, 2 but I'm going to have company that time. I'm going to have Tom and Anthony and if they I can. They made it to the end of the bridge safely and before long they arrived at the station. It allows for more conversation. Hmm. Mr. Hoff and Mr. Starr disembarked, taking in the sight of the dilapidated station and yard. Everything was overgrown. The turntable yeah, was flooded, place is and the buildings looked like they were ready to collapse at any moment. This place is fucked. Jesus. I thought you said this was abandoned in the mid-40s. This looks like it's been neglected for way longer than that. You're right. While the line itself was officially closed in 1946, it saw little to no use from early 1939. By the end of the war, it was already in a sorry state. So the board came to the conclusion that it would be too much work to repair it than it would be just to close the line as a whole. Thus, it was just closed. I see. Well, it's quite understandable, though. It's also a shame. This looks like quite the quaint area. It really is. Who knows? Maybe I'll reopen it someday. No, you won't. Did you hear that? Oh, I did. Heartbreak. It sounded like it came from my good sheds over there. Should we investigate? No, Jack. We should fuck off down the line and forget all about it. Okay, okay, Dick. The yes, two men made their way deck. over to the old goods sheds. It looked just as worn as the other buildings, with windows broken and the roof falling apart. Mr. Stard swore he could see something inside, but from the distance, it was impossible to make out just what it was. But when they got closer, the unmistakable shape of wheels, a boiler, and coupling rods became visible. Then, it dawned on the two men. Is that? You've got to be kidding. Then then, here's the biggest the reveal I ever did. Was a worn looking LMS and it was a black fucking vibe. black vibe. The engine itself looked to still be asleep, not paying any attention now, to the men looking at it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's Does let's start, let's break this down a little. Why the fuck do I have a black vibe? I'll tell you why. Because someone said in the comments once, Chris is the only person to not have a black vibe in this series. He's breaking tradition. Or breaking a tradition, like, in a good way, breaking a tradition. I'm just there, like, fuck you, I'm having a Black Five now. <laughs> and me and Tom were keeping it secret for years. Because we were planning it. Um, You know, it's, it's Jeremy. He's, he's pretty indecisive. He's, uh, he's, um, he's a tough cookie to crack, that's for sure. Closely at the engine before speaking. I guess that explains what Pat heard that night. No wonder he recognized the sound of it. But, what's a Black Five doing all the way out here? Well, why don't we ask it? Wait, hang hang on. Is 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 that really a good idea? No, good it's not. Morning, but you're gonna do it what brings you to this part of the network? The engine yawned and stirred as it opened its eyes, trying to focus on where the nose came from, before finally laying its eyes on the two men in front of it. Hmm, what do you, uh. Gah! Who are you guys? Why are you here? Whoa there, easy now. We mean you no harm, lad. My name is Bradford Aaron Stard. I'm the manager of this railway. And this gentleman here is my apprentice, Jack Andrew Hoff. What's your name? I'm... Jeremy, sir. It's nice to meet you, Jeremy. But why are you here of all places? And how did you get here? Uh, I'd rather not say. There's no point anyways. You guys are both from British Railways. It's over for me. What are you talking about? Jeremy, before now, we didn't even know you were here. The only reason we're up here is because we had two of our engines exploring this line without our permission. And they ran away from here scared shitless. Yeah, that's Wait, what happens when Jeremy so fucks around. you're not here to take me for scrap? No, not at all. We were just looking for answers. So, are you going to tell us what you're doing here? I... I ran away from my shed. Ever since we got nationalized, I've been getting neglected more and more. Be that with maintenance, overhauls, washdowns, or repaints. Hell, I barely even had any jobs to do for the last few weeks. I confronted our manager about it, 
and he scolded me harshly for it, saying I was lucky to be in one piece still, and that if we were up to him, I'd be in a scrap siding before I could lift my safety valves. I was only there as a backup, only called out whenever another engine failed or no one could that fill in for me. That is a heinous misuse so of a I black ran. vibe. They were very good My driver grew up in this area, so he knew it was abandoned and that I could hide here. We disguised ourselves as a light engine transfer and made it onto this line before the alarm was raised. That's no way to treat a hardworking engine. You are very brave for making it this far. It was a smart move on your crew's part to take it here. Probably the best place on this line to hide. I thought that too, until I realised you guys were doing construction up here. I wanted to convince my driver to go back up to the main and find somewhere else. However, he insisted that I'd be safe, so I've pushed on. You've been here for a while now, haven't you? Have you heard anything from the construction site while you've been up here? No, he You has see, not. we aren't actually doing any construction up here. I literally found out about it all last night, and I was hoping you knew anything about it. Unfortunately not, sir. I do see when they are there, due to the lights they use, but I'm too far away to hear anything and I'm too scared to get any closer. The only time I got closer to the bridge was when someone was making their way over it, and I chased them away. I can't confirm you did indeed chase them off. They were in such a hurry to get away that they forgot to set the points back. I'm sorry about that, sir. I just didn't want to be found and hauled away. Oh, no worries. I found it funny as fuck. However, we do have a bit of a dilemma. Even if we wanted to get you down from here, we can't at the moment. The viaduct is too unstable. 30 tons would be enough for that thing to collapse, so we'll have to strengthen it at some point if you want to work again. Work again, sir? Well, we can't let your potential go to waste now, can we? If I can yes, get the necessary can. arrangements done, I would like for you to come work for me. I'm a firm believer in second chances, and I really believe you deserve one after all the effort you've gone through. Oh, thank you, sir. I would love to, but how long will I have to remain up here? Well, if we want to do any work to the viaduct, we'll be giving away the fact that we know stuff is going on up here. And then we may never know what's happening. So it could be a while. Yes, that is very true. But don't worry too much, okay? We're going to keep your location secret for now. And I'll good even come visit you from time to time and keep you updated on what's going on. How does that sound? That sounds good to me. Thank you. Both of you. You're quite welcome. Now, we have to dash. We've spent far too long up here, and we have a railway to run. I'll be in touch, Jeremy. After they've given Jeremy a promise of safety and anonymity, they return to Gladys, who had been turned around, ready to return down to Colford. They waved goodbye to Jeremy from Gladys's cab as they set off back down the branch. Bye-bye. This is not gonna end When well. they reached the cutting before the viaduct, Mr. Stard asked the crew to cut steam and stop Gladys before climbing down the cab, with Mr. Hoff following behind him. What's the matter, Bradford? Nothing yet, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. About what, exactly? About being seen by anyone with Gladys, firstly. And secondly, I don't want people to know what we've been up to up here. If whoever's building sneaky, up here were to find breaky. out, they may run off with their tails between their legs. Fair enough. The two men made their way over to the viaduct and looked towards Colford. And much to their dismay, the station was bustling with engines and people alike. They could even see Buck bunking off work in the sheds. <laughs> Fuck. We wasted too much time up there. So what do we do? I only see one way, and while I don't like it, it's the only way. Gladys will have to go back up to the end of the line and stay there till further notice. We, on the other hand, will have to do the unthinkable. Walk. You really are a lazy fuck, you know that? And proud of it! Mr. Starter walked back to Gladys and her crew to explain the situation, before returning to Mr. Hoff and walking back down to Colford. This is one of my favorite scenes. Before long, In this they made their way down to the point at Colford. <laughs> Using Mr. the sitting Mr. Stard as a way to show that he's out of breath. <laughs> Fucking genius. And... <sighs> Man, Mr. Star's one lazy bastard, isn't he? This episode's just fun. And we're also gonna get to- Oh yeah, that's this episode. Brad. True. <sighs> Fuck me! That was a long walk. We literally walked 15 minutes downhill. You need to get into shape, man. I don't do walking, that's what I have the engines for. What's the point of having engines if I can't abuse them to take me around everywhere? Fucking figures. <laughs> Anyways, 
I need to inform the rest of the guys about what's happening with the branch, so they can keep an eye out for any suspicious activity in the area. I suggest you go up to Redwick and cover my ass for a few hours so I can get back up there. So, the same as usual? Pretty much. As the two men stood there talking, uh, they didn't pay uh. much attention to Hard Hall, who was passing with the local train. He eyed the two men up suspiciously, quickly being able to deduce what the two men were up to simply by looking at where they were standing. Ah, uh, yes. This would plague the his mind boys. for the rest of his run until he backed into the sheds where King Richard and Russell were sat talking away. Hello, Hart. What's the matter with you, mate? You look as if your boiler's about to burst. What's on your mind? I think I'm getting closer to figuring out what Mr. Stard is up to. Though it's mostly a hunch at this point. What do you mean? Well, I was hauling the local earlier, and when I got past Colford, I saw him and Mr. Hoff hanging around by the points four almost went up yesterday. Indeed. They seemed to be talking about the branch itself. I think he's planning on doing what he did with the Eastwood branch to that one. You can't be serious. That line is so dilapidated, a gust of wind could tear it down. Why would you want anything to do with that? Here, here's the origin of Andy's voice as Russell, which is... You know when I pretend to do my posh accent, aka King Richard? That's what that feels like. It's it's a a working class, low life, just common goods engine pretending to be something he isn't, and I love it. Russell works perfectly. More importantly, what benefit would he gain from buying that line? He did it with the Eastwood branch, even though it was deemed useless by the railway board, and now a line that was literally closed right after the war. He wouldn't gain anything other than a place to run his old and worthless engines. And by the looks of it, he will have another soon. Surely you've seen the building equipment that's been appearing at the end of the triangle. He's probably begun work on that line to the river dock. You can't be serious. What's his endgame here? Whatever will be next? Probably to privatise the railway. King Richard rolled his eyes. But they quickly shot back to Russell. Wait, what did you just say? I said privatising the... Wait, you don't think? Oh, oh that, that sneaky son, son of a bitch. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> no kidding. So he was up there all this time. Yep, ever since Pat's first post run. Looks like he wasn't making it all up after all. I guess I owe him an apology then. Well, yes, but not yet. We can't let anyone know he's up there. He's on the run for a reason after all. True enough. But why did you have to wake me up and bring me down here just to tell me about this? Couldn't you have just told me and let me go back to sleep? Because you were being a lazy git and bunking of work, and your wagons aren't going to move themselves. They're needed up at the Triangle later today for the extension to Greymouth. So, you're going to have to get your lazy tender going up there soon. Oh, but sir, can anyone else take it? Unless you want to end up as an express passenger engine, I suggest you shift it before I make a roster change. Buck gulped. You wouldn't try me. Mommy, Daddy, please stop fighting. And you made it weird. Fine, Riley. I'll take the train. Fucking bastard. That's my name, and don't you forget it. Buck groaned as he moved out of the sheds, leaving the others behind to go haul the supplies up the line. Oh, shit! What's that? I forgot to tell him not to say anything to Clark. We all know how we can overreact about things. Yeah, don't worry, sir. He's a dumbass, but not that stupid. I think. Unfortunately for Mr. Stard, Buck was indeed that fucking stupid. He is stupid. Because as soon as he reversed into the side oh, of the and saw that Clark that was working there, was funny. he made the decision to inform him about what Mr. Stard had told everyone about down at Manifeld. This, however, would prove to be one of the biggest mistakes the Grange had ever made. Morning, fuckhead! How are things? Fucking boring as per usual. What are you doing here anyways? I thought you were bunking off work today. I was, but Mr. Stard pulled me out of the sheds to use me as his private transport. Like, I get I'm painted black, but that doesn't mean he can just use me like a... Never mind. 
Black London Taxi. Use me like a Black London Taxi. That's the line I wrote. Or a London Taxi is what I wrote. But, it works better if I cut it off like this because people thought it was worse. Besides the point. He figured out you and Riley went on your little lover's escapade to the abandoned branch. So, he decided to go on one as well along with Mr. Hoff. You don't say! Yes, I like do, a fake actually. taxi. They went all the way up to the end of the line. They even found that set of points that you two found. But according to what Mr. Stard said, the line after the points has been extended. After what he told us based on the information he got from Riley, at least. So you're well, telling me that people are building a new line up there? Who is it? That's the thing we don't know. But while that mystery still stands, another has been solved. What other mystery? The one that caused you to run away like a little bitch back down the line. Where did you hear that from? Riley told us. Cunt! Pipe down, will you? Did it ever cross your mind that there might be someone up there? Why would there be someone up there? The place was cleared out and abandoned after the war ended. No one could have stayed behind. Who said anything about that? It's the thing Pat said he heard on his first mail run. It's a LMS Black 5 named Jeremy who's on the run from British Railways. He thought you guys were out looking for him, so he tried to scare you off. <laughs> Looks like he was successful. Buck laughed oh, no. and looked over to Clark. However, Fuck Clark you wasn't moron, laughing. this is not how this works. There wasn't works. even a slight hint of a smile. Instead, there was an angry look on his radiator. And as he opened his mouth to speak, Buck knew. He, he fucked, fucked up. up. You're telling me that piece of shit hid on our line and trying to get us off? I'm gonna kill that kettle! Whoa, what the hell, Clark? Quiet down, will you? People might- I don't care. So this Black Five is on the run from those arseholes we're trying to get the line back from, and he's too much of a pussy to face it head on? If Mr. Stard wasn't ordering us to lay low after you guys fucked up the sabotage at the estate, I'd be on my way to kick his ass right now! Clark, shut up! People will hear! Buck kept trying to calm the enraged O4 down, but to little effect. What they had failed to notice before it was too late was that Hard Hull was departing from the platform with the express headed for Reading. He had heard everything. He let off a blast from his whistle, shutting the two arguing engines up as he moved past. I knew that starred bloke was planning something. Thanks for letting it slip, you morons. Can't wait to tell the board about this. Wait, what? No! Clark, you fucking idiot! I didn't know he was... Wait, where were you going? Originally, this was going to be Get King Get back here, you pompous asshole! It was going to be King Richard, but then people started hating Hart, so I was like, fuck it. Hart is now the main villain. Buck's wheels pounded the rails as he gave chase after Hart Hall. He was determined to catch the engine that was just out of view. Staggering behind due to not having oh, the benefit, seven coaches the film. pushing him down the hill. They thundered through Endon, with the station master waving his red flag on the platform like a madman at Buck. But the Grange ignored him and pushed on. Hart, on the other hand, had heard Buck shout from to stall, but instead of slowing down, he was powering ahead, determined not to be caught up by a lowly Grange. They thundered over the viaduct, passing a very surprised Drax who was waiting on the all clear from the industrial estate. Finally, there was an uphill, and Buck started to gain right Bet before he switched. I love that shake in the As he looked ahead, love he it. saw something that made his piston skip a beat. And here Waiting is in the, the platform, cause of Buck's PTSD. The same line he was on was well, clipped with a good strain. Holy shit! Driver! What the hell? Buck's driver slammed on his brakes as Hardhold soared ahead. Both Clint and Buck shut their eyes. They were certain there would be a crash. Just in but time. thanks to Clint standing still and Buck traveling a light engine, he managed to stop just a couple of meters away from Clint. Buck slowly opened his eyes to meet the angry scowl of Clint. That wasn't his biggest worry right now. Hard Hall had gotten away. God fucking damn it! What the hell are you playing at, Buckleberry? Who do you think you are racing down the line like that? And why were you chasing Hard Hall? You you don't understand. He he no, knows sorry, head again. Knows? Knows what? Buck quickly explained to Clint what had happened, and by the time he had finished, Drax had pulled up next to them. And then, thanks to that fucked art of a shunter, I had to try and stop Hard Hall, and well, you know the rest. Holy shit, dude. How could you have fucked up that bad? Look, I was trying to give Clark some closure on the matter, okay? I didn't know he'd go thermonuclear on me. Though your actions were meant for good. You can't deny that by doing so, it has caused a bigger problem. Though we can't fault you for it as technically it wasn't your fault, you can't deny that you played a part in it. 
And it definitely doesn't help your case that you took after him on the wrong road. If anything, it makes it look worse. I... You're right. I'm sorry, guys. I just wanted to help us all. Yeah, but you sure fucked that up now, didn't you? The want to do Jax. good can be the biggest cost for doing bad. We know you tried, Buck. Just be more mindful in the future, yeah? I'll try, Clint. Thank you for understanding. Now there's just the issue of what to do with Hard Hall. Well, he's long gone by now, that's for sure. So no chance in catching him up. No, and it wouldn't do much anyways. Our only hope is that the people he tell don't believe him. Or that they lack the evidence to prove anything he tells them about. I guess you're right. Both of you. Now come on, you two. We have a railway to run, not a sewing club. Mr. Stard is waiting for me up at Spear. Oops. I will inform him I what hit the wrong happened. button. So be prepared for a serious meeting later on. Yeah, that's probably for the best. Thank you, Clint. And again, I'm sorry. Don't worry about it, Buck. It's in the past now. Just keep that smoke box up and keep working. We'll deal with this when the time comes. Okay, Clint. Take care. And so, the three engines went their separate ways. This had become quite the dilemma, but they had hoped that it would work out in the end that Mr. Stard would know what to do and how to get him out of this mess. It wasn't much hope, but it was enough to keep them going for the rest of the day. I do love this episode. It is a good season finale. It's not a happy season finale, but it's a we got by season finale. And then, here's the abandoned branch. Later that evening, at the abandoned branch, a few workmen stood around the new set of track, preparing for another bit of work through the night, trying to be as covert as possible as to not attract the attention of the nearby town. Me too, and I write it. I, I love watching it, I hate writing it. Lamp, two men were standing, talking about an interesting development that they had learned from the also, fellow here's higher things. Also, here's a little lesson in trickery, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Dexby is right there. He knows their plan. He knows everything. Mr. Dexby knows. He's right there. Right there. Right fucking there. What a sneaky bastard. Their little secret board. So, what do we do about it? Do about what? About what that engine said? About what Bradford has been doing all along. We have a witness and evidence against him now. We can get him fired. No, I don't think that will be wise. What? Why not? He's been a thorn in our side ever since he took over management of this railway. And we've been trying to get him out for years. And now we have our chance and you won't take it? Think about this for one second. Though he's been a pain to us, the people and the staff love him. They do? Especially after he stopped the closure of the Eastwood to Spear line. No, I hate to say it, but if we get rid of him now, the backlash will be too great. Then what do you propose we do? It's quite simple, really. He wants to play dirty with sabotage on our operations? Then we'll play dirty back. It's going to be difficult, but we need to force his hand so he trips up his own plans... Make him look bad to the public, and then, only then, we can get rid of him once and for all. Shut this godforsaken railway down and keep all our focus on this project of ours. Understood, sir. When do we start? My dear friend, we have already begun. So, I approached Reese with this character. And I said, hey Reese, I'm gonna get you an engine. But in the meantime, do you want to voice a fucking asshole of a villain? Reese said yes. And then he comes back with that performance. And Mr. Dickinson is one of my favorite characters in The Rails of Refuge. Genuinely. like He just comes to life. Even though he's an old corpse who doesn't move. He just comes to life. The character doesn't need to move. He, it's, it's just... I don't know how to explain it other than I just enjoy. I'm an avid enjoyer. It's... Mm, it's happy. Also here, this shot, you remember, well, at the start of the video, if anyone was here, I talked about how... Uh, what's this camera angle? Well, I remembered now. This camera angle now reflects episode one, and you can see the changes. You have a full shed plus an engine on the turntable. Drax is now dirty. 
Virgil is green, Clint is green, Ramsey's green, and Buckster, rather than uh, Gladys. You see how the characters have developed over the course, over the course, not the course, the course of the season. And while many things are similar, more things have changed. And it's it's just funny to reflect upon the difference from day one to, well, basically episode well, episode one to episode ten. In episode one, but Mr. Star's like, hey, keep Buck out of this. Now he's actively had got Buck down here for a meeting, talking to him like, look, you fucked up. It's fine. We'll figure it out. Character development, ladies and gentlemen. Character development. Once again, sir, I really am sorry. Well, as much as I want to rip you apart from your frames, rivet for rivet, it's technically not all your fault. He shot Clark a dirty look. I regret nothing. Well, I haven't been fired yet. Not even a phone call from the board. So either they don't believe that cunt bag of a hall, or they're planning on what to do. Either way, I don't like it. No doubt he'll tell King Richard and his fellow lackeys about this. They're going to make our lives a living hell, that's for sure. Yes, they well, are. Well, let's be fair here. They don't know all of us are in on this, do they? Only two they've technically caught, Buck and Clark. So the rest of us should be safe, no? Not necessarily. Oh, I should also point out, the engines are sat in their exact same spots that they sat in episode 1. Of course, Glad is not there, Buck is. The open shed is filled with by Darius, and Seb's on the turntable. But other than that, every single engine is in the exact same road that they were in, in episode 1. Sarah, like poetry. we were all gathered in the sheds when Mr. Stard told us about these plans. And we chase Hard Hole out of the sheds that very night. So I'm fairly sure he has an idea who's in on it. He's got a point. I think laying no for now is the best. Let's just focus on keeping work going and... No, Clint. We've come too far for laying low. There's so many things I need to do to this branch before I can even consider trying to fully take it over. The dock branch is behind schedule. And only two of my three engines are operational at the moment. And I need them both on the Eastwood branch. The engines looked at him confused. Three engines, sir? You bought another engine, sir? Is it one of us, sir? It's not, no, unfortunately. After I bought Virgil, they haven't let me try and buy any of you. I wanted to buy Riley and Seb to use on the dock branch itself, but they wouldn't let me, so Rip. I stole Seb anyways. Wait, what? Stole? Anyways, I needed to get a tank engine to work the docks and to help with the construction of the line itself. So while I was out on my business trip, I stumbled upon a perfect engine for the job. In fact, I got him from the same place I got my wagons. Oh, right, him. I thought you had melted down for extra rails or chucked him in a refuse bin or something like that. Rails, refuse. People keep calling my show Rails to Refuse because of a joke that came about a while back, so I wrote it in. Fuck you guys. I love you guys, but fuck you guys. It's Rails to Refuge, not Refuse. Get it right. Wait, Seb, you know who it is? Yes, he does. He was there to pick him up, but he's not here right now. He probably won't be until early next year at best. He's in a bit of a sorry state. What kind of engine is he, sir? Wait and see. You're all in for quite a surprise, that's for sure. Now I believe it's time we all get some sleep. It's going to get hectic going forwards, so I'm going to need you all at your A-game. We're going to have to get more aggressive going forwards if we want to win this little war of ours. Now I bid you all a good night. I'll see you all tomorrow. Mr. Stark turned and walked away. He yeah, knew he Stark. was pulling a risky move by playing the aggressive card. But at this point, he felt like he had no other choice after what had happened that day. If things went to plan, he knew he could pull it off. But he was one man, and they were a huge company. He would need everything to go off without a hitch to have a chance of winning this fight. But as we all know, things don't always go the way we need them to. Ladies and gentlemen, that's season one of Rails to Refuge. That's season one of Rails to Refuge in its entirety. The most powerful step I ever took in becoming a content creator. Started a bit slow, picked up its pace after a while. I am incredibly proud of this. I, I do say I hate the first three episodes, I, and I do dislike them, but I hate them. And the improvement of getting from day one to this 
It's very, 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 very clear. I am very proud. And the things that are being said on screen right now, very true. I wouldn't be anywhere I was without these guys helping me. So, Tom, Anthony, uh, Callum, Guion, Andy, Seb, basically everyone involved. Fucking helpful bastards who have helped me get to where I am. It is insane how far I've come with their help. Through this first season, because spelling mistakes are fun. <laughs> That's Ben for you. I forget these things sometimes. They're they're fun to look back at. It is truly incredible. And I can't remember if there's a po there is a post credit scene, actually. 2021. That's when it ended. And Rails to Refuge, the director's commentary, will return in two fronts. And I mean that, because we're going to do another director's commentary. Not, I don't know when, but at some point, there's going to be one. And this time, I am hoping to get uh, Tom, Andy... And Anthony and Brett, because I I want them to come along, and help me figure some stuff out. Because they they've they've all helped me, they've all been my inspirations over the years, and they have literally helped me write this next season that we're gonna watch at some point. So, ladies and gentlemen, that has been five hours <laughs> of. Rails to Refuge rewatch. Oh my god, I am so tired right now. I could eat a hippo. I don't know why I could eat a hippo, but it's it's just it's yeah, it's been incredible. So without further ado, I will let you guys go for the evening. So you guys have a fantastic evening. Thank you guys for coming by and watching along with me. Whether you talked or not, that doesn't matter, as long as you had a good time. And I hope to see you all next time when we watch the director's commentary of Season 3. Callum, go fuck yourself, you missed all of it. Season 2 director's commentary, coming soon, whenever we all have time. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure.